eight. Sarah Bullimore, Coroway, 27.8 in second. And Dirk Schrader, Casino 80, the reserve German national champion, sit in third, 29.0. Felicity Collins, RSH Contendor, and Lizzie Boff, the Young Guns, inside the top five. Gemma Stevens, Flash Cooley, she was top ten here last year with Jalapeno, who we'll see in the latter stages of dressage today. Rose Nesbitt, Georgie Goss, Izzy Power, and Emily Philp all rounding out the top ten as things stand. But today we turn our attentions to the second day of dressage, and we've got some big names still to come forwards and a good number of them in the first session of dressage because Selena Milnes and Izzy Taylor will be the first two down the centre line. But other big names to look out for, Aoife Clark, uh, Tom Jackson, who's been on brilliant form of late. A Bella in his car, Tom Rowland, will be forwards as well. He's going to join us in the commentary box a little bit later on. The 2019 Land Rover Burley winners, Pippa Funnel, MGH Grafton Street, has been here twice before, both times inside the top six. And the final session of dressage sees a good number of uh, big names, including Bubby Upton, Alex Bragg, Gemma Stevens, Jalapeno, as I said a little bit earlier on. And my first guest this morning, who I'm delighted to say a very good morning, Willa Newton. Good morning, Nicole. Very happy to be here. And it's going to be a very exciting day. Um, it, yeah. Which, the first one looks like it's about to enter the arena, which is very exciting. It absolutely is. And it is going to be Selena Milnes and Gilmer who get us underway. Selena, who had a super actually will dress hard yesterday to sit in a podium position with Cooley Snapchat in the eight, nine-year-old class. Gelmer, the horse she brings forward here, and they come here off the back of a good uh, completion at Hartbury and a top 10 at Mill Street, actually, in the four-star short earlier on this year. Debut at four-star long level for the horse, uh, but Selena has been in great form of late, just looking a little, almost a bit cross-legged behind. Yeah, sadly not quite the best halt behind um it was a super entry but just the the halt sadly didn't quite come off how she would have planned but already a great start straight into the shoulder in very nicely presented and now she moves across to do the medium trot oh. we're just touching the board there in the corner as a rider, you want to make the most of using all the arena and really make sure you can go into all your corners to prepare for the next movement. But it's just making sure in the same time you, you just don't quite touch the boards. It's a huge moving horse, this of Selena's. And it's this can sometimes, <coughs> which is what you want in the dressage, but can also be sometimes hard to really make the most of the arena when they're so big and got so much power. That was really nice and straight into the half pass there. Now she'll make the change back the other way. That was really nice and fluid. Fluid. Good transition into the walk. And again, with this being such a big horse, it's really almost harder with the walk pirouettes if they've got a big walk. You've really got to slow the walk down and take as much time as possible on the in the pirouette. To me, that was very nice pirouette. <laughs> and again, a very nice one to the right. If anything, a little bit big, but it kept moving and was very fluent. And then Selena was very quick to go straight into the extended walk. And actually, you have to be quite quick with that transition, don't you? Because it comes as you come back across the centre line. Yeah, exactly. And you need to just make sure you go far enough so you've got time to do your pirouette to then be able to go straight into the extended walk. It's all the little details that, you know, can really save a mark here and there and actually make the big difference at the end. Slightly jogging in the walk. 
They yeah, know this counter transition is coming, don't they? They know the counter transition is coming. It's a bit colder today. It's first thing in the morning. You know, they are just a little bit tighter and those little mistakes can be expensive. He just does look a little bit happy to be here. But Selena's doing a brilliant job in containing him and trying to keep him as calm as possible. With him being a little bit tight, it might make the flying change difficult, yeah. She, Selena couldn't really set that up how she wanted to, and then it's difficult for the change to, qu to come off quite how you planned it. Really nice half pass to the left. He just looks like now he's taking a bit of a breath. with power up at the main arena which means we've momentarily lost pictures the team are working really hard to, to resolve this very very quickly for you so we will be right back in just a moment And we are back up and running here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. Huge apologies for that delay, but uh, in between tests, so hopefully we didn't miss too much. Izzy Taylor has just started her test uh, with Graf Cavalier, a horse owned by uh, Trevor Dickens, actually, who's had a very successful couple of weeks, owned the... Uh, new Land Rover Burley champion in Fenea Camera as well. Uh, a score in for Selena Milnes and Gelmer. 
and it, it sees them go inside the top 10 on the leaderboard actually 31.1 they go ninth willa newton sat alongside me and uh, izzy's doing a good job in just keeping a lid on graf cavalier yeah definitely he, she looked a bit sharp i think this morning is an uh, absolute master in the in the dressage arena and will be doing everything she can to to get the best possible mark she possibly can and this horse that was originally campaigned by Piggy March, actually, Izzy's had the ride for a couple of years now, I think, but the horse had a little bit of time off through injury. Yeah, it's nice to, to see her back at, at this level here at Blenheim and, yeah, really super horse. That was a really good pirouette there, kept moving and Izzy looks very relaxed. You can see Izzy using every bit of the arena. She really took her time to give her enough time to turn back to do the pirouette so then she can go straight into this extended walk here. Looks like the mare looks like she's taking a breath now in this extended walk and really starting to stretch down and take a bit more time with her shoulders. That was a lovely transition into the canter. And Izzy was quite clever there, wasn't she? Because she only retook her rein as much as she needed to. And yet, as soon as she made the transition, she shortened her rein significantly. Yeah, no, definitely. And it's and little things like that that, you, you know, you know your horses so well. And you know how much you can take the rein back to then, to, to be able to get a good enough transition to then be able to shorten the rein ready for the next movement. Got a really nice active canter. A little bit um, high in the neck in the in the change, but the change was actually clean. You can see Izzy really preparing for every movement and making the most of the arena. And then it feels like you have much more time in there. You can almost enjoy it. <laughs> Sadly, that change just didn't quite come off. But a really nice square halt finish and very, very straight. The mare definitely looks like she's ready to go cross country. I was going to say, it's such a knife edge, isn't it? It's the the balance of being able to keep these horses um, sort of concentrated and calm and relaxed for the dressage. But actually, they've got to run 11 minutes or whatever it will be, 10 and a half minutes over David Evans's cross country track tomorrow. Um, and the, the balance sometimes sways a little bit more one it, way than the other. It's such a hard thing to get the horse in absolute peak performance just when you need it in the dressage arena i i personally have been finding it hard because i'm not on till 20 past four this this afternoon and ha knowing exactly how much to do how little to do to make sure that he that he's in the best for, form possible um it's very very difficult yeah it's that real balance isn't it and and that kind of when you're here at a three day not doing too much but not doing enough um well look at that beautiful backdrop blenheim palace at just the most incredible location and uh, there you go selena milnes gelmer 31.1 she slots into the top 10 in ninth uh, marlin hansen hot top and carlitos quidditch k a career personal best for marlin yesterday sees her as the one to beat 24.6 uh, and a long way to go today she will be uh, concentrating her attention on looking forward to the jumping phases uh, but here we welcome now Sam Gillespie with his own but not till now this uh, an 11 year old 
Sam, who's uh, been campaigning the mayor at uh, four star level this year and actually have had uh, a good uh, clear round cross country at Hartbury as their final preparation for the la- for the uh, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials uh, this weekend. But uh, also jumped clear at Burnham Market this spring. And a horse that has had some good top 20 finishes at three-star level. So uh, Sam Gillespie, but not till now. Coming forward as we wait for the score in for Izzy Taylor and uh, Graf Cavalier. Ground jury members, uh, Bobby Stevenson, president of the ground jury from the United States of America at C. Uh, Sue Baxter at E for Great Britain and Douglas Hibbert also for Great Britain at M. Three very experienced ground jury members in very capable hands this weekend as uh, Sam comes down his first centre line here at Blenheim. That was a good straight entry. And very smooth into the move off into the trot. And it's a four star long debut for both Sam and the horse Sam looks very confident you know he's come in and really ridden and, and showed that he's here you know it's not it, he looked it's very polished the horse looks in a really nice outline and frame and he's really going for every mark he's slightly drifted off the track in the shoulder in there then very quick to establish a medium trot. You know, and it's all about coming in and really riding for every mark. So the judges can't give you, you know, don't have a reason to to go for anything lower. It's one of those things, isn't it? Actually, the judges want to give the marks. They sort of start at a 10 and take it away as opposed to start at a zero and build it up. Yeah, no, definitely. They don't, they're Exactly. They want to give you the marks and therefore you've really got to go for them. You know, it's always hard if you come in and don't have the best entry because then you're sort of, you feel like you're on the back foot. Whereas if you can come in and really show your horse off, they're already starting to say, this is good, this is good from the beginning. Again, sadly, that one was just a little late behind. You could see the marriage. She just got a little bit tense as she kind of knew what was going to be asked of her. And it's hard when the first one hasn't come off. You always put more pressure on for the second one to come off, actually, rather than just probably relaxing, preparing best you can. If it happens, it happens. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, but I think Sam should be really pleased with that. Did a really nice job and... You know, the, certainly the changes didn't quite come off, but everything else looked really, really nice. And he went for every mark. So I think he should be very happy. Well, we'll bring that score as soon as it comes through. Uh, Sam Gillespie with his own, but not till now, uh, finishing their test. And that is uh, the top of the leaderboard. Gelma, Selena Mills, actually, just their score has been adjusted. So point one better, which puts them actually in equal eighth with uh, Georgie Goss and Felup. Uh, Marlin Hansen hot top and Carlitos Quidditch K, 24.6 is the score to beat. So uh, a score in for Izzy Taylor and Trevor Dickens as uh, Graf Cavalier. And uh, a 34.4 sees them just inside the top 20. Now, though, it is the turn of Andrew Downs. Andrew comes forward with Jane Moss's uh, Gold Nugget by Elusive City. This a 12-year-old uh, that, uh, I believe, was actually bred for the racetrack and uh, has had some good results in retraining of racehorse classes. Went very well at the Festival of British Eventing at uh, Gatcombe Park a, a few weeks ago as part of their preparation here. And Andrew's, you know, he's very established at this level now. He has a strong team of horses and he seems to be continually coming to these big events. 
And this horse actually that Andrew really likes to mix things up with slightly. He's not afraid of dropping the horse down and running in a, a novice or an open, or an open novice uh, or a two-star and then stepping back up a level. So they went very well at uh, the Hambro Sport Horses Bergem International Horse Trials where they finished uh, with a clear cross country in the four-star short. But before that, they'd actually finished top 10 by finishing on their dressage, scoring the two-star at Chatsworth. So has given the horse a lot of experience, and actually the experience at Chatsworth, even in the two-star, would have been very, very valuable. Completely, and it's all about, for me, it's all about keeping the confidence, you know. And I think it's important that we as riders do that, you know. It's it's definitely not a, not a positive thing to be running big competitions week in, week out. You know, you want to maybe step up a level, do a bigger one, and then come back down and do a nicer one just to make sure that the courses are really confident and and then that's how you establish them at that higher level and this horse actually was clear cross country here last year finished 33rd scored 34 in the first phase on that occasion and the retraining of racehorse classes are really good as well for that you know it's it's lovely to see them these these racehorses having another job and that there is a competition for them with very good prize money. This horse looks like it's built a little bit downhill, but Andrew's doing a really good job to keep him in a in a good balance, but not ask too much of him so that they, he can execute the movements as well as possible. This horse looks like it's, you know, it's really taking the atmosphere here at Blenheim all in its stride. And although it's not got the biggest trot, Andrew can really ride for every mark. And, you know, the walk's relaxed. He could ask for that pirouette. And, yeah, it's it's really nice to see that, you know, these racehorses that, are, that can gallop and jump cross country, you know, can also cope with the dressage as well. really sweet i was gonna say the, the the expression on this horse's face is sort of i imagine this is very much like his natural walk just with that little bit of a spring um <laughs> literally like what do you want me to do next <laughs> it makes such a difference though doesn't it yeah. you know if they're rideable and they want to please it makes our job so much easier you know, and, and then it's important, you know, it's all about, we call it a clear round in the dressage where you do everything you can without making a mistake. Um, and if you can do that and, you know, you don't have any lower marks, then you can be that you're not probably not going to lead the dressage, but you can be there or thereabouts and put yourself in a competitive enough position. Sadly, that change just didn't quite come off. It looked like it's got a really nice bouncy canter and it looked like this. It could have, but sadly just didn't quite come off. You know, it's so hard with these flying changes because we train and train and train, you know, and it's all about just getting it right, right on the day. Oh, that was a brilliant flying change. Really super. Just Sadly, just stepping out in that final halt. Well, I think Andrew should be really pleased with that. The horse tried so hard. <laughs> you can see as he just walks out there that he's like, 
Yep, we've done it. <laughs> <laughs> on, to, on to the bit on where to... I get to gallop and jump and, and do what I was bred to do next. But uh, Andrew Downs with Jane Moss's Gold Nugget have completed a score in for Sam Gillespie. And he goes uh, just outside the top 20 into 22nd position, 35.0. So Andrew Downs, Gold Nugget, they've just finished their test. Willa Newton sat alongside me. Uh, Willa, just quick word on your ride, Cock-a-Doodle-Doo, in the four-star long format. You come forward a little bit later on. What are your hopes this weekend with him? Because he's a real future superstar in the making. Oh, He has been really good and he's been great this this season. So I just hope um, we can have a good run, run here this weekend. Fingers crossed. <laughs> There's a wry smile. There's a wry smile. Um, and what about your I thoughts? I hate the commentator's curse. <laughs> <laughs> and what about uh, your thoughts on David Evans's cross-country track? Yeah, I think it's tough. Um, it, I think it's tougher than we've seen here for a few years. Um, there's lots to do out there. For me, I think um, the both the waters actually, um, especially the second one when you've climbed up the, the new hill, water. there's a the new water at the top of the hill. And I just think they've come up that hill. You're probably getting to, I haven't wheeled it yet, but I think it'll be about five and a half, six minutes. And um, then there's a big jump into water turning to a corner. And I think that's a, a tough question there. Definitely. I was chatting to him this morning. And he he definitely um, has made it tougher mm. it, this year. You know, I think last year he perhaps designed with the previous 18 months in mind yeah. um, of, you know, people have had limited opportunities. Um, but actually this year very much it's a, this is a, a real stepping stone to five star and, and potentially a badminton in the spring or a Burley later on next year. Um, so he was very excited by the direction in which it was taking. Yeah, no, definitely. And I think um, you will, you know, you'll find out a lot about your horse after this competition. You'll definitely know where you're at. So um, it's great to see that. Um, I think there's lots of different questions which can cause problems all around the course. And it's just riding with feel and and doing a good job out there. That's simple as that. <laughs> you make it sound so easy. Well, next to come forward, it is Rosie Fry with Richard Fry's Arise Cavalier. 13 years of age by uh, Cavalier 2 for Joy. And it's a horse that I'm pretty certain is homebred by the Fry family. I'm not sure if this one or maybe is a, a homebred. I'm, yeah, I'm not sure. I'm doubting myself now. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, but Rosie won Best Dressed at the first horse inspection, which was very kindly supported by Ho Ho Silver. And it's great to see Rosie, Rosie here. She's had a difficult... Um, couple of months and it's nice to see that she's got another horse at this level um so yeah i hope she has a good weekend i think this horse can be a little bit cheeky in the dressage it's got a lot of potential it's got you can see how it started it's got a really really smart trot but i think um a clear round is it can be difficult because he can be a little bit cheeky Rosie's doing a super job with him and really going for every mark. He's certainly a horse that, when it all comes together, can produce the low numbers. And you can see exactly how, because he's been as low as 24.7 in a three-star a few years ago. So uh, I know Rosie um, thought a lot of him as, as a young horse, and then he had to have a bit of time off. And I think since the time off, he can he has then had a moment, a few moments where he can be a little bit cheeky and I think it's frustrating because it's definitely all there and today he's really showing himself off so I just hope he can hold it together. It's a really nice transition into the walk. So far, I think this has looked really nice test. Rosie's definitely going for every mark. I thought that was a very neat pirouette. Yeah. And 
another very neat pirouette. And then again, Rosie was very quick to go for the extended walk. Very tactfully ridden in from the extended walk to the medium walk. There's a horse actually that doesn't have a huge amount of four star long. Uh, four star short mileage uh, i think it was first four star uh, long format um rosie's obviously got a, a good bit of experience up to the five star level completed badminton this spring but this horse was fourth at blair last year in the three star lovely change really nice change i think, it's, I think so far so good this is going to be up there can just see him there just have a little spook in that corner but Rosie was very very quick to put it all back together again Rosie's doing a brilliant job because you can just see him he lose his attention um, and she's very very quick to put him back together and it was a, a good change couple stride two strides early a little bit early yeah but it yeah. it came off for her yeah i think and she'll be she very, very pleased very with very that pleased with that yeah and he looks very pleased with yeah. that as well yeah. he says well i did quite well there's a big <laughs> palace in the background and there's lots of people and there's hospitality and all oh, this is all rather fun and you uh, can see that he could be a little bit of a monkey definitely. i have to i have to admit i really really liked that test arise yeah. cavalier and uh, rosie fry completing their test and uh, this is a horse that she has produced all the way up the levels herself this is how the leaderboard looks at the moment marlin hansen hot top Kalitos quidditch k the one to beat 24.6 Sarah Bloomore Coroway 27.8 and Dirk Schrader Casino 80 completing the top three so Germany last won this four star long format in 2016 that was Bettina Hoy and Signor Medicott who topped the podium and actually Signor Medicott yesterday produced uh, the best test uh, by an Indian rider at any world championships with Fjord Merza at the uh, FEI Protoni World Championships and scored a very uh, very solid 31 point double checking my memory uh 31 point 30. 30, 30.1. 30. Okay, well, I, I got all the numbers. Uh, just had to correct myself into the right order. Uh, as next uh, to come forwards is a combination who were so impressive uh, earlier on this year at Bramham in the under 25s class there. They actually led the dressage on that occasion at the four star long format. I think they ended up eventual fourth. Um, but they were really, really impressive. It was their four-star long debut, and actually they scored 30. And I watched their test on that occasion, and it was the prime example of a clear round in the first phase. Everything was very easy, very lovely to watch. Didn't get the big, big marks, but consistency was key, and Alex did a super job in presenting the test to the ground jury. Then he'd hope he could do the same again, and a 30 here would certainly see him in contention. So Alex Holman and Carrick Diamond Bard, a horse he owns himself alongside Janet Coe by Carrick Diamond Lad. So Irish bred, this 10-year-old coming forwards. And a good, good entry and halt. The horse, again, just does look a little bit um, excited and happy to be here, so it's just really going for that clear round. He's got off to a great start. And a lovely medium trot there. Really showing himself off.
for a really nice medium trot this horse and again Alex is going for every mark Oh, sadly, just having a little break into that um, first half pass. It's a hard one, that, because you want to show them off as much as possible in the half pass, but equally you've got to get the balance through the turn, really set it up, and then ask for a bit more trot. Just looks like simmering slightly. Alex is doing a very good job. Yeah. Like I said, it's a little bit colder. There's a little bit more wind today. And when these horses are so fit, you know, it's, it is keeping them as calm as possible. That was a good pirouette, second pirouette. And then you hope you can sort of drop the rein, lengthen the rein a little bit and the horse and you just take a bit of a breath so they can relax into that extended walk. How can you, in the middle of a test, if your horse is tense and sort of holding his or her breath, so to speak, how can you encourage them to it, take a breath? It is really hard, but it's almost you taking a breath yourself and and just trying to soften it all. And, and if you can, if there is a movement that you can just, soften your inside hand and give them a little pat down the down the neck to reassure them but obviously it's a lot harder to, to do it's a lot easier to say than to do it especially when you're a little bit nervous as well and it's so hard when you start making mistakes or your horse isn't that rideable and you lose a couple of marks you know it then becomes you've really got to think to yourself We've, you know, we've still got the rest of the test to do. So you, some, you can get a bit deflated. It's not going to plan, and that's when you can really lose the marks. Whereas if you then, at that moment, just say, "Take a breath," we've, we've got to salvage the rest of the test, and that's where experience comes in. And that was a really lovely flying change for Alex. Bang on the centre line. And another really good flying change. It's like Alex really has done what we were just saying. In fact, he's gone into the canter, taken a breath and ridden everything very maturely and gone for every mark. So hopefully he would have picked up a few marks that he lost in the walk in the trot in the canter. He yes. looks very happy with that. He does. Alex Holman on a debut at Blenheim in the... Uh, of course, it's just so beautifully presented. Yeah, and I, I'm very much looking forward to getting out there. I think that's the finish flags uh, that we can just see that you go through at the end of David Evans's cross-country track, which we will be uh, broadcasting live for you tomorrow. Now, though, it is uh, Arthur Dufour, and Arthur for France comes forward with Dr. Sarah Proctor's Arco's Lad by uh, Arco the Third. So the uh, prolific show-jumping sire that went to the Athens Olympic Games with that uh, Great Britain's Nick Skelton has bred some good eventers as well. This one included, I think, Ibel Watson's Aristoteles, who she rode at the Young Rider European Championships, is also by Arco. And Arthur, who actually comes here having had uh, a good result at Land Rover Burley Horse Trials a few weeks ago. He and his wife, uh, Logan, have a really nice team of horses based over in Shropshire, and uh, this horse that he thinks a massive amount of was actually eighth at Mill Street in the long format four star a little bit earlier on this year and uh, went uh, very well there in the first phase, 29.7. So 
If he could be sub-30 sub here, he'd be delighted. They've got some really good four-star long form, and it's interesting, actually, Arthur, just feeling that the horse will benefit from another four-star long format because two runs at the level, two top 10 finishes, sixth at Linier uh, back at the end of last year, too. So uh, uh, Arthur Dufour for France next to come forward. And Arthur's got a really nice team of horses at this level. He had a good... Result at Burley last week um, with an older horse he's got. And then he seems to have got a couple of horses here. So it's really nice to see. This horse is a big moving, big moving horse. And he'll definitely be aiming for a good score. Definitely showing the horse off very well, going for a good angle in that left shoulder in, and then very quickly to establish a medium trot. The horse is in a lovely balance as well and really uphill. It's a very tall, elegant rider. Yeah, he always looks very relaxed as well. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Very smooth in that first half pass and very quickly to establish it. And again, had got the bend and was very quick into that second half pass. It's easy in the changeover to have the quarters leading in the second half pass. You've really got to make sure you stay out, get your turn and then go into the half pass and then get back across in time. could just see in the walk that the horse was a little bit nervous and just trying to jog a little bit. That was a better pirouette then. Super extended walk. We've got again a huge walk, which made those pirouettes difficult. Because you've really got to slow the walk down as much as possible for those pirouettes, and then that's when you risk them breaking. very smooth transition and then like Izzy Arthur was very quick to pick the reins up after he'd got the transition just looks really loose and soft this horse super positioning in the half pass and it's really important that when you hit the centre line then you're totally straight which Arthur was and the moan strip actually yes it helps you but it leaves nowhere to hide yeah, exactly <laughs> oh lovely wow. change super uphill expressive change you really hope Arthur gets rewarded for that because it was definitely the best change we've seen this morning Very good straight line after the half path. Oh, that was really sad. The first change was so good. And then the second change sadly was just late behind. And a good halt to finish. I think Arthur might be a little bit disappointed with a couple of mistakes in, in that because the overall way of going was so good. Um, but 
but yeah, a super, super horse and be yeah. interesting to see their mark because they would have got some really nice marks in there actually. And we've seen a couple of those that are still up in contention. Um, that could could well be a uh, you know see them somewhere to go for the rest of the competition. Well, just a reminder that at uh, midday today at twelve o'clock that there will be a two minute silence held in memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth the Second, and this will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. We would uh, very much uh, welcome you at home to join us in remembering uh, Queen Elizabeth the Second at midday a two minute silence and so we will come back off the coffee break at a couple of minutes to 12 just before Eva Clark and Kalahari's test at 12.03 so please do join us in observing those two minutes silence I was actually just going back to Arthur Dufour's test I was looking for the best French place finish here uh, in recent years and actually they've only had two top 10 finishes by a French rider in the long format here at Blenheim um, going back to 2008 and uh, they were the French winner uh, not going back to 2008 I can't remember one before that but I will double check um, and actually uh, that they were two French legends uh, Cedric Liard, Cadeau de Wa, mm -hmm. and uh, Jean Tillet and Matelas du Grand Val who had unbelievable amounts of five star experience at the time of retiring so uh, could well be on for a good finish here for Arthur Dufour we'll bring you details of his score as soon as it comes in and actually a score will be coming for Alex Holman and a Carrick Diamond Bad oh Arthur Dufour scores just come in 32.3 just outside the top 10 those expense uh, expensive mistakes I think probably seeing just outside of where he would have preferred to have been sub 30 um, Alex Holman in there as well 34.1 in 19th so now we turn our attention so to Charlotte Rowe with Peter Appleford and John Bevan's HHS Learcourt Cavalier and uh, this a horse uh, that is 11 years of age by Heritage Fortunus and has a good bit of experience at the uh, four star level this is their fourth start as a combination at uh, four star and uh, their best uh, test or their average test from three starts is 36.4. So uh, this horse, again, looks very happy to be here and, and Charlotte's doing a great job of just trying to um, keep him as calm as possible. This combination actually completed here 12 months ago with a clear round cross country. Got a very nice big trot and again it's kind of trying to keep that all together and show him off enough but at the same time trying to keep him as relaxed as possible. Just see Charlotte just give and retake her reins there just to like we were talking about earlier, just to relax everything and 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 just give make sure he takes a breath. Good positioning in the half passes there. Be interesting to see how he copes with the walk. Good pirouette there. It's another good pirouette. And then very quickly into the extended walk.
just thinking from the extended walk to the medium walk, it's steady, steady, keeping hold of every stride so you just avoid them breaking into the trot. But a very good transition and clear transition up into the walk to canter and then very quickly into the medium canter. That all comes up very thick and fast. It's easy to lose a bit of straightness or just not have them quite in front of your leg. It's the intensity of the test. You know, the movements all by themselves are much more straightforward. You put them together and actually they come up very quickly. Yeah. And it's just like being really sure on, you know, exactly where you need to do, what you need to do where to to give you as much time in there as possible. Well, they're a little bit tight. The change was clean. Charlotte's doing a really good job of making use of all, all the arena and really preparing every movement. Very good positioning in the half pass. If anything, you could just say she could just ride a little bit more forward, but when they are quite tight and tense, it's very easy for us to sit here and say ride forward, but actually, you know, you're doing everything you can to, to keep... If she rides forward, she might end up in the gardens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I always think dressage is, good dressage is like a, a marriage in so much as compromise is key. Yeah. And sometimes you don't get everything you want, but you've just got to make do with, you know, and everybody comes out fairly happy. <laughs> I think that's a very good analogy. <laughs> and I think she's pretty pleased with that. He looks pretty pleased with that as well. And so uh, Charlotte wrote, HHS uh, Leah Court Cavalier finish uh, their test for owners Peter Appleford and uh, John Bevan as we have uh, two more combinations before the first break of the day. Katie McGee and Josie Smales will be the two to come forwards. Just uh, a reminder. If you're uh, tuning in to us here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, the uh, eight and nine-year-old class, their dressage starts at half past ten. Ben King and guests will be guiding you through all of the action in the second arena, which is just over to the right-hand side of uh, the uh, four-star long arena. And Will, the eight and nine-year-old class is a really interesting one, and it's a, a real platform for a lot of very, very good horses of the future. And it's a class that you have won previously as well. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I had a very special mare in Kaya 20 who won here in 2016 and it is a fantastic, fantastic class and you forget how much it is for those young horses coming here, stepping up. There's so much atmosphere and it really is a great learning curve for them. And gives them a lot of experience and foundation for the future. Am I right in thinking, Kaya 20, you have some offspring of hers now? Yep, um, she's, she has one fall on the ground who's a yearling now. Um, which is very exciting and she's back in full so hopefully they'll be doing what she did one day <laughs> watch this space for the future lots to look forward to uh, willa newton sat alongside me in the commentary box as next to come forward it is katie mcgee with her own and kitching and kieran mcgee's enchiladas by uh, singapore and a combination that have started at the uh, four star long level once previously and uh, it's a horse, 13 years of age. They scored 32.3 when starting Burner Market Four Star Long back in 2020. They actually went on to finish on that dressage score to take 16th there. Actually missed the 2021 season. So it's uh, had a bit of time on the sidelines, but are coming back uh, for 2022. And they come here off the back of a very good top 10 finish, actually, at uh, Blair Castle in the four-star short and a top 15 finish at the Hanbury Sport Horses Burgeon International back at the end of July, which was a hugely competitive field. So lots to look forward to. They scored 29.4 at Burgeon, so they're very capable of going sub-30. Looks a very impressive horse, um, very uphill and in a very good balance and big moving. So um, it will be interesting to see what they can do today. They got off to a really nice, nice start and so also in a great balance and all so far so good with all the movements. Katie's prepared them very well and 
um, yeah, she's really executing it, the test really well so far. I love the horse's big floppy ears. You can see he's got a really nice expression on, on his face. I would be a big ear watcher. <laughs> Self-confessed. <sighs> but I always just find it, it gives you so much insight into what is going on in a horse's brain. a lot of power with this horse and, and it's just trying to keep it all as smooth as possible but very nice half passes there and very good changeover it kept very straight and then we got the balance and the angle into the second half pass very well and I have to admit one ear was leading the way <laughs> The other one was listening intently. It's got really floppy, really sweet ears. Got a little yes. bit stuck in that pirouette. Kept going in that one. This horse looks really rideable. It's got a huge walk. So far, I think it's looking really, really nice. Very expressive transition up into the canter. You can see he is a little bit spooky. I'm wanting to have a look around, but Katie's doing a brilliant job of just saying no focus on what I want you to do. Even though there aren't huge crowds here yet, there's a lot going on at that main arena. It's sort of enclosed on three sides. Then you've got the palace on the other side. Oh, and a super flying change across the middle. Bang on the centre line. She can do the next flying change as well as the first. Sadly, just didn't quite come off. I think that's a commentator's curse. <laughs> little bit crooked in the final halt but lots of big pats for enchiladas katie mcgee and uh, i think it'll still be a pretty solid score because there were some good uh, marks in there a score in for charlotte rowe and uh, hhs leacourt cavalier 34.0 so that sees them go into 19th on the leaderboard so uh, if you are just tuning in here then a very uh, Warm welcome to you, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, the second day of dressage. Of course, the event brought to you by the Jockey Club for the second year. A new event director this year, Jack Pryor, who uh, has worked for the Jockey Club for over 10 years, but unbelievably passionate uh, about eventing as well. And so combining both of his loves 
to lead the jockey club team here and it really is an, an exciting time for the sport some brilliant new partners being brought on board as well and we've mentioned many of them throughout yesterday's coverage we'll continue to do so throughout the weekend as well but the likes of a Paul Roger who've been big supporters of eventing over the last few years they're the official champagne partner here this year and actually have some really rich Blenheim history as well because um Paul Roger, the favourite champagne of Sir Winston Churchill, who was actually born here at Blenheim Palace and uh, buried just a short distance away in Bladen. Uh, Boodles are back again in 2022, which is wonderful to see. And uh, they are uh, quintessentially British. In fact, the only remaining family-owned jeweller on London's Bond Street. So brilliant to see them uh, expanding their involvement in eventing. Of course... Uh, NFU Mutual have been long-time supporters of not only equestrian sports, but as the uh, uh, countryside and the uh, rural lifestyle that so many people involved in the equestrian industry enjoy, and uh, they will be here as well. And if you're here visiting Blenheim at any point this weekend, then do go and take a look at the uh, family fun area where they have uh, a area to immerse yourself in the world of farming. We've got virtual headsets, which could mean, Willa, and this is one of my favourite things, I know where I'm going to find you tomorrow morning, you could be licked by a virtual cow. Oh, wow. Or have a basket of apples tipped over you, and lots more. It really is. But it's such an incredible opportunity, because Blenheim sees so many different people from so many different backgrounds coming, and it's a wonderful opportunity for people to experience some of that country life and hopefully be able to showcase what we love about equestrian sport as a whole. Uh, there's a good number of other uh, partners this year. Bentley are back as well. Parfum de Marly, who uh, I actually went to visit yesterday and I can tell you that uh, it smells absolutely beautiful. Uh, Brookfield Equestrian and also Quintessentially, which is a really, really interesting one. They've got a concierge desk actually in the owners and riders lounge, but they uh, have pioneered the concept of lifestyle management built around the singular proposition of bestowing back upon members the invaluable gift of time absolutely worth its weight in gold as the final combination to come forward before the break is uh, Josie Smales. Josie comes forward with Ars Vivea. Oh, sadly, just a little break in the shoulder into the medium trot. Um, but very quickly recovered by Josie. So it's again a big horse with a lot of power and it's just channeling that in the right direction. Especially when there's a little bit of atmosphere that you, like we said earlier, asked enough, ask enough but not too much. Just like with husbands. <laughs> <laughs> and this is a combination, actually, the top 15 at Bramham in the long format four star. I think it was the under 25 class a little bit earlier on this year. I think Tracy also went to um, Ball and Dennis. As well she did. She jumped, jumped clear across country, actually. Just a handful of time penalties. Wasn't able to jump on the final day, which was a real shame because they would have been in a good contention there for a, a top placing, but have had uh, some good solid results at um, the three star level and were actually clear across country here 12 months ago as well. Oh, really? Yeah, and, and it's always good to come off the. I've always found previously to come off the back of Bramham here to Blenheim. You know, it's a really good consolidation to then hopefully next year to step up to the five star level you can confidently go up to five star if you've done both Bramham and Blenheim just looks a little bit tense this horse in in the dressage so far just stepping out a little bit in that first pirouette stuck in that second one. And very quickly into that extended walk and goes really going for that. He seems to again have sort of taken a breath and relaxed a little bit in this extended walk. Hopefully this is Josie's moment to Give him a little breath before the canter work. Nice 
nice transition into the canter. Good preparation before the half pass. Then it was really smooth and nicely into that half pass. Be just a little bit late with the flying change. You can see Josie asking for it, but just didn't quite come off where she wanted it to come off. You can actually see her just trying to get the horse a little bit off her leg. Yeah. Coming out of that half pass in preparation for the next flying change. It's been hard, hasn't it? Because he was a little bit excited and tense in the beginning. And then in the canter work, he's actually sort of dropped behind her leg. Which is never easy in the arena when they do that. It's difficult, isn't it, though? Because horses deal with it in different ways. Some horses get very lit up by the atmosphere and very tense. Uh, and others actually go a little bit sort of numb and insular. Yeah, completely. Um, and it's similar would be said with people. If some people go into a, a difficult situation that they're not sure about, some talk lots and get really sort of excitable and others go very, very quiet and reserved and, yeah. and horses exactly the same. Um, so that takes us uh, to the uh, first break here at uh, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials on the second day of dressage. And just one addition to our top 10, Rosie Fry and uh, Arise Cavalier and actually Selena Milnes and Gilmer also uh, they were first down the centre line this morning making it into 8th and ninth respectively but it is Carlitos Kudich K, Marlin Hansen Hotop who leads the way and uh, HHS Learcourt Cavalier and Arco's Loud Arthur Dufour uh, 32.3 went into 12th Charlotte Rowe into 19th on the uh, First session of dressage here as things are shaping up in the four-star long format. Willa Newton has been uh, sat alongside me for this session. And just a reminder that at midday today, we would invite you to observe a two-minute silence in memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And that will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. Uh, Willa Newton... Uh, has been sat alongside me for the first session of dressage as I say Willa you'll be in the arena a little bit later on score that you'd be happy with <laughs> anything you'd like to share I'd love to be sub 30 but um yeah I think a clear round is the most important thing for me well watch this space <laughs> the two could go hand in hand Willa thank you very much good luck thank you very much and we me. will be back after this short break because the next combination due down the center line at half past 10 will be Nicole Mills and Fearless W. Do join us then.
Welcome back to the second day of dressage here at Blenheim Palace International Hall Strauss and the second session of the day as we prepare to welcome forward Nicole Mills with her own Fearless W. I'm delighted to say sat down alongside me is a man who we saw yesterday with one ride. We'll see a little bit later on with his second. Uh, Tom Rowland, good to have you with us. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Horse and Country. Uh, it is very nice to have you with us, and we're looking forward to this uh, next session. We've got some big names that are still to come throughout the day, and uh, Nicole Mills will be the first of those uh, to get us underway. She comes forward with Fearless W, a 12-year-old by Aztica VDL. I've often admired this horse. He's been at uh, four-star level for a while now, and he's a really lovely, big, scopey, rangy horse. Fantastic jumper, and you can see this even with him just trotting around the arena. He has a he has a looseness and a and, and a lovely length of stride, which you'll also see tomorrow when he's when he's galloping around the cross country course. And it's a combination that actually went to uh, Bramham for the long format four star a little bit earlier on this year. Uh, scored thirty four point two in the first phase there, and then had a couple of problems pretty late on in the cross country and Nicole elected to pop her hand up and call it a day. I think she went home and looked at the fitness plan again and has come here with a bit of a new regime in the build-up based in Lincolnshire. Yeah, she runs a lovely stud um, over there, doesn't she? Uh, um, Casewick stud, I think it's called. And I know she's very involved with, with training and um, you know she has some great training facilities over there and lots of local riders go and call upon her to, to help them. And I would imagine that she would be hoping for a good run here because you'd presume that she'd sort of be eyeing up at some stage the dream of popping up to five star um, in, in 2023. She just wants to be a little bit careful that his pole doesn't drop down and he goes a little bit behind the vertical. Um, and end up a little bit overbent. So that I imagine will be her aim aim through the test. But he certainly looks like he's concentrating on her as he was trotting around the edge and, and, and presenting a very attentive frame. And you can sort of see that so far, that idea of a harmonious picture of the horse listening to the rider, paying attention. The frame doesn't change. Perhaps you'd like to see it that little bit higher, that little bit more open in front. But certainly he's very consistent in where he is. That shoulder in just came a little bit off the track. You just saw just as she came between F and P, there was a slight wobble um, to, the, to the inside. But then again, you see that consistent contact across the diagonal. How, have, how has the judging been this morning, Nicole? I haven't seen any of the tests, but I know yesterday maybe a few horses were perhaps a mark or two lower than you'd perhaps expect considering their form. It's an interesting one. I think I I am definitely a better judge that in a commentary box yeah. than I would be at the side of an arena. Um, and it's interesting, actually, because specifically from where we are, we only see really what president of the ground jury, Bobby Stevenson, would, would see because we're just behind C. And there's two other judges, uh, Sue Baxter at E on the, the long side and then uh, Douglas Hibbert at M uh, just uh, next to Bobby Stevenson. So they get a really different picture. Absolutely. Amazing how much that it can change when you're side on or something like that. And actually you saw his frame just come up a tiny bit at the, at the, at the, in the walk transition at C. And I thought then he was presented in a really nice frame. And a good first pirouette, she'll be pleased with that. Sometimes these pirouettes are kind of the the hatred of the eventing world. Sometimes. Quite often. <laughs> the good news is that you don't have them at five stars. So if you can get that far, at least you can avoid them then. And you can see his sort of relaxation there again, where he pays attention to her. He looks like he's a very relaxed horse. She did a good job because, again, when she let go of the reins, he wanted to go a little bit sort of down and in and onto the shoulder. That would seem to be his tendency to slightly curl up and get a bit overbent. 
but there is this continuing theme which hopefully will be carried th forward to the canter work where he's relaxed, attentive and creating that harmonious picture. And lots of horses can get quite tense when you pick them up from that extended walk onto the medium walk, but he stayed really loose there. And actually, S round to C, where you, you pick them up from the extended at S, and then you don't actually go into your counter transition till C. It's quite a long way in It's a walk. long way. Just think, keep breathing, stay relaxed, keep breathing, but it's a long way. And there's a lot of there's a lot of walk in this test, and you've kind of got that feeling as well that you're right up in front of the judges there. You know, sometimes you're lucky, and the walk ends up being more down the A end or something like that. But you really feel like you're right under the judges, um, and you you really can't hide from them. And again, because he he is listening to her so nicely and has that relaxation through the back, you see a really lovely obedient change, and I hope that the judges reward, reward that. And then coming into his left um, half pass, I thought that actually he was more supple to the left in the trot work um, than he was to the right. And you probably see this again here, actually a really nice bend all the way along um, to the centre line. Um, I imagine the judges will pick up on that as well, just to find the... Finds it a little bit easier that way. But she'll be delighted with her flying changes. Those were two really nice changes on the centre line and probably a product like we like I keep on saying about how relaxed the horse has been. You know, he's got those big floppy ears paying attention to her the whole time. Yes, his tail goes a little bit, but that's only really him concentrating more than anything else. And that was really a very, very mistake-free test. You know, her pirouettes were good. She, she did a very good job of not sticking in her right one. It was one slightly shorter step, clean changes, a relaxed walk, obedient half passes, nice mediums. There'd be an awful lot of riders that would be wishing for a test like that this today. So hopefully she's really pleased and um, marched accordingly. And they got a 34.2 at Bramham a little bit earlier on this summer. So uh, we'll look out for their score as it comes in. Uh, just a score in for Katie and Enchiladas. That's Katie McGee and Enchiladas. And they have gone into 35th place at the moment. 36.9. Marlin Hansen, Hot Top and Carlitos uh, Quidditch K. Still the ones to beat. 24.6. Uh, Sarah Bullimore, Coraway in second as things stand. But uh, we've still got a full old day of dressage action to bring you in some big names in there as well. As now uh, to come forwards, it is Brian Morrison for Ireland. Brian, who uh, rides uh, for Global Sport Horses uh, over in Ireland, comes forward with Marie Symington's uh, Global Mentor. An 11-year-old by uh, Mermasar. And talking of big names, Nicole, like Brian would be a, a really big name in the equestrian world through Global Sport Horses. Um, based in Ireland, they would be one of the leading uh, sell sellers of and producers of, of young horses. Maybe not quite as well known yet as maybe, say, Cooley or, or Fernhill, but a place where all the top riders, they'd be giving Brian a ring, seeing what he has in. There's a huge number of horses that we're seeing across all the levels now that have been produced through his stables. And I actually think that this could be a horse that we would see step up to five-star level perhaps next year because has already had done two four-star long formats and was fifth at Ballandenesk last uh, April, not this April, just gone in 2021, and then also top 12, uh, clear inside the time cross-country at Ball and Dennis at the end of 2020. And it feels like actually they've had a bit of an interrupted 2021, missed it a good bit of the season, and so uh, sort of coming back to consolidate uh, their form at the four-star long level before a potential step up next year. And he is a very, very good jockey, well-respected, uh, not only over in Ireland, but also he competes a, a good deal over here. And uh, as you say, the global name is definitely one that people take note of. And he showed his experience there by electing just to do another circle before he went in, whether it was the nice lady in the hoodie set on the ground or the scary sign. I'm sure he did, would have done an arena familiarisation yesterday, but something caught his eye and he did a good job just to get the horse's t attention back. It's also interesting, in the arena familiarisation, you can't actually go in the arena here, can you? It's it, around the outside. Exactly. So uh, my understanding is that if you're in a um, an all-weather arena, 
yeah then you can then you can go into the arena and, and work exactly. as you would work and it slightly yeah. varies from place to place it, some people are very laid back others you'll kind of allow five minutes in there um so obviously on the continent the majority of the venues now are, are all weather um whereas over here with a couple of exceptions the majority of these kind of old british parkland events on turf so to preserve the turf the the, the rule is is that on grass you can't go into the arena it'd be interesting to 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 know how much difference it truly makes being able to work in the arena i'm sure for a horse like this that would be a little bit more tense than say the last horse we saw a, a little bit tighter in his body it would probably help to have had five or ten minutes in here last night but actually it looks like the horse was a little bit tight behind when he came in in his first shoulder in, but actually through this trot work he started to really relax and then carry brian a little bit more you can see he is obviously a bit of a tight horse because he's he's not wearing spurs which would be quite unusual you'll see the odd person not but the majority of riders probably are but we were saying yesterday that actually up until a, a couple of years ago, it was actually a rule, an FEI rule, that you had to wear a spur. And then yeah. that rule was removed. Um, just got a little bit stuck at the end of the flying, uh, end of the uh, pirouette. Um, two years ago, I yeah. think it came out. Yeah, and the big thing here is that when Brian puts his leg aid on, the horse wants to tighten behind, which made him stick a little bit in the first flying change, which unfortunately would be very expensive. And uh, Sorry, in the first pirouette. And then in the second was just a little bit wide where Brian was maybe a little bit more delicate and didn't quite press him on such a tight on such a tight turn having felt that that stick in the first um, and then when you're on a horse like this like you like you said a minute ago Nicole that walk is a long way you know from this S marker you've got to pick up the reins Brian will be doing that very delicately probably still just supporting the horse with his leg a little bit as much as he, he can so that the canter doesn't come as a shock but unfortunately, then you're sort of in this position of really damage limitation when you get to the, here in the walk. And actually just came up for the transition a little bit early, but sort of thought, I'll, um, I'll take what I can now and quite happy to get mm. the walk behind him. Absolutely. And hopefully the canter, you know, it's actually quite nice for a buzzy horse like that, probably just to be able to take them into the extended canter early probably works quite well just lets them let off a little bit of steam. You can just see again how he doesn't really want to be using his legs too much in those um, canter half passes. So it is a little bit of damage limitation. The more you press against his horse's sides, the more it's like shaking a Coke bottle. The horse obviously wants to explode. And then again, in comparison to Nicole's wonderful rideable test, she was able to prepare for the flying change, whereas he's not able to position the horse. So we saw that with a late change. Yep, and then again, just see that little bit of tightness behind. And hopefully we can get a better change this way. Uh. Always difficult when they've broken. You, know, you actually want to be putting a bit of power in there. And ironically, that time, I think he actually went early um, behind, which we would probably prefer, but won't make a difference in terms of the mark. So unfortunately for him today, in, in, in the uh, atmosphere of the arena, you saw it a little bit before he even went in. Um, by the time you've had a couple of incorrect changes, uh, you know, tense walk, and you've stuck in a pirouette, you're very quickly throwing marks away. So Brian will probably be a little bit disappointed with that test, but it looks like the sort of horse that tomorrow all that energy will come to the fore in a positive way and he'll be hopefully galloping flat out and making up for it. Absolutely. Well, a score in for Nicole Mills, 34.0, so into the top 20. She's in uh, equal 19th as things stand. You had one ride in here yesterday, KND Steel Pulse. What was the atmosphere actually like? For, because obviously there is so much going on down there. Well, I have to say that actually I find it interesting that they've put the um, eight and nine year old class in on. You can just see it to the right of the screen now. And actually it's busier down there because you've got the trade stands up this side. You've actually got a little it's actually a little bit quieter. You can see you've got the cross. You can't quite see now, but um, 
Yeah, so here you go. You can see the that you can see the short arena, and you can see it's a lot busier there. There are more people mm -hmm. watching because it's down by the trade stands. So that's brilliant exposure for the eight nine year olds. And I know last year and this year, the first years we've had it in there. But personally, I would actually say that that arena is possibly a little bit busier. Um, the other thing we can't see is that there is a long hack. It's a good 15, 20 minute hack. And sometimes to get from the stables to the to the arena, and Blenheim is quite famous for that, and sometimes that can really relax a horse. But other times, if you're on a horse like Brian's, you're going past the car parks, they've got the ROR dressage here with the jockey club, that can wind some horses up. Um, so this lovely relaxed arena might not tell the whole picture for... Um, for what may have gone on before on that hack over and actually again we can't quite see in the screen now but um, the the long format do have the big screen near them so that does make it harder so and there's a couple of cross-country fences exactly. in this main arena yeah. there's a lot to Absolutely. look at yeah. um, and you know these horses are clever they know they're at a big one they yeah. know that there's a a, a fun exciting day yeah. to come tomorrow Ginny Thompson there just weaving her way in among the markers as she comes forward with her own mm -hmm. Gladstone the second this is an 11 year old by Dursa Nart Ginny mm -hmm. who's been based over here in Great Britain from her native New Zealand for a couple of years now and actually has made a really good team of horses over here this is a horse that went to Mill Street for the long format four star a little bit earlier on this year was top 20 there jumped a superb double clear round a big smile from Ginny to our ground jury, just uh, saying, wait a second and look at me. Bobby Stevenson, president of the ground jury at C, uh, Douglas Hibbert for Great Britain at M, and Sue Baxter for Great Britain at E. And like you say, Nicole, um, it's great to see Ginny Burling have a team. She's got two horses here in the long. She's a very local rider, obviously from New Zealand, but based just down the road on the A40 at Blythe Tate's Old Yard. So that's been a lucky yard for previous Kiwis and, and hopefully proving to be for her as well. Interestingly, she has this horse in a nave bit. It looks like it might even be a straight bar from the way in which it's just sitting in the corner's mouth, the, the corner of the horse's mouth. So that would tell you that she wants. He's quite a polite horse, possibly, and she's wanting him to take a pull and carry her across the arena. But certainly, he looks at there. You know, that's creating a really elegant picture. A little bit down at the end at the H marker, where again he just wants to sort of tuck in, and she wants to keep him out, pulling forward. But he's, he's creating an, an elegant picture. And you see that there, some really nice scope. But a little bit like we saw a couple of horses ago in the coals, just wants to slightly bear down. And that might affect the transition mark, because it's worth remembering that that movement there is actually essentially double marks. You've got 20 marks. Yes, you've got the extension across, but you've also got the, the transition marker. Which, in a way, is... Um, great if you've gone for your extension and it hasn't quite gone to plan you can claw your marks back in the transition um, but it means that both are, are just as expensive exactly you know and it, it sometimes tests suit different horses if you've got a fairly smooth uh, small moving horse and really it's 30 marks but actually 40 marks for your mediums and extensions you might not be the biggest fan of this test but I think all horses will have warmed up by having done your two mediums across the short diagonal they should all be nicely warmed up for that extension. That was a nice pirouette. She nearly got a little bit stuck coming out, could have maybe had one less step. That was a nice first pirouette. And again, you do really feel like you're sat under the judges here. Their, their eyes are literally just outside the screenshot. You feel like you can almost hear them breathing on you. And actually, because it's set just into the arena on that sort of next um, marker inside, they have the space to look at you. Exactly. Exactly, so you yeah. You can't even hide anything yeah. from them by the edge of the arena. Because actually sometimes if you're halting at sea directly in front of the judge at sea, they don't always get a great vision, even though you're right in front of them because if of their so car bonnet, exactly. because you're so yeah. close. Exactly. And Janine's done a really good job in this trot because unfortunately the walk, the horse has actually got a little bit tense. And you can see there's obviously quite a lot of wind because her tails are flapping, which you really don't want in the walk um, or at any stage in your test. But I thought the trot looked pretty relaxed. So she's obviously done a very good job of hiding a little bit of tension, which unfortunately we're now seeing a little bit more in the walk. And she rode that really beautifully because the horse was wanting to get quite tense, but you saw how she made sure she got her leg on. She made sure she positioned the horse. 
So that was some really good riding because it would be very easy to have thrown away that canter transition mark from the tense walk, but she rode it, rode it really beautifully. And that's a nice frame there. Now we're seeing him in the canter a bit more up. Um, so I always remember being told you can always try and get a bonus mark each time you ride round A. It's not actually a movement, but the way in which you present the horse. And she presented the horse really beautifully um, at that A end. The half pass slightly kind of ran out of steam towards the end. Actually, this canter work is looking nice. But again, we saw, unfortunately, a late change, partly because he just lacked that little bit of rideability, and when she wanted to go and prepare for the change, he just came a little bit against her leg and pushed against her leg, which made it harder for her to get the, get the flying change. Again, just a little bit cautious in her canter half passes. And then just a bit high in the change. It was, a, it was better than the first one. And actually he allowed her to prepare more, but still it was a bit tight and a bit high. So it still won't be, unfortunately, it won't be a great mark. But there have been some, some really promising moments in this test. Um, just with a few places where he looked perhaps a little a little bit delicate. And you saw that where he curled in a little bit in the trot and then in the canter where he um, got a little bit tense. I imagine she will be pleased to have got that bit out of the way. Well, Ginny Thompson and Gladstone, the second, the second of Ginny's two rides in the four-star long, also has uh, Capitan de Us. And uh, we'll bring you a score for her as soon as it comes through. A score in for Brian Morrison and Global Mentor of 39.0. Uh, Nicole Mills actually has uh, picked up a score of 34.0. Her best test at four-star long level. And she sits on a score of 34 just inside the top 20. So if you are just tuning in here to Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials, then a very warm welcome to you. We are... Uh, Focusing our attentions on the four-star long format, Tom Rowland uh, sat alongside me as next to come forward. It is for Sweden. Amanda Starm with uh, Carilda Rose 80. And this, a 10-year-old mare by Kareem. And the horse stepping up to the level for the very first time. Actually, I think uh, a first visit to Blenheim for Amanda has... Uh, a very good uh, chance with Corpora Bay AT as well. That uh, is a horse we've seen or heard a, a good deal of. And uh, she comes forward with a personal best at any level with this horse of 31.5. So uh, Amanda Starm now coming forwards. And uh, this is a horse who actually went to Haradapan for the Nations Cup in uh, August. Had uh, a completion, just picked up 20 penalties cross country. Had a completion there. Have been uh, just outside the top 20 at Babarifko in the four-star short uh, last year as well. This horse looks like he has the potential to do, to do a really good um, high-scoring test because he's kind of got that natural power, some elevation to his step. You wonder if he gets a little bit strong and a bit keen because he's actually interesting wearing a hanging cheek snaffle, which you wouldn't see uh, that often in a, in a dressage test, but just allows a bit more pole pressure. So we tend to be for a slightly stronger type of horse, which in, in a positive way he looks because he's got that big front on him and that big step. Again, we talked in Ginny's test about positioning the horse at that A mark and so the judges can really see, and she had him in a really nice frame there. Keeping a, keeping a nice consistent shoulder in there. It, it looked like it was consistently on the same tracks and the same angle all the way. And again, that nice frame. Up, open, he's got a lovely front on him, this horse. Little bit of a, whether it was a spook or something at the H marker at the end would have been a bit expensive. But this is an, another test where actually horse and rider look like they're doing a, a good job of communicate, communicating together. They look like a partnership. Yes, he looks keen and, and, and strong, but she's presenting that in a, in a positive way with a, with, a, with a really active test. 
which got a pretty decent strike rate at four star long level, has only been to one four star long, but she won it actually at Sopot a little bit earlier on this year with the horse actually that she rides in the eight nine year old class, uh, which is the the Corpru Bay A team horse. So comes over with two rides this year. And that's when you know, as 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 a British riders, we can be proud to ha be presenting um, other competitors from different countries with events like this. You know, Blenheim is unique unique in its in its positioning and its and its atmosphere in the crowds. And I think it's great. And hopefully, ride riders from other countries will uh, you know, enjoy coming and and giving horses experience at these sort of classic old British events. That's a little bit in the pirouettes where the horse's sort of size and, dare we say, strength work against her a little bit because actually to really collect him and get him sitting underneath for the pirouettes was a little bit hard for her. And so they were just a bit big. They they didn't stick, but they're not going to get the biggest marks because they were just a little bit um, little bit wide in the, in the turn that she took. But he, um, you know, he's marching on now, isn't he? He's He's relaxed yet. Yep, yep, forward. Again, we can see her her tails flying about. So, uh, and if you look closely at the, the flowers, they're moving a bit as well. So what we can't sense is, is, is the wind, and that will definitely be creating an extra factor for these horses. Do you, I mean, her tails are, are relatively long, I would say. I, I take it, it it is personal preference and that actually some people, if their horses do get quite hot with the tails moving, that you can wear shorter tails? Yeah, most tails will, will have a weight in the bottom of them in the corner that will weigh them down a little bit. I had uh, a horse that was very, very sensitive behind the saddle. He was actually a really sweet, easy horse. But he couldn't handle that feeling of something touching behind the saddle and I actually ended up uh, sewing my tails to the saddle. So you don't want to fall off if that happened. And I know <laughs> occasionally that came about because there was one time where it was windy and he would normally be the most laid back horse and he really lost it at Ballandenisk in Ireland. And I had my groom, Ali, who stood with me running back to the lorry to try and find something to secure my tails down. And I think there's still the odd person that does that. But certainly they're normally weighted, which will give them hold them down a little bit at least. Whereas other horses just totally don't pay any attention and they could be waving around behind them and they... They never, they never seem to mind. And just a little bit of anticipation, a bit of tension creeping in there for the change, which, which, which was a pity. But I think for her first blame, she should be pleased with that test. You can see he'd love to have changed again on that centre line, and she did a good job not to let him but as a result wasn't quite on the center line for the um for the final halt so Kirill de rose at just a 10 year old owned and ridden by amanda Starm from sweden uh finished their test and we'll bring you a score for them as soon as it does come through 24.6 is the score to beat as the palace pavilion overlooks at the two dressage arenas here in the main arena where actually on uh, sunday the uh, final show jumping phase will take place for the long format class. And of course, tomorrow morning, the eight and nine year old show jumping will be taking place. That is uh, the one to beat, though. Marlin Hansen, Hot Top, and Carlitos Quidditch K. A combination that actually uh, are out in front by a good margin, 24.6. And a combination that a few people perhaps haven't heard uh, quite so much of, but they've been top 20 at Buccalow previously, were long listed for the German team as well for the FEI Eventing World Championships in Protoni. And uh, don't forget that uh, at 12 o'clock today, there will be a two-minute silence to remember Her Majesty the Queen. And we would invite you at home to uh, pay your respects along with us here at uh, Blenheim as uh, we will be uh, taking a two-minute silence at midday each day throughout the competition to remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And that will be followed by Laura Wright singing the national anthem. Now, though... It is uh, the next combination to come forwards, and it is Emma Thomas with Rebecca Villard's uh, The Buzz Factor. There's an 11 year old by OBOS Quality, Emma, who's part of the uh, Wesco Equestrian Foundation program, and uh, The Buzz Factor, a horse that is, uh, 
I know one she thinks a massive amount of and has given Emma some really good experience coming up the levels as well. 11 years of age, as I say now, and they've had some good mileage under their belts as well. Have uh, had some good performances, uh, top 20 at uh, Bicton. At Bicton, beg your pardon. At Burgeon, Hanbury Sport Horses, Burgeon International Horse Trials actually made their four star long debut at Bicton last year, which didn't quite go to plan, but they've since been uh, completed here last year. And then they went on to Bramham and had a top 15 finish in the under 25s class there. So have been getting some good mileage and uh, backed up with clear rounds at both Burgeon and Chatsworth at the four star short level of competition. Like you say, Nicole, Emma's a really ambitious rider on Pippa's Wesco Foundation course. And I know she's here really hoping to secure an MER, a minimum eligibility requirement. Last year she was unlucky, she had a run out of fence four. And fair play to her, she carried on, got around the whole course, which will, be, which will stand uh, in good stead for this year in terms of having been around that course already. So I think that was really, you know, Commit, real commitment from her to keep going. Lots of people would pull up after a after a silly run out at the fourth fence, which is the same again this year. So she'll be pleased to get that out of the way, and hopefully we'll then have the experience to to continue for the rest of the course. Breaking, unfortunately, the end of that medium trot. And that was a real shame because I was just saying that the horse was presenting a really sort of keen picture in a nice way, ears pricked, um, looking alert and attentive. Um, and then, unfortunately, it just tipped over a little bit too much into a break. And she did a good job there because it's not ideal if you've broken in one of your mediums, especially your second one, to then have your extension straight away. Um, so she did a good job there to, to, to rescue and ride cautiously yet still forward into the extension. And I do like looking at his ears. Look how they're sort of paying attention to her great big ears, which to me is a real sign of an honest horse. And she's got him in the double bridle, and I suspect that's because there are just occasions where he can come up a little bit too much, get a little bit high, almost a little bit hollow in his frame. She's really preparing for these pirouettes very, very nicely. So hopefully she's going to be rewarded. You can see how she's getting her legs on. She's positioning the bend to the inside. And she was rewarded with a really nice pirouette, but actually that was a real masterclass in riding one because all the way across there, she was preparing for it. And she's using every ounce of the arena, isn't he? He's also quite a compact horse, yeah. which for this movement will make a massive difference and, and also gives you that little bit more time before the transition. Absolutely. So she should be really proud of those pirouettes because for anyone watching, that was a real example of how to ride them. But you could tell it was going to happen as soon as she turned at the, um, at the H marker because she was all the, all the way across that, that short side positioning the horse. And he's got a really nice walk on him in this difficult moment again. So she's obviously dealing, you know, that's that's two breaks now with with some tension and maybe that that um, keenness of his to invert, which we see again there, just come a little bit high, hence the double bridle. But within that, there have been some nice moments. So not perhaps so far getting the, the mark she'd hoped today, but no doubt there's there's potential there for them both. And again, yeah, and that's tri that tricky moment where you're kind of in an emergency situation. You can see she just sort of had to pull on the inside rein to get the positioning, um, which is not ideal, but that's, you know, in the moment, that might be what she elects and decides to do. And then hopefully he's not going to come too high and hollow for these changes. Beautiful change. So there we go. Like Nic you say, Nicole, because he's so short coupled, exercises like the pirouettes and the changes are uh, uh, possibly very easy for him. I say this in the in the best possible way, but he's almost pony-like. Yeah. He's very compact. I mean, he's he's a big enough horse. He's not particularly small, but he has that sort of pony-like quality. Absolutely. Absolutely. That means that his hind end is underneath him, so it's easy for him in those sort of exercises. So hopefully she'll get the change this way as well. 
she did, although with that slight cheekiness we've seen from him in the arena today, he, he lifted up and came croup high, which will affect the mark. Um, but it was a clean change. So you just hope when you've done a test like this, which again we're seeing in the transition to the halt there, has had some tension, that the judges are still brave enough to reward the good bits um, in the way in which they deserve, and that they don't just get sat all the time on the slightly lower marks because because they're seeing some some mistakes as well and actually i think she'll be a little bit disappointed with a couple of those at places where the marks bled out slightly because there is uh, so much to like about this horse and as this test is a combination totally and he so certainly for me watching takes you a little bit by surprise because you think oh he's doing it he's doing a, a nice movement there and i think i said oh he's got a lovely walk and then as soon as i said that he, he jogged so he, there's they, obviously a little bit of inconsistency they there. can hear us yeah they can yeah. hear us it's some sixth sense uh, whatever exactly. as commentators say they yeah. can prove us wrong yeah um as uh Emma Thomas and the Buzz Factor finish their test. Uh, Tom, you've got another ride a little bit later on this afternoon. Quintilius. Yes. Tell us a little bit about him. So I'm hoping that he comes here and gives a competitive performance. He's certainly very capable of it. Um, it was never initially when you kind of plan at the beginning of the year our intention to bring him here, but I then broke my wrist off a horse, so he missed Bramham. Um, and it's really important to me that he does a second four star long. He went to Buckler last year, and that was a great experience for him. Um, he's been feeling really good, and he hasn't done much this summer, but he won and advanced a few weeks ago at Wellington um, and came out of that feeling really well. So that kind of gives me confidence that he's, he's, he's going and he's in a good place. I haven't done masses with him, which was very tactical. I lunged him on Tuesday, and then I hacked him yesterday. Um, uh, lunged him Tuesday, hacked him Wednesday, and then I got on him yesterday, and he was absolutely wild. So I've given him quite a lot of work since. <laughs> was, that, yeah. was that tactical? And then so, you're like, oh, wrong tactics. So <laughs> I'm like, okay, right, change of tactics now. So I actually rode him up here. I did the long hack that we mentioned earlier and rode him in the, in the warm-up arenas up the top by the palace at 7.30 this morning. And that was the third time I've schooled him. And, I, you know, it's always that balance. You want to overwork them, but actually he felt great. And how long will you be on him I'll give myself test. plenty of time. I'll probably get on 45 minutes before taking into account the 15-minute hack over there. And you can always kill time, can't you? So if he's feeling good, he won't need to do very much. Um, but I'd always rather it that way around than suddenly you, you've not got enough time. You can always drop the reins and walk and, and, and whatever. So I'd, I'd always rather do it that way around than find that you're losing time and get stressed because of that. Very sensible. Well, we will look forward to seeing your test a little bit later on. I think you are due in the arena at you could two thirty six. Two thirty two thirty six. There we go. Well, I couldn't move my papers quick enough. Next to come forward is Kate Rusher Smith with Leslie Rusher and Dasset Eventing's HHS Dasset Class Ten Year Old by Kanya Makan. Uh, Kanya Makan, I believe, is a show jumping sire. Interesting. Um, and Kate, of course. Uh, Runs at Dasset Eventing, based just down the road from Aston Le Walls in uh, Northamptonshire, and they have a brilliant facility there. You can see a lot of Dasset horses going on to great things, sell a good number over to America as well, and she's got a really good eye for a horse, and they have a great setup. Uh, busy mum as well, has uh, small children. Yeah, we saw Brian Morrison earlier from Global. Um, he's got a very good reputation for, for being one of the leaders in selling horses. And then here we've got Kate from Dasset. So in this in this in this short space of time, we've seen two of the real leaders in sourcing young horses. And this horse has a real looseness about him. We've seen a couple of tight tests, but this horse looks relaxed and laid back. And as a result, she's able to have the confidence to ride him forward into the mediums, forward down the down the long side in the in the shoulder ends. Um, and he looks really nice through his body. You can see that again now. He may be not the biggest mover in terms of what he can offer in the extension, but she's able to ride it. She's able to be brave. She's able to then ride the transition. Hopefully she feels the same, that she's able to position the, the left half pass. And you saw she came out the corner there in a really good bend. So she's giving a really good example of, of how important it is to have that rideability. You know, maybe not, dare we say, the biggest mover from what we can see in, in, in our commentary box, but really, really rideable. And supple, supple in his half passes, supple in his body through the corners, riding for every mark, really nice in the outline in that in that uh, walk transition, which you would hope would be rewarded with a with a really good mark, because that was, to me, you're not going to see a nicer walk transition, trot to walk transition, 
than that all day. And the walk just gets a little bit slow. You can see her just sort of urging him forward with her um, with her reins and her arms. So although the pirouettes didn't stick, they weren't the most active. They could have been a little bit tighter. Um, the advantage of a horse that's maybe a bit steadier in the, in the walk is that now you come into the extension and you can be brave. Um, but you don't want to make it look like you're over nagging with the leg but you can see for Kate she's having to use a bit of leg because ironically I, I bet Emma who we've just seen would would wish that her horse was a bit lazy in the walk um, whereas maybe Kate would quite like some of the buzz factors energy from the walk but it creates a feeling of secureness now she's going to want to have him in front of the leg for this counter transition. You can see her left leg coming back, but you can see it was a tiny bit slow, and as a result, he came up. And then hopefully she'll be, you know, for a for a steadier horse like him, this extension is ideal. A good blast down the long side is just what you want for a horse like him, I would imagine, into the canter. So this test probably suits him quite well. And you can see that suppleness again because, and also Kate's experience showing because she has so far given us a really good example in the three half passes that we've seen of positioning the bend. Every time she's come out the corner with the bend already on. And just the change was a bit, was, was a bit late, didn't really happen, and then was late itself. And perhaps that's just a reflection that although she's doing a very good job of presenting some of the lateral work like this is he truly in front of the leg so actually when she goes to ask for the for the um, flying change aid it's delayed and it doesn't happen but there's no doubt that there's mar many marks to, you know, the horse is only 10 i'm sure she'll develop more sharpness in him and again that was a clean change but it just took a little bit longer to happen it's difficult as well, isn't it? You know, when a horse drops behind your leg when you go into the arena, um, to actually be able to do the things that you would normally do outside of the arena to help rectify that. Because obviously... Yeah. Lovely halt we can see at the end. Absolutely, you know, when you're in there, she probably would have quite liked to give him an absolutely massive kick <laughs> in, in, in that canter. Maybe it's because he had an itch on it. That maybe that's why. Maybe he wanted to <laughs> have, have an itch. Now, he's, now he's ready to go. Yeah. Um, but it's it, it's a difficult scenario. My first horse still pulls a little bit like that. You know, you end up feeling like you, you're kicking every stride and they're slightly holding you hostage a little bit. And you feel like the judges can really see you sort of flapping along. Not that Kate looked like that at all, but she probably will be, will be um, pleased with a lot of that test, but wanting to create for next year with him as an 11 year old a little bit more sharpness and activity look how chilled he is now yeah absolutely and there'd be plenty of people that would have been very happy to add some of that chilledness absolutely. to uh, their test yeah. well look this is how the leaderboard is shaping up Carlitos Kudic K Marlin Hansen Hot Top out in front at uh, 24.6 Sarah Bullimore Coroway in second uh, ahead of Dirk Schrader and uh, Casino 80 the horse on whom he took the reserve German national championships uh, a little bit earlier on this year. Uh, Felicity Collins, uh, RSH contender, Felicity absolutely delighted with that test, and she sits well in contention, as does Lizzie Boff. Uh, Gemma Stevens we'll actually see a little bit later on as well with the horse on whom she finished top 10 here last year, Jalapeno, and uh, Rosie Fry and Selena Milnes, the only other two or well, the only two, I should say, that have been so far today that have broken into the top 10, 30.6 and 31.0 respectively. So that is how things stand as we head towards uh, five more combinations before the lunch break. And just a reminder that at 12 o'clock today, we will be holding a two minute silence in memory of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II. And this will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright. We would very much invite you at home to follow us in observing that two minute silence at midday. That will be held each day throughout these horse trials here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials and uh, riders have been invited to wear black armbands throughout the week as well uh, to pay their respects to uh, 
a truly remarkable monarch. So uh, now we turn our attentions to uh, Charlotte Agnew. And Charlotte comes forward with uh, Coolie Carnival Lady, owned by White Heather Eventing. Charlotte, who has had uh, some brilliant results over the years at very top level at Five Star, had that wonderful uh, partnership with a horse called Out of Africa 2, I think it was, up at the Five Star level. Um, but this is a horse, Coolie Carnival Lady, by my oh my, 11 years of age, uh, and a horse that uh, actually steps up to the four-star long level for the first time was top 15 at Bicton in the three-star long at the end of 2020. Didn't do a huge amount in 2021, but has stepped up to four-star this year and being clear cross country at both Houghton Hall and the NAF five-star Hartbury International Horse Trials as part of their preparation for here. Like you say, Nicole, it's really great to see Charlotte back out at this level. I know she was really excited to have secured her, her Blenheim qualification earlier in the summer to come back. A few years ago, she was right sort of on the cusp of the British team with Out of Africa, and she was a very prolific young rider with a horse before that called Little Bow. So she's had some really top five-star placings, and I know she's taken a bit of time since to establish her, her business. She's recently just moved to her own place in Monmouthshire. And it's great to see her back out here on on a horse that, you know, out of Africa was a great big, scopy, powerful horse. And actually this male would look quite similar to that in, in, in the way in which um, she presents herself in the arena with, you know, that big, big, scopy step. And there was a little bit of a loss of balance in that extension, which she'll be disappointed about because she would have the potential to score really highly in those movements because she is is so powerful. Um, but I would think she'd be of quite a similar stamp looking at her um, to that legendary out of Africa that she had. It's a tough old game, isn't it? At the end of the day, riders sometimes as they're building their businesses, you have to make some decisions and, and quite grown up decisions and sell horses that you would really rather keep in your yard uh, in order to make your business viable and, and kind of successful long term. Um, and sometimes you, you it takes what? five years to get a horse up to five star level maybe longer um oh, absolutely and charlotte's done exactly that you know she's um sold a lot of good horses um the advantage of that is is that um she's now got her own base she's not having the easiest time today the horse went a little bit irregular almost a bit lateral in the walk there um and you saw that that slight sass am i allowed to say that in the half passes <laughs> as well and so she's not that keen really to have Charlotte's legs on her. So whether it's moving sideways in the in the half passes or the positioning for the for the pirouette. So Charlotte really elected to almost sort of steer her round um, in those pirouettes, which was probably a sensible thing at this stage because I think she probably thought like it was going to be quite explosive otherwise. Um, and so now she picks her up and the mares just almost would be quite keen to almost go into lateral pairs um, so in, in the walk, which can be quite expensive to happen. Um, so not the easiest today. And again, just a little bit of a delayed resistant counter transition because Charlotte's having to be quite cautious with her leg. I'm sure she'd like to have been a lot braver and got a more instant reaction, but she probably felt like that wouldn't have been very wise. So so interesting to have seen Kate's very chilled, consistent test, and then you've, you know, where you'd have liked a little bit more of a reaction to the leg, and then Charlotte's test, where really she didn't put too much leg on at all. So it'll be interesting to see how she gets on with these flying changes when she's probably not that keen to be using too much leg in them. And she did that beautifully because that was so well ridden. And if you watched her, her right leg there, you hardly saw it move. So she, so Charlotte didn't give a big aid because we know that would have created a resistance. She probably just slightly um, changed the weight through her seat bones. And that was enough to let the mare change. And again, well, like we say earlier, you hope then that the judges are being... Um, observant and generous enough that yes they may have penalized the walk but that actually that they can still not just be sat on the negative marks and reward accordingly when you see a lovely flying change like this a little bit more muddled but again clean 
I and think again, very tactfully ridden. From considering Charlotte. the walk, actually, she'd be very pleased with those. Absolutely, and and, and the canter work in general hasn't actually the horse. Yes, yeah, she you know she was probably a little bit delicate in the half passes, but um, the, the the canter as a whole has has been a much more relaxed picture. So obviously, this horse probably finds the walk its its most challenging bit, and that's when you you look six weeks before and find out what test you're doing at Blenheim and your heart sinks because you realise it's that it's that um, four-star test with all the walk in front of the judges and the pirouettes. And then they walk out of the arena beautifully yeah. calm and relaxed. Of course. <laughs> showing that you, they can do it, really. Yeah. And uh, But ultimately, the ingredients are there for, for those little mistakes to be ironed out because actually there was a lot to like about this mare. She had a real kind of look at me, lots of power, lots of impulsion... And uh, just a little tricky in places for Charlotte to control that and, today. And like you say, it's her first four-star long. Uh, you know, she had a quiet year last year. And you, you would hope that the, the mayor is only going to improve for being in these atmospheres and in these scenarios. Um, and Charlotte did the most beautiful job in the canter work there of, of rescuing the test back and really pulled the marks back up with actually a very nice canter tour all round. So, uh, Charlotte Agnew, Cooley Carnival Lady, and those Cooley horses are very well known for being exceptional in the jumping phases that have completed their test. As uh, so we look for a score for uh, Kate Rocha Smith in just a moment, Amanda Starn 36.5, uh, Emma Thomas 38.8. So that sees Emma just go into around 45th position. As uh, Kate Rocha Smith at uh, 35.3 into 28th. So now uh, we welcome forward Claire Lewis. Claire comes forward with Kumro Calva, 13 year old by Edge Bike. And uh, Claire, another who has had uh, some brilliant runs around at the very top level, had that wonderful partnership with Significant uh, for many years. And uh, Kumro Calva, her ride here this weekend. And actually, they come forward having uh, completed here a few years ago. They actually completed here back in uh, 2018 and uh, com went to Bramham in 2019, but had some good results at the four-star short level and then missed the 2020 season, as did a few people, to be fair. Um, not sure whether that was through injury or just through circumstance with everything that was going on, but had a quiet a couple of years and actually ran around the... Uh, three-star long format at Houghton a little bit earlier on this uh, last year before making the step back up to four-star long format here last September. So actually jumped clear across country and clear in the show jumping, just added a few time penalties 12 months ago. So Claire Lewis and Kumro Calvert next to come forwards. Tom Rowland sat alongside me here on the second day of dressage at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials and a lovely way to start her test. It's great to see Claire back at a big event like Blenheim because she's a real legend of the sport. She's produced many horses um, to the top level and been a really um, regular figure at Badminton and Burley over the years. This would be a horse that wouldn't be the biggest mover, but looks like he's very rideable. Um, so a little bit similar to Kate Rocha Smith's horse that we saw earlier in that respect. Had a little bit of a stumble there in the in the shoulder in. And just loses a little bit of his suppleness when she sends him forward. But hopefully those two mediums will have nicely warmed him up for the longer extension that we've got now. Just, you'd just like to see the, the hind end coming through a little bit more and re uh, releasing a little bit more. He's almost a bit inclined in those, uh, in the in the trot to get a little bit tighter behind. Um, although, so although the front toes were flicking a bit there, he wasn't really coming through from behind, which will be reflected, I imagine, in the marks. Just that slight lack of suppleness that we see in the body, whether it's in the extensions or in the half passes. But he's rideable and he's relaxed, and that's allowing Claire to position him Riding very nicely to the marker there at M. I always think it's quite brave to put their number on the on the bridle. I always try and hide it on the on the numner. 
um, I think it's a great big kind of like beacon that you've got shining on the horse's <laughs> side just to show the judge exactly where their head is. <laughs> but maybe show, maybe she's so confident with his frame she can afford to do that. That's an interesting point, actually. I hadn't considered that. It's the mm. same as white gloves, isn't it? Yeah. You know, yeah. If, you're, if you're really confident in yeah. your hands and, yeah. and sort of yeah. consistency. We just saw him stick in the first pirouette. Better in the second, but just again that slight feeling of a lack of suppleness through his middle, which makes those pirouettes harder. But we see the relaxation, allowing for a nice forward walk with a good good step, although we could see a little bit more over track. But he's quite happy to be in the Blenheim Arena. He'll gladly stay in there all day. So she won't be worrying too much about this long walk from S. She can just stay relaxed, knowing that he'll be relaxed underneath him as, as well. But the big thing for her with him, really, is to keep the engagement of the hind leg. You can see where sometimes he gets a little bit stuck behind. So it'll be interesting to see how she gets on with her flying changes, bearing that in mind. And again, although it was accurate, you could have had a little bit more expression in the upwards transition. You could have had the hind leg coming a little bit more underneath to create a bit more push up into canter. Very impressed by Claire's sparkly hat. She's um, coming into the, she's getting very modern now with all her blinks. So that's nice to see. We'll be looking for your sparkly hat later, yeah. Tom. <laughs> see how she gets on encouraging him to sit behind and to engage on the hind leg for the change beautiful really really well ridden and that's probably also a product of the horse's rideability because um, he allows her to position her and she can be brave with her legs and actually he's doing a really consistent rideable accurate canter tour so far Yes, maybe you could see a little bit more expression to really get those top marks, get those uh, sevens and eights to be in, to be breaking into the top few. Um, but actually, he's done nothing wrong at all in this canter work. And again, another really nice change. So I imagine, so long as she gets a nice turn down the centre line, she'll be happy with that, especially with the canter work, which was really solid. You can see she can really position him into her corners. Um, and... The homework would be perhaps a little bit through the wind, a little bit more expression. A pity that the halt was a bit crooked at the end. But you can see she's really pleased with him because he tried really hard. He was attentive the whole way through. He made very few mistakes, just that one pirouette that was stuck. Um, perhaps not the top marks to break into the into the into the top ten of the leaderboard. But you, she's deservedly pleased with the horse because there's no doubt that he tried really hard through that test. They scored a 40.9 here 12 months ago and a 38 back in 2018 on the two occasions they've been here previously. So I'd like to think that she could improve on that. You'd certainly hope, you'd certainly, you know, I think that would be, I, I wouldn't like to comment on judging at all, but you'd certainly hope so. I think that test would be deserving of, of being an improvement on that for, for sure. You know, um, especially that canter work, lots of, lots of riders would be, um, very happy if they achieved what she demonstrated in the canter work there. So uh, Claire Lewis has completed as uh, next to come forward. It will be another German combination. And we've got two German combinations inside the top three as things stand at the moment. So what can Nikolai Oldinger do? He comes forward with his own Timo. That's a 12 year old by Timolino. And uh, Nikolai who uh, has actually been to a couple of Le Leon d'Angers Young Horse World Championships. Comes forward with a horse uh, that uh, he's produced up the levels. And this is already creating a really nice picture um, cantering around the outside here. The horse is relaxed, the horse is supple with a, with a scopey canter. He's just giving him a pat, he's just working him a little bit softer and a bit rounder. I imagine in a minute he'll shorten the reins back up and present a, a higher frame. But you can see that relaxation scope. He's sitting in a really beautiful position in that very classic German way. Now he's shortening his reins back up. Um, and already I would imagine that the judges will be, will be taking note of this. 
Well, this is a horse that actually was bought out to uh, three-star level by Peter Flarup from uh, Denmark, who's been to many a championships. Nikolai took on the ride in 2019 and owns the horse alongside Jutta Spethman and Michael Spethman. And actually, on Echo Ratings, his numbers is uh, one of the top five uh, ranked horses in the field on their ELO rating. So the ELO rating essentially is takes into account... Uh, the number of horses that you've gone up against and the number of horses that you've beaten and the quality of those horses as well. So uh, you can, it's almost like you trade points with horses that you have beaten. And so this uh, certainly a competitive combination. You can see why you look at their record and actually they were uh, top 10 at Samura a little bit earlier on this year. That was a class that was won by uh, Astier Nicolas and Alert Amalip Or, who are out in Protoni for the French team. Uh, so they've got some really good form line there. They won Stragom four-star short, actually, last season. So have had some really good results and have had some low numbers in the first phase, too, uh, down in the 20s. So uh, one to watch for Germany, Nikolai Aldinger and Timo. So hopefully we are watching what's going to be one of the one of the more competitive tests of the two days, and you can see that just in the way the horse moves, the suppleness through the body and the expression. So there in that medium trot, I mean that was easy. It was like the horse was still in third gear. So I would imagine that now he's going to really go for it down in the extension, but it's just in a beautiful frame. Could occasionally be a little bit higher in the pole, perhaps um, a tiny bit more uphill. Actually, comes a bit more up in in that um, really beautifully engaged extension. We saw that the horse can collect because he really collected him around the outside of the arena before he came in, before he went down the centre line. Um, and we've seen that he can extend as well. Just lost a little bit of positioning. Um, still very, very good at the end. But there was just one step there where the horse had a little bit of a wobble about his third step in. But very, very fluid in those half passes. And, you know, very good movement for an event horse. We've seen a couple of horses recently, um, and I'm sure their riders would wish to have the expression that this horse has got. You see, it's a difficult tight turn, that turn left at H, but that horse navigated it really beautifully. You'd hope for some really nice pirouettes. Good. For a moment, I thought, you know, I thought he was going to stick, and he didn't. But he obviously felt the same on top and wanted to just activate the walk a little bit more, but did end up with a jog stride over the centre line. Uh, but was rewarded then with a better, better second pirouette. So it was a slight surprise. That was the first um, mistake we've seen where the horse jogged as a result. And again, jogging a little bit there. So it looks like, unfortunately, we've got another horse that might be a little bit hot in the walk. And perhaps that's why we saw him giving the horse the pat um, as he was cantering around the edge and working the horse in a slightly softer frame. But it just shows what a good job he did in that, in that trot work because there was never any sign of tension at all. But the walk is now going to have been quite expensive for him. And actually, you can see Nikolai didn't really make the transition because I think he no. thought if he touches that rein, yeah. it's not going to be worth it. So he... Do you get to a point where in a movement you think, actually, do you know what? I've lost this movement, so I'm just going to do what I need to do to get through it and move on to the next one. I think so, certainly. I mean, it's a little bit tricky in that in, in, in this test if you haven't picked up the reins um, from the extension into into the collection. And certainly that was probably the, the right decision because you've then got the canter and the canter comes up quick. You're, you've, you've got long reins for your extended canter. Um, and then you're out the next corner into a half pass. The, you know, the canter work isn't that long in this test. It all comes up very quickly. So if you've got long reins from your walk, suddenly you've still got them um, halfway through the canter work. This moment here is actually one of the first moments in the test. You, you, you have a moment to pause in the canter work and shorten up your reins and, and, and rebalance the horse. But now we're seeing the same expression, the same level of work that we saw in the trot. The beautiful supple half passes, the expression, the relaxation through the body. So, it'll, uh, you know, I haven't seen this horse before to know whether that's a common default to get hot in the walk. Beautiful flying changes, really loose and expressive. You know, so um, it's whether we can't see the marks coming up. It's whether his marks in the um, in the trot and the canter have been good enough to put him in that top ten board. But really, unfortunately for him, the whole of the walk 
was was affected. It wasn't just one movement there. Um, the horse pretty much jogged through every every bit of walk that there was. So he will struggle to to be truly competitive, I would imagine, despite those the beautiful work we saw in the trot and the canter. Well, Nikolai Oldinger and Timo uh, finished their test. And actually, if you go on to eventing scores, if you're interested, you can actually see the breakdown of marks from each member of our ground jury. You just click on to the total score and that will bring up the test sheet that is populated with those scores. And it's actually quite interesting reading. Mm. It's quite nice to be able to go in, particularly if you've seen a test that you really uh, liked or a movement that you really liked and you kind of want to get a feel for how the judges are marking. Go and do that because it is absolutely... uh, worthwhile in doing so so two more combinations to come forward and we head to france now and fabrice saint marie with cesar de a 10 year old by nervoso and uh, we'll look forward to seeing them in the arena in just a second a couple of scores to bring you 38.5 for charlotte agnew coolie carnival lady 38.8 for claire lewis kumro calva which sees them around the 45th uh, position 40 45th and 47th respectively as things stand but of course a little way to go and uh, we still have an action-packed afternoon of uh, dressage to bring you in the four-star long format here Fabrice Saint-Marie comes forward now and uh, Cesar de 10 year old as I say stepping up to the four-star level for the first time coming to Blenheim for the first time as well as uh, uh, in the long format, I should say, actually went very well here 12 months ago in the eight and nine year old class, finished in 11th place there. So certainly have been to the venue. They scored 32.6. They've been in this arena before, albeit in the arena next door, but the main ring here, the Palace Arena, and that certainly will stand them in good stead here. They've had some good results at uh, four star level and uh, actually were fifth in Avanche at the uh, Event back in July in the four-star short, but then won their final warm-up to come here by topping the podium at Haradapan in the three-star short format a few weeks ago. So Fabrice Sommery now coming forward for France with César de Wois. Very sharp salute. Very enthusiastic, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I was just about to say that this horse is another horse that's actually showing a bit more movement, and then he had quite a nasty trip off the centre line there, which was a pity. Why would a horse trip in the arena? Do do they stumble? Is it the same as a person? Is it uh, showing a sign Mm. of something within their way of going? I mean, it could be. It could be showing something. I have to say that um, all these, you know, all these grass arenas, they might look flat to us on the TV screen, but there are little undulations in them. You know, this, this this is natural partland going back hundreds of years. It wasn't necessarily designed to be perfect for a dressage arena. And it and it pretty much is, but you would be surprised walking across it that there are the the odd little bits and pieces in it um, that, that can lose their balance. Do you prefer riding in a grass arena or a all weather at top level? Well, I'm probably a bit of a traditionalist in that I feel a loyalty two events like Blenheim, Blenheim, Burley, Badminton, Bramham. Um, And I mean, really, as we said earlier, it's pretty much the British events only now that have the grass. And I think that's probably what um, is our identity. So I probably enjoy riding in these grass arenas, although I can certainly see that for the horses, the advantages can be huge riding in um, in an all weather. So, Probably if you're a horse, you'd say, or weather. I did think, interestingly, when I was lucky enough to be at Burley a couple of weeks ago, when I went into that arena there, my horse, it was so beautiful, it was like a mattress. And I really moved him off through the first couple of movements and thought, he's loving this arena. And that was probably a little bit having scrubbed around on, on hard summer ground for the last couple of months. But that Burley arena was so beautifully prepared and so lush, it gave him springs for sure. And he definitely... Um, definitely felt the advantages of that. Fabrice is doing a nice test. Fabrice is doing a nice test at the moment. Um, although another one to jog in an extended walk, which you'll be disappointed about. 
the horse wouldn't quite have the same sort of conformation and body of, of the last German combination we saw. Um, so maybe doesn't quite present the same picture, but actually he's doing a good job. The horse has a very busy tail, which is just obviously how he goes. It's not a reflection of any, any tension or any hollowness, and hopefully the judges will sort of be ignoring that as best they can, because it just goes a bit like a helicopter all the time. But maybe the horse could does get a little bit croup high. You almost saw that a little bit in the, in the extension there. So he just hasn't quite got the same ability to sit on the hind leg, but stay soft and round in front that we saw from the last horse. <laughs> Busy tail still. Ooh. And then, so, I mean, maybe you would wonder if that's the second time the horse has sort of tripped on that right, um, right four. Sometimes the judges might want to have a little little chat with you later on in the evening or it could just be unlucky that that's happened you're you're totally right about the sort of the lumps and bumps in the circus there's mm. a in the circus <laughs> some may call it a circus arena who knows yeah. uh, in this uh, arena because actually when you get a good shot of the long side you can see with the little white boards there's lots of humps and bumps yeah. as it goes along um sort of bobbles here and there and we're higher if you're down at ground you know the camera the camera that we're watching is higher if you're down at, 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 gr at ground level, you can see a little bit more. But I think maybe we should call it the circus arena. I think that would be much more fun <laughs> than calling it the dressage arena. So I feel like the combination have tried really hard here. Maybe a little bit hampered by the horse's um, natural feeling of wanting to be a bit croup high. He looks very pleased with yeah. that. A nice kiss down the horse's neck. And he should be because actually, aside from that one jog in the, in the, in the, in, in the extended walk, um, the horse has made no mistakes at all. And giving the horse plenty of fuss as uh, they finish their test for Brice Saint Marie and Cesar de Bois, who were just outside the top 10 in the eight and nine year old class here last year. And uh, actually, they scored uh, 32.6 on that occasion, added just cross country time penalties to uh, finish 11th. And uh, we have just one more combination to come forward before the next coffee break. And I would just say as well, uh, a score in for Nikolai Oldinger and uh, Timo. And uh, they are just outside the uh, top 12. They go into 13th at 32.3. So just making an impact on that leaderboard there as uh, actually... I would imagine he'll be quite disappointed with that because the horse had the potential to be really right up amongst the leaders at the top end. But because of that expensive walk tour that we saw, it, it was always going to be a struggle to break through into the 30s because he would have had quite a clutch full of, of threes and fours and fives for a good few movements. One mistake for one movement probably costs you two penalty marks on your final yeah. score there or thereabouts yeah. if it's a missed flying yeah. change for example but i mean you, you, you know you, that test could have easily been a, easily been a 26 or something but by the time he'd made that 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 many mistakes in the walk and of course then it affects our our, our collective mark at the end our overall um doubled up mark that we now get for the presentation of the horse it's go it's going to affect that and it's going to put you down a good at least a mark for that as well because the judges have to take into account that actually the, the horse was showing some tension as now coming forward, a second ride for Tom Grant. He brings forward Carla Wheatcroft's MGH Tokyo Phil, an 11-year-old that is actually a new ride for him. This year was formally campaigned by, first of all, Lucy McCarthy uh, and then uh, Porig McCarthy for Team Ireland. And a horse that has been to a four-star long level previously actually went to Buccalo last year, if memory serves me uh, correctly think that was with Porig on board and it's a new ride for Tom this season. Yes, uh, I, I was actually at, in Buccalow with, with Tokyo Phil. He looked really impressed with Porig. He was in the top 10 there at Buccalo. Um But great for Tom to have these two horses belonging to Carla. There's another, she owns another younger horse that was competing last weekend at Cornbury in the intermediate called Coburg. Um, so great for a younger up and coming rider like Tom to be given the opportunity of these two horses. Tokyo Phil is a really powerful horse that can present a really lovely frame. I know that sometimes he can um, s sort of lose a little bit of engagement and impulsion through the test. So Tom will be wanting the horse to be pulling him along, feeling really fresh. And certainly there we're seeing a, 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 nice, a nice medium. You can see that the horse has a lovely cadence and elevation and moment of suspension in, in his trot. But just coming up a little bit there at the beginning um, of the shoulder in, 
uh, you saw how some horses were positioned for the shoulder in before the corner, so they come out already in the shoulder in, whereas Tom didn't really, wasn't able really to get the positioning on there maybe as early as he would have liked. And the horse just coming a little bit high in his frame at times, which will then be affecting that feeling of connection. And some nice moments in that extension, but because Tom is probably lacking a little bit of that feeling of connection, of, of feeling the hind leg in the rein, it means that he's not really able to get as much as he'd like. And actually, that's really unfortunate because we can now see that, that from that camera shot that the F uh, marker has blown over and the horse was spooking. So maybe I was a little bit unfair to Tom before when I said that he didn't get his left shoulder in. It was probably because that flant pod had fallen over. And that is really unfortunate. So that tells us about the wind and is desperately unlucky for Tom. He'll be really disappointed about that. But still plenty of time to keep the, catch the marks up. We've seen a lot of horses struggle in this long um, walk tour that we've got here. So Tom's got to put that mistake behind him, that unlucky, misfortunate mistake. Oh, just a bit big in those pirouettes. Really, you'd like to think of sort of three or four active steps round. I think Pom Tom probably took six or seven there. A little bit better that way. Is more steps better than being stuck, though? Absolutely. You know, if, you st if you stick in a pirouette, I mean, unfortunately, that's going to be a four. Um, so Tom was very careful. That might be why he's riding them bigger. He might be aware um, that, the, that the horse has a tendency to do that, so he wants to play it safe. And that's the point of dressage as well, isn't it? That, you know, you want, if you want a top mark, you, you go in there and you be bold and you ride a tight pirouette. The, the danger of that is that you end up sticking. And we just see when he picks the reins back up. You know, he's one of the few riders that have had the confidence to really um, pick the reins back up for the medium walk. But the horse's slight inclination to come up above the bit. But nicely ridden there. There was a tiny jog step, which hopefully the judges were blinking at when they first when they saw that, blinking for that. And let's see if he can just now get a little bit more connection from kind of hind leg into the rein that was perhaps lacking a little bit in the in the trot. Because certainly this horse has the kind of creates the the pit, the pitch that you'd like and has the ability to get good marks. That was almost a little bit more of a diagonal line than a half pass. Good first change. Whether the judge at the side would have said it was a little bit short, she'd have had a better view than us. So it would be interesting, like you said er earlier, Nicole, to go back through the score sheet and see if the judge, um, side on judge, viewed that differently. This is better. So perhaps the horse is, finds it easier to, to bend left because that's more of a parallel half pass. Hopefully Tom's really gaining the confidence now in his canter work. But, you know, it's a new combination as well, and he won't have had the opportunity to take him into these arenas that, that often. I was so. going to say, you don't know when you take on a horse as you go up, uh, sort of further up the levels, actually how they react to certain environments and, exactly. and how you... Whereas if you've had a horse that you've produced all the way up the levels, you kind of know what they're going to do. Yeah, and that last turn there was really well done, and the horse looked much more engaged and connected. Well done. So Tom should be really pleased with that canter work there. I think the changes were a little bit short. Um, but he looks happy as well, giving him a reassuring pat. So well done, Tom. And certainly a really exciting combination to watch, not only this weekend, but, but going forward and growing. And you would imagine that they'd be eyeing up a, you know, a good run here. And whether they step up to five star in the spring or the autumn, I would imagine that would be part of their aim for next year, which is really exciting for Tom. Yeah, absolutely. Tom Grant with Carla Wheatcroft's MGH Tokyo Phil take us to the next break as just waiting for a score for César de Wain and Fabrice Saint-Marie. 34.4 into 26th on the leaderboard. The one to beat remains Marlin Hansen Hotop and Carlitos Quidditch K24.6. It's top 10 uh, has remained largely unchanged this morning. Just the addition of Rosie Fry and Selena Mills a little bit further on down the uh, top 10. But of course, there's still plenty more dressage action to bring you. 
A big, big thank you to Tom Rowland, who has been with us for this last session of Dressage. Uh, Tom, good luck this afternoon. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. And uh, don't forget that we will be back after this break at a few minutes to 12 or just before 12 o'clock because we would invite you to join us in a two-minute silence to remember Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II and this will be followed by a national anthem sung by Laura Wright. So do rejoin us uh, just before 12 o'clock and we will be observing that two-minute silence before the next combination to come forward which will be the Islands, Aoife Clark and Kalahari at 12.03.
Following the sad news of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, a two-minute silence will now be held. This will be followed by the national anthem sung by Laura Wright, and we invite you to join us to mark the passing of a remarkable queen. God save our gracious King, long live our noble King, God save the flying at half mast here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials throughout the weekend's competition.
So we now turn our attention set back to the four-star long dressage and uh, the top 10 has remained largely unchanged throughout this morning. Carlitos Kudic K still at the head of proceedings, 24.6 with Marlene Hansen hot top. Sarah Bullimore in second with her individual bronze medalist from the European Championships last year in Karoué and Dirk Schrader Casino 80 in third at the moment. The two additions to the top 10 this morning, Rosie Fry in eighth and Selena Milnes in equal ninth. So uh, we will now turn our attentions uh, to a lady who is actually a former winner of this four-star long format, won here back in 2013 with Fenya's Elegance, the horse that then went on to the European Championships at Blair Castle two years later, actually, with Oliver Townend on board. It is Aoife Clark, and Aoife comes forward with the Ace of Spades syndicates at Kalahari. And this is a really exciting nine-year-old by Kastorf. And uh, a horse that uh, is stepping up to the level for the first time. Aoife, very experienced at 20 runs at four star long level going back to 2008. And she is uh, building a really nice string of horses uh, as we head towards the uh, Europeans next year in Haradapa, but also the Olympic Games in Paris and very much at the forefront of her mind would be to make it back onto an Irish championship team. She has been to a number of championships previously, including Olympic Games. Finished actually just outside of the top 10 in London, I think it was, with the wonderful Master Crusoe. Been based up in Cheshire for uh, a good number of years. I had a family up there. And uh, another of those uh, amazing, amazing people that managed to juggle it all. She's presenting the early part of this test really well, actually. Kalahari wouldn't be uh, overly experienced. Wouldn't have seen it. Uh, an atmosphere and a championship feel such as this before. It's very electric down in that Palace Arena. Or 12th at Mill Street in the four star short is their final preparation for here. Scored 34.2 on that occasion, but have been down in the 20s at four star. And so far, really rideable for Aoife. Not showing any tension in the trot work. Lovely transition back directly on the marker at sea, just in front of President of our ground jury, Bobby Costello. Uh, Bobby Stevenson, Bobby Costello is out with the US team in uh, Protoni. But Aoife presenting this test very, very well, as you would expect. And a good pirouette. And interestingly here, the pirouettes can be taken at any point between G and M and then G and H. So it's up to the rider. But the, the transition to extended walk must be as they go back over the centre line. And if another actually not to be uh, riding in spurs. Good over track. Nice lengthening of the frame. This is a part of the test we've seen tension creep in to so many combinations, but none so here for uh, Aoife, doing a really, really good job. Just setting up for this counter transition and gets it perfectly at sea. This is a very, very smart test. If the counter work continues in this vein, then we could well see uh, this uh, as the latest to uh, make a challenge into the top 10. Aoife makes it look like there's so much time in the arena. And uh, actually giving the horse every opportunity to understand the question that is next going to be asked of them. First of the flying changes coming up. Gets it beautifully over the centre line. 
very, very polite. Nice change. Aoife actually scored at 26.7 here with Fenya's elegance when she won in 2013. A score like that today would see her well in contention. Just dropping a little bit behind the vertical and actually then the change didn't quite come through for her nearly as well as the first one. You could see Aoife ask for it and it didn't quite happen. And then a little bit late behind, but she comes to her final halt. Oh, just steps out wide behind but uh, a real shame because actually there was so much to like from this test and I think Aoife will be absolutely thrilled with this nine-year-old certainly the biggest test uh, of the horse's career so far to date as they come here to Blenheim for the long format four start so we'll bring you a score for uh, Aoife Clark and Kalahari as soon as it comes through as I'm delighted to be joined in the commentary box by the lady who currently leads the eight nine-year-old class here a lady who actually de delivered the best task by a US rider in the eight history of the eight and nine year old class yesterday, Gillian Beale King. Welcome. Hello, Nicole. Thank you. Great it is very here. good to have you with us. Uh, we're looking forward to hearing your thoughts on the four star long format dressage. But first of all, just a word on Darina Superstar yesterday. How pleased were you? Absolutely thrilled with him. He certainly put his best foot forward for me, and um, all of our hard work certainly paid off and he really was a superstar in there he absolutely well, what was what was the atmosphere like because actually we were talking a little bit earlier on the trade stands it sort of really gives a bit of hustle and bustle around absolutely. near the eight and nine sure year olds does. And, and they're so close to the stands in that arena um he certainly did back off a bit but with a horse like him that actually helps me and he lifts himself up a little bit and um it it was just um you know it was great to be in that arena and um on on such a special horse that i've developed a partnership with you know it's wonderful to um to, to be here and and in terms of your backstory it's a remarkable one you are american as people would tell you actually uh, grew up over in america uh you currently are based in ireland with richard ames uh, and campaigning a team of horses over there i think for the last 12 months or so now yes, um more. but you have a, a really rich history with the sport of eventing i do um so i i come from a family of professionals and my maternal grandparents rode on the British team in the 50s and 60s. Could we not steal you back to British? Uh, <laughs> I, I mean, have, we could. I do have a British passport. Uh, there you go. There's still time. There's still time. <laughs> We'll look, watch this space and uh, we'll get your thoughts on David Evans's cross country track uh, very shortly. But let's welcome Lauren Lily White forward with her own and Janet Pepin's Billy Beaufort, 10 year olds by My Oh My. And uh, the Billy, of course, uh, showing that this horse has come from the Billy stud of uh, Pippa Funnel and uh, William Funnel and Donald Barnwell. And just having a jolly good look round. There's a really stiff breeze. We just caught sight of it, actually, with the grass there. But there is a surprising amount of breeze out there. There is. And when the sun goes behind the clouds, it can get a bit brisk out there. Good for some horses, not so great for some others. <laughs> He's a striking horse, though, with his four white socks. Doing a nice job keeping our rhythm. Does the shoulder in help you as you go into the medium trot, or does that make it more difficult? You know, it can be a bit tricky. It's very important that you get the shoulder straight coming out of the shoulder in. And depending on the horse you're on, not always the easiest task. Um, and you don't really have that much room to show your medium. So you need to finish out your shoulder in, get yourself straight, go for it. And before you know it, you've hit the corner. Quite a steady test so far. He's actually settled, hasn't mm -hmm. he? He had a jolly good look round in the first halt, but actually he's taken to the task at hand. And I think she did a great job after that halt of saying, okay, buddy, come on. Great expression on him. Eight 
and you can see there possibly, you know, as she came into the walk, he lifted ever so slightly looking at the stands ahead of her. That's a bit of what happened with my horse yesterday. And um, there is, especially heading the other direction from what she is now, a lot to look at. I was going to say is when you sort of go into that walk transition, you are going directly into where most of the action is. And I guess as you take away the speed, there's more time for them to have a jolly good look round yes, everywhere. Yes, absolutely. She did well to keep that pirouette moving. She did. He's a big rangy horse. Just making that transition back on the extended walk and she's very subtly just regathering her reins. But actually he stayed very calm. Being very conscientious. You know, you're coming back from the extended walk and then you're into your canter here. And that is in so many tests and the horses start to anticipate it. So you have to be so careful there. It comes up thick and fast then, doesn't it? It really does. You know, you pick up your, your canter and two strides later you're into your extension. And, uh, and now your canter lateral work begins. You know, and again, coming down the center line, you're also heading into the stands and the archway. Change was early, but clean. Was. But a lovely smooth test so far. He started a little early there with his hind end, but she got him back. Whereas the first change was early, that was just a stride or so later than she would have liked it to have been, but it came through for her. And actually, th there's been a lot to like from this test. It, a couple of areas where a few marks would have leaked, but on the whole, very, very nice from uh, Billy Beaufort and uh, Lauren Lillywhite. And uh, they come to the end of their test in front of our ground jury, uh, Bobby Stevenson, mm -hmm. for the uh, United States of America is at C, president of our ground jury. At E is Sue Baxter for Great Britain and at M, Douglas Hibbert for Great Britain as well as... Uh, Lauren Lillywhite and uh, Billy Beaufort, the horse's first uh, long format four star. And they come here off the back of having jumped clear cross country in all three of their uh, previous four star short runs, including here 12 months ago in the eight and nine year old class. And uh, they finished inside the top 25 there, but also jumped clear at Burnham Market and Houghton Hall this spring. So have had some good experience under their belt to get to this point. And uh, for Lauren, Actually, she's been to this level six times previously since 2008, but it is a debut for Billy Beaufort. Her best test is a 36.2 in Petto van de Kutehova uh, back at Burnham Market in 2020. So we'll watch uh, this space for her score very shortly. A score is in for Ireland's Aoife Clark, actually. And uh, that final uh, flying change just proving uh, costly will cost her a place in the top 10. She goes 11th, 31.4. A real shame uh, that that last flying change didn't come off because that would have gone into the top uh, 10. But still, a lot to like for the future for that nine-year-old. So if you are just tuning in, there we go. Two uh, Irish combinations in 11th and 12th as things stand at the moment. But a really international feel to how the competition is shaping up here. And uh, we now welcome another Irishman forward. It is uh, Michael Ryan with Barnahown at Cornhill. This uh, a 10-year-old's. And uh, Michael, who has been hugely experienced uh, for Team Ireland over the years, along with uh, wife Patricia, have uh, represented Ireland at uh, many uh, major championships. 
And this is a horse that he thinks uh, a massive amount of uh, for the future. Michael, who went to the uh, uh, Olympics in London, was a part of the World Championship team in Arkin as well in 2006, had that brilliant partnership with Old Road, on whom he actually represented Ireland at three European championships back in 2003. Here at Blenheim, actually, in 2005 and then 2009 as well. They just had the most extraordinary partnership. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got a great team of horses as well. This horse, Barnahound Cornhill, who actually is an 11-year-old and one that has experience at the level, went to... Uh, Five-star level, actually, as well, was uh, just outside the top ten in Le Moulin last year. So uh, certainly plenty of mileage and have been sixth at Barocca de Olva and uh, ninth at Ballandenisk at the four-star long level. So plenty of uh, good experience, which will stand them in good stead this weekend. But he's one of those riders, Gillian, that I'm sure you see a good deal of on the national circuit back home. Absolutely. Mike's a great guy. I see him nearly every weekend. And, um, you know, his source is all always look very happy and well cared for and just a super guy and he wears of course the yellow ribbon in memory of uh, Tiggy Hancock the young Irish rider who very sadly passed away last year and it, it's wonderful to see so many top riders still remembering Tiggy's memory absolutely she's you know the Irish are so wonderful um, remembering those who are no longer with us and really rallying and unifying together. Just lost the hind end a little bit there, but stayed fluid. looking a little bit fragile in the walk Mike's doing a great job to contain it here I think he oh. he, he rather said don't worry about the walk pirouette there no. because I feel like that's not going to go to plan and fair play to him he got some steps there and, and obviously it's it's not easy oh oh so hard when you have a horse that doesn't naturally want to walk in the middle of the test and unfortunately in this test there is just so much walk work. <laughs> it's a common theme lots of pirouettes lots of walk work. yes yeah. exactly but Mike's doing a great job there he pulled the horse back together and it's just he did a very good job of actually not upsetting the situation even more because the horse looked for a second like he actually really could get quite yeah. offended and, and quite upset. Absolutely. And he was right there. The horse wanted to canter a couple steps in front of C and Mike was right to just go with it there rather than cause a bit of a fuss. Good news for Mike is the walk is finished. <laughs> And it can be hard for some horses when they've gotten upset in the walk to come back and have nice canter work. And, um, you know, Mike's doing a nice, really nice job with this horse. It can be a horse that looks like he was the biggest mover in the first phase. And so, actually, Mike is trying to make things as accurate as he possibly can do. Not give anything away. A little bit short behind, but gets that change. And up the uh, final centre line. 
Nice halt. Well done, Mike. Mike Ryan, Barnahown at Cornhill have uh, completed their test. And actually, Mike, hugely experienced 39 runs now at the four-star long level since 2008. And there would have been a good number prior to that as well. Very and impressive. Uh, he's and I think his experience there helped him get that horse through the through the test there at the end after it would gotten a bit upset at the walk. Yeah, which, absolutely. Know, not many riders would be able to bring it back down to earth. Sometimes you've got to know when, when you've asked for everything you're going to get and to move on. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> yes, absolutely. Well, a score in for Lauren Lillywhite with her second ride, Billy Beaufort, 34.6 for her, which will see her go a little bit uh, further down the top 30 into 28th as things stand at the moment uh, and a good way to go throughout the afternoon as well. So uh, Mary Edmondson, Lionel the second, will be next to come forward. Gillian Beale King sat alongside me, Gillian, who... Uh, is still out in front in the uh, eight and nine-year-old class, 27.6 with Darina Superstar and Ben King and guests. So I think he's with Harry Much at the moment, guiding you through all of the uh, dressage action for that section. And of course, we will have all of the uh, show jumping tomorrow morning for the eight and nine-year-old class and a cross country for the four-star long start at 11 o'clock. And then, of course, Sunday, the eight and nine-year-olds do their cross country in the morning and the uh, long format show jump throughout the day as well. Uh, Gillian, what do you make? Is this your first visit to Blenheim? It is. What do you make of it? It's lovely. I don't think there's anything like it, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, as I, I think I said to Horse and Hound yesterday, as an American, you sort of just dream of Blenheim. You see photos of it, but nothing can really do it justice until you see it with your own eyes and um, just an incredible venue. It's very cool. From the dressage to the cross country and um, just everything about it is top class. And what do you make of, well, we'll come to what you make of David Evans's cross country track in a moment. Let's just concentrate on Mary Edmondson's uh, test. She comes forward with uh, Lionel. Mary, who actually uh, was one of the original Wesco Equestrian Foundation riders, uh, has been here to Blenheim three times previously. First visit for the horse uh, who has actually had... Uh, one start at the four-star level previously. They went to Bramham a little bit earlier on this year, but unfortunately didn't go on to complete. And so Mary looking for a first four-star long completion with the horse. They've had some good solid results at uh, three-star level and also at the four-star short level of competition. Rides this horse for Joy Saw. And there's a lot of horse underneath her here, and she's doing a great job of getting him into the corners and riding that very accurately. It's not always easy with the bigger horses. I was going to say, the size of a 20 by 60 arena, I imagine, changes considerably depending on how big a horse you're sat on. <laughs> Isn't that the truth, Nicole? That really is the case. Another one with just a great expression. You can see him going across the diagonal there, ears pricked, as happy as could be. Looking very nice. Very straight on the center line there. And this is hard, too. You have your walk and your pirouettes directly in front of the judges. So there really is no room for error. Nowhere to hide. No. It's also just far enough out into the arena that they get a really good view of you. Yes. You know, and they're close enough they can see, uh, you know, every tiny little thing, if the horse is fussing with its mouth in the slightest bit, they can see that just being a few meters away. Ooh, just go He's looking really rideable. We've seen the tension creeping in to a couple of horses when they come into this walk work, but actually so far so good for him. And he's got a nice walk. Big rangy horse. Mm. 
unfortunately. Just broke into trot, but then actually she elected to bring him back to walk before asking for the walk to counter transition. Was that a little bit about kind of saying to him, no, listen to me, and almost a little bit of training in the arena? I'd say so. I mean, at that point, you've lost the movement, so you're not getting a great score for that. So she was probably right to do that, but um, you can see he's just getting a bit upset now. Um, but so she got her lead. Hopefully she can continue on and. Very good job to get that counter lead back because actually the half pass rather went wrong. And unfortunately the change it didn't happen behind until two two strides or so after in front. I'm surprised actually because he had looked so rideable throughout the first half of the test in the trot and the walk work. And yeah, you know, sometimes with a horse that is so relaxed at the walk you almost, you know, maybe she over was overthinking the canter transition, and that just got him a bit, um, a bit excited. You never know, but she gets that change better than the first one. Just unfortunately broke uh, before it. Did a very good job to be able to to regroup and get things back again, but uh, unfortunately the canter is going to prove very expensive for Mary Edmondson and Lionel. The second, and uh, he just comes into the final halt and uh, does a beautiful final halt. Yes. So uh, very frustrating as to a little bit what could have been for Mary Edmondson and Lionel. The second, it will bring you a score for them as soon as it does uh, come through. At the moment, uh, we've had uh, no changes to the top 10 in this four-star long format after this last break, just Eva Clark Kalahari going into 11.31.4. It is still Marlin Hansen Hotop and Carlitos Quidditch K as the ones to beat 24.6 and a combination that have been top 20 at Bukolo previously have had some good four star long form. So all to play for for them this weekend. Sarah Bullimore, Caraway in second, Dirk Schrader Casino 80 rounding out the podium. So Gillian Bill King sat alongside me. Uh, Gillian, thoughts on David Evans' cross country track? It's definitely going to take some galloping and jumping. Um, I've walked, I've walked the long, been around the long, and and therefore seen some of the short as well. Definitely some great questions. Um, a lot of galloping, a lot of room between fences. I think it's going to be very important to be up on your time in the beginning of the course so that you can take your time when the real technical questions start to take place. Um, and it certainly is. You know, there's a lot of galloping like I said and then you have to sit up and you jump a technical combination so lots of uh, adjustability and you've got two in the eight and nine year old class I and do. one in the four star long this afternoon correct tell us a little bit about the horse that you'll be bringing forward in the four star long later his name is rebellion he's an 11 year old Polish bred horse um, I believe he did Leon as a young horse and um, this would be both of our first four star longs so, um, you know, here for, here for the uh, education and the experience. And uh, he's a very straight horse cross country. So hopefully we can get a nice shot and um, get a, have a nice round cross country. And, um, you know, he'll give me the experience to then take the nine-year-olds around there first four star longs here shortly. Well, watch this space. Uh, you will be last down the centre line at 4.36 at your time this afternoon. Anyone looking to tune in. Next uh, to come forwards, it is Sasha Hargreaves. Sasha rides her own. And uh, Bill and Alison Hargreaves, uh, Woodlands Be Daring. Actually by uh, Billy Be Cool. This uh, a 12-year-old. And uh, Sasha, who has a really brilliant partnership with this horse, Actually comes here for her and the horses first uh, four-star long format. They were top 10 at Burnham Market uh, this spring. Top 10 at Little Downham on their debut uh, last year as well. And top 20 at Houghton Hall. So I've had some really good solid form building up to uh, the Blenheim four-star long debut. And it's always a big moment, isn't it? You're probably feeling it, that, that sort of four-star long, the debut you've worked for a good number of years to get to this point, that actually it's a real milestone. It is, absolutely. And, um, you know, to be somewhere like Blenheim, of course, adds a bit of excitement. 
It absolutely does. And Sasha, I'm sure, will have been to Blenheim as a spectator in the past. Had, uh, of course, that wonderful partnership with Playtime, who she rode at the uh, Junior European Championships. Went to two Junior Europeans. Took Team Silver individual fifth in Fontainebleau in 2018. And this is the horse that's really taken her career to the next level. The only horse she competes uh, at the top level now internationally. Very athletic looking horse. You can tell he's an athlete. with the a bit of sheep skin on the horse's breastplate so if, if he has sensitive skin possibly i would say just to keep him from getting a rub they're better safe than sorry and you know some are just more sensitive than others we see so many different types of breastplates now don't we we um, do absolutely but almost every horse in the first phase would be wearing one i'd say um a, a fair few would be um i personally out of my three don't um you know dressage is a, a bit of a game and and um you know if you don't absolutely have to have one on it's not traditional dressage mm -hmm. attire um you know i uh, two of the horses go in a breastplate every day at home but um, not in the test but not in the test and um you know i just think unless you really really need it i prefer to leave it off less is more <laughs> <laughs> oh just That's a little a bit of tension got stuck in the second of those pirouettes slightly he's got a great walk though really looking at that over tracking and how fluid his step is and again i was thinking ahead to the transition slightly and actually she was clever there she got the corner just to get to see a little bit quicker. Well ridden. And this is hard, you know, you have to do your your half pass and then you're heading directly to the judge on the line so they really can see if you've overshot, undershot. Then you have to continue straight, then make your half circle. She got that done. Very lovely and straight there. So Sasha Hargreaves... Uh, Gets a lovely final halt with Woodlands Be Daring and she looks very pleased with that. Her first test at the four-star long level of competition as uh, a score in for Michael Ryan with Carolyn Tom Henry's Barnahown Cornhill 42.7, which sees them a little bit uh, down the leaderboard, but still a good long way to go as the weekend progresses. Uh, Mary Edmondson Lionel 39.0. She'll be really ruining the uh, marks in the canter work, which unfortunately stopped her getting a much, much more competitive score that she was on track for. So uh, next uh, to come forward, four combinations uh, before the uh, lunch break. One for, uh, two for Great Britain, one for Ireland and one for the United States 
of America here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. Wherever in the world you are tuned in from, then a very warm welcome to you. We are delighted to have you with us. We've got a full day of coverage for you all the way through to the final horse going down the centre line at around 25 to 5 this afternoon. Some big names that still to come forwards as well. The likes of the 2019 Land Rover Burley winners, Pippa Funnel, MGH Grafton Street. You've got uh, the second of Georgie Goss's rides, Fantaboy. He'll be first to go in a very competitive final section. Uh, Alex Bragg, Quinn Diva. Gemma Stevens was uh, top 10 with Jalapeno here 12 months ago and actually uh, would have been a little bit disappointed with her dressage on that occasion. So we'll be uh, sure to be very competitive this afternoon. This young man, though, has had uh, a very, very good couple of weeks at the office because he had uh, a debut at Burley and actually finished at second on Capel's Hollow Drift there. It is Tom Jackson who comes forward here with Fondant, owned by Anne and uh, Ian Slater. And uh, Tom, who has been here a couple of times before, has actually been here with the horse as well. Jumped clear cross-country here previously. Actually went to uh, Bramham this year as well. Things didn't quite go to pl plan at Bramham, but uh, so they've come back here again, having had... Uh, such a good run 12 months ago. How much does confidence play a part? I think confidence is key. It sounds cliche, but it is so crucial to go in there and before you've even gone down the center line and know that you belong there, know that you've put the hard work in. And, you know, I think at this point we all have to remember that we've we have put the work in and, and it's showtime. There's no training left to be done. It's We're going in there, putting our best foot forward and trying to have fun, which is why we all do this, hopefully. <laughs> I think it's always worth remembering, isn't it? There'll be a few people reminding themselves of that on Saturday morning, tomorrow yes. morning. And we do it for fun, we do it for fun. Quite a flashy horse. It's been sub 30 at four star level at Chatsworth a little bit earlier on this year. But uh, would generally speaking be around the 33 kind of marker. And that's that's a hard turn because you really want to go deep into the turn and really set up for that first half pass because if anything you want to be getting that first half pass done ever so slightly early so that you've got your time to get straight first stride and then head back into your second half pass. Lots of setting up to do. And the test asks for just a few steps of collected walk before the half pirouette. So you're sort of in medium walk right there, and then you collect as you pass by the center line. Do you go back into medium walk you and then back into collection? Correct. And now here at G, right into an extended walk. And you can see suddenly he went, okay, off we go. And, you know, again, quite a bit of extended walk. You're on the half circle, which can help you if you're on a horse that can be a bit excited because you can use the bend to sort of mask some excitement, keep their attention. And then here at S, you can see him collecting, and you're back into uh, medium walk here. And he's just sitting steady. And I believe there's a mark out of 10 for the transitions at either end of the extended canter there. Um, and that is hard because you develop your canter. By the time you've gotten into your rhythm, you literally are just about past the letter. And you need to be well into that extended canter by the time you hit the middle of the arena 
Yeah, so it's one one mark for the extended canter itself and the collected canter when you get to F and then the transitions at M and F also gets a separate mark. So both of those so count. Very that mark. important that you have a crisp departure into the canter and um, immediately the moment your horse's shoulders really hit the track and you get straight, you're going into that extension. The second flying change, that's nice. Tom, actually, this test could well be in with a chance of challenging our top 10. We've not really seen anyone shake up the top of that top 10 so far today. But uh, yeah. just stepped a little bit wide behind Fondant, and uh, he looks pretty pleased uh, with that. He's building a really nice team of horses. Came through the school of uh, Pippa Funnel, who uh, I think got more pleasure out of his brilliant burly results as she did of her own superb results. Uh, fantastic to see. And uh, we'll bring you a score for Tom Jackson as soon as it does come through because certainly could be uh, very, very competitive here. A score for uh, Sasha Hargreaves of... Uh, 35.8, and that sees her go into 36th on the leaderboard. Still the one to beat, 24.6. Marlin, Hansen, Hottop, and Carlitos Quidditch K is the uh, magnificent backdrop of Blenheim Palace here. And a busy trade stand village as well. Uh, the horse trials brought to you by uh, the Jockey Club for the second time. And uh, fantastic to see some of the new partners that they have brought on to the horse trials this year. We've mentioned many of them throughout the weekend, but we'll uh, keep mentioning them and do uh, show them your support as well. We're very grateful to them, but fantastic to see some new names on there as well. The likes of uh, Quintessentially, Parfum, Damali, Bentley, uh, of course, Paul Roger, who've been longtime supporters, Boodles as well, who are uh, also fence sponsors out on the cross-country Brookfield Equestrian. Uh, NAF are in there as well, and uh, NF Mutual and uh, very grateful to them all for their support. Now we turn our attentions to a lady who is actually quite often on the other side of the fence in the judges cart because it is a Valerie Viscarondo pride with uh, her own Fabian. This is a 14 year old by French Kiss and actually Valerie who is uh, an upper level judge as well as uh, competing at the four-star level herself. So she absolutely should know exactly what the judges are uh, looking for. This is a horse that uh, has certainly scored well in the first phase previously. Actually went to Akala to the four-star long format um, a couple of years ago, but completed Maryland five-star last year. Finished inside the top 25 there and uh, have been... Uh, Top 25 at Jersey, fresh four-star long format as well. So very experienced combination. And Valerie, who's been to many of the major venues all over the world, coming here to Blenheim, not as a judge, but as a rider, which is fantastic to see. Just a little bit of movement in that first halt, which was a shame. Very elegant horse. She's a very elegant jockey as well. Mm. Lots of energy. So two medium trots. This is the extended trot. And actually, Sue Baxter at E will get a really good view of the extension from the side. Douglas Hibbert at M will see the straightness from behind. Oh, 
And same here. You know, he'll be seeing the crossover. She'll be seeing it from the side. It's a funny test to ride because you get your trot work out of the way and you do your fair bit of walk work and then suddenly you canter and you're saluting. Um, so it seems to ride, I think, very quickly, um, having all the canter work at the end and then heading right down the center line into your, into your final halt. Just a tiny bit of tension creeping in. And that is hard because as we read earlier, you know, the test does ask you for that bit of a medium walk there and then a collected walk just before you ask for the pirouette. So, um, you know, you're doing your first pirouette and then you're saying, okay, go, whoa, pirouette, go again. So the horses can get a bit confused. This combination would be very consistently around the 31 marker. They've been 31 point something on each of their last four international appearances. Ooh. Not the first to just anticipate the transition there. And again, you have that mode path up the center line. So it's absolutely crucial that you show those judges that you complete your half pass right there on the center line, continue on straight before your half circle. It's very useful, but no margin for error. It is useful, absolutely. But you uh, have to be on your game. <laughs> and she's doing a nice job, you know, if... I'd say, you know, his canter work maybe doesn't come as easy to him as, as the trot work, and she's doing a nice job of getting it all done. Nice change there. So Valerie Viz uh, Corondo Pride comes up at the uh, final center line. And uh, the lovely final halt. She salutes uh, our mm -hmm. judges at the end of her test as we're just waiting for that score for uh, Tom Jackson and Fonda. And actually just sneak inside the top 10. 30.9 is his score. And so uh, that's good enough to see Tom inside the top 10, 30.9. There he is. Good for him. Just uh, sneaking ahead of Georgie Goss, who drops down to equal 10th. Marlin hansen hot up, but her lead has been as yet unchallenged this morning. In fact, the uh, top seven remain unchanged from yesterday's first day of dressage. Still some big names uh, to bring you, though. And uh, the final session of dressage in particular looks like it could really shake up the top of that leaderboard. Uh, we have just two more combinations uh, to go before the uh, lunch break. Uh, one for Ireland, one for uh, Great Britain. Uh, so that was the uh, new water complex that David Evans has set out on this uh, cross-country track. He's been uh, designing here for a few years now, took over the uh, four-star track first of all. He'd been building here for many years, built for uh, Mike Hetherington-Smith, then Eric Winter. But David took over as uh, course designer, firstly of the four-star short, I think in around 2016. And then a year later, took on the four-star long uh, design to his record as well. Uh, but he has built at some of the biggest and the best venues all over the world. Next to come forward, it is uh, for Ireland and it is Declan Cullen. Declan actually comes forward with C. Vargan Ash. And uh, this is a horse that actually went to a Buccalo back in 2018 now, a few years ago. And uh, went very well for a top 25 finish there as part of the Irish Nations Cup team. And actually has had uh, a really quiet couple of years that uh, didn't compete internationally in 2019 or 2021. And didn't do a huge amount in 2020. So it's brilliant to see them back. They actually had a top 10 finish 
uh, Blair Castle in 2022, so just a few weeks ago, uh, to set them up for their run here. Such a striking horse and one that I remember very well from his debut at the level in Buccalo. Only a young horse still, 13 years of age, so uh, actually stepped up to the four-star long level when relatively young and inexperienced. And actually, I think I'm right in saying that this is uh, one of the only horses Declan competes at the top level. I believe that's correct. Um, and he's hard to miss. You can always see this horse. Um, <laughs> he's he's lovely and spotted. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to get away with doing anything you shouldn't be doing. <laughs> no, that's They'd see you a mile that's off. That's for sure. <laughs> sure how much angle there was on the shoulder rim but Douglas Hibbert at M would have had a very good view of that it looked better yeah on that rain seems like a sweet horse wants to go in and do a nice job for his rider very rideable in there as well they come to the extended great expression and again and you're heading right in to the stands there and um, so much to look at oftentimes there's a gallery of people standing there do they back off slightly they do. I did not get personally nearly as much medium or extension yesterday as I thought I would on Darina Superstar um, because he just was a bit proppy in the sense he thought, oh, what am I trotting into? Um, and like I said, you know, that, that can help some horses. It can hinder some horses. They're all different. And he's setting up for his walk pirouettes here. And again, the test asks for those couple steps of collected before into the half pirouette, then you're back into your medium and a couple steps of collected walk before your right-handed pirouette. Okay. Quite see the clear transition no, but here it goes. He's, you can see now he's starting to work a bit more for it. Just asking the horse to drop down and out in front of him just ever so slightly as he stretches into that extended walk here. And the judges in the extended walk really want to see uh, the regularity of the steps, lengthening of the steps as well, the outline, and they want to see them accept the contact too. Absolutely. Contact is so important. You, the judges are looking for that in every gate. And there he goes off into his extended canter and brings him back. A little shuffle, but saved it. Momentary loss of uh, impulsion. Mm -hmm. What a cute horse, though. He's rather lovely. <laughs> He really wants to do the job. He's really trying to get the job done. Absolutely. You can just tell he's he's very workmanlike. You yeah. know, he's going in there, staying focused. And there's so much to be said for that. You know, we've seen some the lovely change. We've seen lovely. some plenty of horses with really big movement, um, very flashy, but ultimately just not able to keep a lid on their tensions. And it proves very, very costly to those final scores as they come through. Nicely ridden there, very straight up the center line. And you also have to be careful that you're not then losing the shoulders back off. You know, once you make it to the center line, you need to stay on that till you hit the next letter. Well ridden there. Just a very consistent test, start to finish, which is nice. And a 
pretty good square oh. straight halt you must be happy to finish <laughs> so Sivag and Ash and uh, Declan Cullen finished their test here uh, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials uh, just one combination to go before the lunch break uh, Gillian Beale King our current leader in the eight and nine year old four star shorts uh, currently sat alongside me in the commentary box and that uh, eight and nine year old class Ben King and guests will be guiding you through it uh, for the rest of the day. And of course, we will have all of the jumping phases for you throughout the weekend, live and available to watch on Plenum Palace International Horse Trials website. So uh, good to see some good crowds building here today. Actually, it was pretty quiet yesterday. It always is here on the Thursday, Friday, and then it really builds in momentum to the weekend. Saturday last year was absolutely jam-packed. I haven't seen crowds like it at Blenheim for a good number of years. Um, Somebody was telling me they were queuing for four hours last year to get in. So hopefully it won't be as bad for people tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. It was an interesting one. This is one of the iconic Blenheim Lake crossings. Um, mm. Last year it felt a little bit like everybody was kind of out of practice with going sure. to big <laughs> events. We've not been to big events for, for a kind of a Quite year, 18 months. And... Um, I think that, of course, led to huge, huge numbers of people mm. coming in. And um, as we all know, when, when you have large events, it doesn't take a lot to, to make the delays happen. I know the Jockey Club have been working really, really hard on uh, to try and make some of the best routes available this year. And uh, I'm sure we'll see that tomorrow. But if you are coming tomorrow, I would, as always, recommend on Cross Country Day of a big one arriving in plenty of time soaking up the atmosphere watching that eight and nine year old show jumping as well as uh, this young lady has had a really busy weekend at the office it is uh, amy penny with her third ride in this uh, four star long format and she comes forward this time with psh gazelle uh, it's a horse that is stepping up to the four star long level for the very first time was top 20 actually at blair castle in the four star short as part of their preparation for a run here and went clear cross country at the Hanbury Sport Horses Burgeon International a little bit earlier on this summer as well. And Amy actually really building her uh, experience at this level. She's uh, actually got three runs previously and she's going to treble that this weekend with her three in this four star long format. There's nothing like being able to go out and get experience that much experience in one weekend on numerous horses i imagine it's a very very busy weekend for you guys because actually three you've got three horses across the classes amy the same and actually you've got three lots of arena familiarization different courses to walk etc etc absolutely um very lucky to have a super team here with me maxine and ellie could not do it without them and um it really does take a village. There's never enough hands, and there's always some somewhere to be, or a horse needs to be there, or you need to be doing this, or grabbing something off the lorry. So it, it keeps you on your toes. Some lovely crossover there. She is in her medium walk and now just starting to collect. You can see the horse is nice and foamy at his mouth, accepting the contact, accepting the bit. And off she's gone into her extended walk. Score in for Declan Cullen. Uh, not quite yet in with Zivag and Ash. She's got uh, another ride in the uh, four-star short eight and nine-year-old class here. Nice walk. And the moment you start to sit up there and bring their stride back into the medium walk at S, they know that that canter departure 
is just around the corner. She did a great job. That was very smoothly ridden down the long side. And you can see there a little bit of change in terrain, all things to be aware of. Do you ever go and walk in the arena before you go in? What? Are you allowed to do that? I don't know. Or walk, or walk <laughs> like, have but a good look. It, yeah, absolutely. You and, um, you know, something I'm always looking for as well is there a dip over the center line at X. Um, you know, okay. if you have to cross over the center line, do you need to be just half a meter shy of the center line for some, you know, if there's a, oops. Uh, good. So she, she got it in the end and, and now can continue on in her canter. Um, but, you know, always looking for, for the dips in the ground and unevenness. And you can just see there with the white fencing where, where the ground changes a bit. You see her just setting him up a bit there. And then again, just a little bit late behind, just resisting the aids in yeah. the change. Amy's done a really good job, actually. She's had three three horses in this. Um, they all, in my mind, obviously, without having them lined up in front of me, all look quite similar, but they've been very different types. And one in particular she rode yesterday was very, very hot, and she did an incredible job of keeping a lid on it, as uh, this horse actually has... Uh, Taken us up to that lunch break. Amy Penny, the third of her rides. She scored 36.3 with PSH Encore, who was first down the centre line yesterday morning. 44.4 uh, with PSH Catalyst, who just got a little bit tense in the arena. As uh, PSH Gazelle, we wait for that score to come forwards. So uh, a brilliant uh, morning of dressage here. 33.1 into the top 20 for Declan Cullen and C. Vargan Ash. As, uh, this is how the top 10 is rising, uh, looking at the moment. Rosie Fry, uh, Tom Jackson, the uh, two additions to the top 10 this morning. As uh, Carlitos Quidditch K still leads. Uh, Selena Milnes, Gelmer, they were first down the centre line a little bit earlier on this morning. And then this session, actually, we've just seen a couple of additions. Valerie Rizcorondo, Pride and Declan Cullen sneaking into the top 20. Uh, Gillian Beale king has been sat alongside me. Gillian, thank you very much. Uh, good luck this afternoon and good luck for the rest of the weekend. Thank you very much. I very uh, appreciate that. And we will look forward to uh, watching you in the jumping, of course, tomorrow. The four-star, eight- and nine-year-old class taking place at the moment. Gillian currently leads with Darina Superstar. 27.6 is the score to beat but uh, we now have the lunch break and we will be back with the next session of dressage at quarter past two and it's a session that includes the 2019 at burley winners mgh grafton street pippa funnel the top of the leaderboard will absolutely be in danger from that combination pippa as echo ratings as uh, one of those ones to watch in the dressage phase and in fact the horse has been here twice before not been out of the top six has been clear inside the time cross country on both of those occasions so we'll have a short break and we'll be back at 2.15 for more.
welcome back to Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials and the second day of two days of dressage for this four-star long format. As uh, we come back uh, with a former winner, actually uh, Bella Innes Carr, who topped the podium here back in 2017 with Carolyn, comes forward this time with Cool Rock Cooley. And uh, Bella, who uh, was originally based up near her uh, parents' base at Floors Castle, now, then spent some time at William Fox Pitts base and now set up not a million miles down the road from William and Alice Fox Pitts and has a really nice team of horses there. And this uh, a horse that she thinks a massive amount of for the future, owned by Rosie Grimston, just a nine-year-old by Hold Up Premier. And a horse that actually, I think, stepping up to the level for the uh, first time. Bella's 10th run at four star long level since the uh, since 2008 but uh, Bella who came through the junior young rider program for team GB a whole host of medals along the way as well and this horse looking very bright just lost a tiny momentary bit of impulsion just towards the end of that medium trot and here comes the extended trot chance to really open up to our ground jury President of the ground jury is uh, Bobby Stevenson. He is at C. Douglas Hibbert is at M. And Sue Baxter at E. Bella actually scored at 24.4 when winning here with Carolyn. Back in 20, 2018, she won, beg your pardon. Nicely positioned into the half pass. Nice transition to walk at sea. And uh, sets up for the first of these walk pirouettes. And these walk pirouettes can be done at any point between the two markers. So crossing over the center line between G and M and then on the way back between G and H. Or staying nice and relaxed. And good pirouette from Cool Rock Cooley. Bella, such an elegant rider. Really benefited from her time being based uh, with uh, William. Uh, so sitting down alongside me in the commentary box, delighted to welcome back Tina Cook. Hi, sorry, I'm just a little bit late on my arrival. I've <laughs> <laughs> been doing other things around the park, looking at some cross-country fences. So it's nice to see a horse walking and looking very relaxed, relaxed and, yeah. and very rideable. And actually one of the few that we've seen with absolutely zero tension in that walk transition from the extended walk back. Bella, very tall, elegant rider. And this horse looks really fit and ready to do the business. She obviously feels that he goes better in his double. He seems Ooh. very happy. We just popped in a flying change there. A nice flying change, but unfortunately not required. Not there. She quickly actually got that back because this flying change comes up very quick. And again, <laughs> lovely. He looks like a, a real pro at this. He's allowing her to ride him. He actually looks quite elegant in his double bridle. It's something that not everybody chooses to do, but when a test is performed this well and the horse looks very happy and harmonious in the double bridle, I think it can look very elegant. It's only a nine-year-old, but is certainly not showing any inexperience. Nice change. Nice change. A little bit early, not quite on the aids, but um, very nicely done. And a horse with a super attitude. And that just makes all the difference. And lovely straight on the centre line. And she looks very happy with him, as I would be because we've seen over the last couple of days some horses getting very wound up and this horse looks like it's loving every minute of it. Quite at home 
in the Palace Arena. And uh, just off to the left of the shot is the uh, most magnificent Blenheim Palace, the backdrop for uh, all three phases of competition here at these horse trials, brought to you in 2022 by the uh, Jockey Club. Once again, they uh, took on the running of the event uh, last year and absolutely delighted to uh, welcome them back again this year, bringing so much uh, new life to the sport. Always uh, interesting to get a different perspective. And we, of course, uh, they're very used to running uh, top class uh, events, big sporting events, the likes of the Cheltenham Festival, Epsom and Aintree as well. And so uh, Planet Palace International Horse Trials, whilst a first foray into eventing for them last year, certainly far from the biggest event uh, that they would have taken on. So we'll bring you a score for Bella when it comes through. As uh, next to come forward, it is Thomas Martin. Thomas rides uh, Ecuador the third. This is a horse he owns himself, 13 years of age, by uh, Zanzibar. And Thomas actually... I think coming forward in his first run at the four-star long level, horses' first run at the level as well. They've had a couple of a good clear rounds cross-country at Bicton last year in a tough four-star short, which will have set them up well for here, and also Bramham. So two very good tough cross-country rounds at four-star short level to uh, see them come forward to their first four-star long. And that's good when you're coming to this level for the first time to actually find tracks that actually test you a bit. You know, you don't need to be coming here at Blenheim. It all seems such a glamorous idea to ride at Blenheim, but not so great if you find the easiest routes to get there, because then you can get exposed when you're suddenly put onto the big stage. So to go to venues like Bicton and Bramham couldn't be better to set you up. And this is a lovely horse. Just love the way he's come in. He's got a really comfortable canter. You look at him, you think, oh, I'd like to sit on that. <laughs> and has just a really nice look about him that you feel like you want to be cantering down that centre line. Just lost the straightness as he, as he moved off <coughs> and turned quite early. So just got to look for accuracy. And as the day goes on you can see the worn parts around the arena so that can help you keep on the right line but he's got a nice amount of sort of knee action that you can get into a rhythm he's got a lovely rhythmical trot and so if you sort of think in your in your head of keeping keeping that flow keeping that rhythm that's a very nice shoulder in that's good doesn't need any more angle than that. That's fine. And then he looks like he should work towards a nice medium trot. Could have just asked for a little bit more. Just so that the judges can see you as a rider saying, hey, I'm aware that's a medium. I'm going to go for it. Thomas sitting up, lovely and straight. Looking, looking very smart himself. How you, how you present a test makes such an overall difference, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. Even though if, you know, you lack a little bit of experience yourself, but you can see that he's been really working on this test, working on, on, on his position so that he is doing everything he can to do the best he can. He might not be as experienced as some of the people that are competing here, but he's giving it a jolly good go. And this horse looks very, very happy. And, and he is doing everything correctly at the moment. And he looks like he should have a nice walk. And as we've gone on and said about this test, how much walk there is, this horse looks like he's got a real sensible head on him, that he will just get on with the, dog, on with the job. Ooh, no, he just took his leg off and then the horse just swung his quarters round, which was a shame. It started off well and then the horse turned and took two bigger steps behind and just swung his quarters. There you go. That was better. Yeah, good. You know, Thomas wasn't going to make the same mistake twice. And the second pair out was, was lovely, really good. And then you've got a horse that allows you to ride the walk. This is a good, good time to, to catch up a few marks. Just have to keep their attention. So you're allowing a little bit of length of neck, a little bit of the length of the rein. 
<clears throat> and but not the horse looking up and going, oh, look at those people having their lunch over there, having a lovely time. Keeping the horse's attention and the connection down the rein. Just cut the corner a little bit there to make sure that he got a good strike off. And that extended canter comes in quite quickly. And for some horses that could get a little bit lit up, it's quite exciting for them. But this horse is very much taking it in his stride. There's a nice breeze out there at the moment, so we don't have any problems with flies or it being too hot. The temperature actually for you competing is absolutely perfect. It's, it's stiff enough breeze. It keeps picking up in, in places and then it will settle again and then all of a sudden it will come through again. But This horse has three lovely paces. In fact, he, you know, he really could with more experience under their belt when they finish this, this test could actually do a really, really smart test. That was a clean change. It looked like it was going to be late, but then ended up being a clean change. It could have more expression to it. It was more, I've just changed legs. But when they get the canter a bit more connected, there would be, you know, a lot more. There are, uh, there are a lot more marks to be gained there now you know they've gone into this arena performed a super test they can work on and they could do even better next time well i think he'll be pretty pleased with that a uh, four star long debut age 25 for thomas martin and uh, he will uh, take ecuador this 13 year old that he owns himself uh, forward to tomorrow's cross country over david evans track. Tina, you've been out there walking the course what did you make of it yeah, I thought it was great. Um, I like the, the new water complex um, right at the top. And, you know, having several waters fences on a course adds, adds a bit of spice to it. And you, can, uh, you can't predict how water fences are going to ride and how they're going to jump. And I think from a spectator's point of view, there's always a certain a attraction there. And to me, the fences that I did walk, I haven't walked the whole course, but some of the fence I walked, there was a clear difference between the short format and the long format, obviously with distance, but some of the questions asked, there are similar questions asked, um, but for the long format, uh, slightly more difficult. And some narrow fences where the horses and riders have to be very committed on, on what they're doing. So, no, I really, I really like what, what I've seen and the ground is actually perfect. I know that this area hasn't had as much rain as some other parts of the country, but actually it's arrived just in time and they've done a, a great, great job. And um, so the ground is going to be going to be quick. Um, so the times will be fast. But like with Blenheim, you know, you've got to be foot to the pedal from, from where to go here. And there's always places that can be made up with a fast cross country round here after the first phase so yeah you want to get off to a good start but a fast competitive cross-country run can really move you up the placings interestingly the optimum time is 10 minutes 37 so that's only what just under 40 seconds shorter than burley um so it's pretty good distance for a four star long as here is uh, sophie fouracre coming forward with kay jenman's uh, laudana van het lyza hoff z 12 year old map She's a big mare, but uh, makes a very impressive picture. And I have to say, hugely impressed because uh, Sophie welcomed her first baby just a couple of months ago. Not long. Oh, good girl. So she's got her fitness back very quickly. Um, oops, there just drifted a little bit off the side of the arena. Um, yes, but for some, some people, you are able to get back. Uh, to be honest, when I have my children, actually sitting trot is the most <laughs> difficult. It's almost more difficult than the jumping. It's, it's lovely to have a horse you can get back on that you know so well and uh, that you've had a partnership with before and, and it gives you the belief that you're back to your normal self. But I found certainly that the hardest thing 
to come back to was the sitting trot. So um, she'll be huffing, huffing and puffing under there. But she, she looks great considering it was only a few months ago that she had I'm her sure, baby. I'm sure it was a few months I'm ago. Taking it was very, your word for it. It was very, very recently. She looks... Um, and huge credit because obviously a massive juggle. But actually... This is a horse that she's produced up the levels herself, so they know each other really, really well. And Sophie, uh, four acres she is now, Sophie Genman, as she was uh, before she was married, has uh, had some good experience, had that wonderful partnership with Geronimo up to the five-star level. No, I mean, it, it's so lovely with our sport how because of the longevity that, you know, for some people you are able to have a baby and, and keep. And with the support team that you have around you that you are able to, to, to keep competing. But it's a very much a, a personal choice um, for whoever you are. And as a mum, you don't really know and, until you've had your baby if, if that's what you want to do or not. And, and it's completely uh, a personal personal choice. Um, but, you know, you do have to learn to juggle, that is for sure. Absolutely. And this mare, again, you know, it's actually today I've seen some horses that are really quite settled in the arena. Um, she's got a, a lovely brain. She's really allowing Sophie to ride her and she's walking nicely and looking very relaxed. She's got a nice big walk. She'd be a pretty experienced horse as well, actually. They've been... Uh, uh, top 30 with a clear cross country at Bicton in that really tough long format four star last year. They've been to Burnham Market for the four star long there a couple of years ago. Completed Bramham as well. So certainly have plenty of mileage and have seen some big arenas as well, which is important. A little bit early possibly to, to canter. Is It's directly on the marker at sea there, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. So she was... Um, a touch early and the mare just did a little jog as she was coming back as Sophie was shortening her reins uh, which was a bit a bit frustrating but I suppose from Sophie's point of view in this mare unless she's had anyone else uh, riding her or competing her while she was pregnant she would have had she won't have had probably the preparation that she would have normally have had <laughs> obviously because she's been pregnant <laughs> uh, before here so you know she's doing in every way from a fitness level and and for having the lack of preparation and that's really only possible because of the partnership that was built with this horse before before we're getting pregnant so um you know it's it's a big deal her her coming here had the baby in april little millie okay a little bit further ago but i mean a while ago but still um hats off hats absolutely off. very smart test a little she just put a little bit too much leg on the mare and that's what then she just popped in a little bit of a jump as she went into it so the judges won't like that so much this actually could well be one of sophie's best ever tests at four star level because uh, her uh, previous best was 35.2 with geronimo up at blair castle back in 2012 and uh, Everything about the test and the mayor and the, and the partnership looked very harmonious. Um, you know, a few little mistakes, but they're subtle. Um, but the, the horse looked very happy. She looked very happy in her work. And, and that in itself, for an overall impression when you're watching a test, um, the horse looked, they looked happy together. And, and that, you know, gives you a few extra marks here and It there. makes such a difference, isn't it? When you see a horse enjoying their job and you see the riders enjoying their job as well, um, much, much uh, nicer to watch. 34.4 is the score for Cool Rock Cooley and Bella Inner's car. So uh, they go into 29th place on the leaderboard. As uh, if you're just tuning in here to uh, the long format four start, Blenheim Palace International Horse Trust, brought to you by the Jockey Club. Tina Cook sat alongside me as next to come forward is a man who actually joined me in the commentary box a little bit earlier on. It is Tom Rowland with the second of his rides, and it is uh, Quintilius. And this is a horse that he thinks uh, an enormous amount of, owned by Joe Handman and Alison Sharp, 10-year-old by Quality Boy, and is a horse that has had some really solid results uh, up the levels. 
plenty of placings at the four star short level and actually went to a Bukalo last year in the four star long, which was the horse's debut. And I think finished just about the top 10. I think they were 11th or better. I'm doubting myself now. They were very close to the top 10. Uh, and speaking to Tom this morning, he had high hopes for this horse in the test. Um, he did say that he'd changed tactics slightly and just lunged him and hacked him. And then he got on him to work him yesterday and he was absolutely wild. <laughs> so he changed tactics back again. <laughs> Well, we, we will see how the horse goes. But sometimes, as the horses get older, you do have to be flexible and to try things. And um, it uh, sometimes it pays off. You see Pepper Funnel quite often hacking, hacking her horses because it's very easy to suddenly come to a competition and you come here three days before their test and suddenly you're school, 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 and you can make muscles that you wouldn't normally a bit sore, a little bit tired and the horse gets a little bit fed up with dressage and you're not doing it deliberately but suddenly you're changing their routine so it is quite good to, to vary and, and at Blenheim you can take them for hacks the beautiful space and area to be able to give them a lunge so there is a bit of variety into keeping the horses sweet when they're coming to to do their test and, and Tom is a lovely rider and he's He's got several horses now. He's really built up a team, team of horses and a, and a team of owners that really want to support him. And he's 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 not shy at asking questions. You know, he, he'll pick up the phone and say, what do you think I should do? Or what do you think the ground's like? And, and that's, you know, really good because he's very aware of what his horses should and shouldn't be doing. And this is a very good looking horse. It's a lovely extension across the diagonal there. He's very elegant and you can see that Tom, I can see the difference in how much he's working on, on getting his dressage better. Um, you can see the way the horses are going and this horse lovely crossing there and kept the flow. The horse looks very happy and at ease of what he's asking him to do. And that, the fact that the horses can prick their ears and, and look happy makes <laughs> the whole picture so much sweeter to, 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 to judge and to talk about. But he looks a really athletic type of horse and he's only a 10-year-old, so He was 11th at Buccalo, I double-checked, and he scored a 27.9. Okay. There. So, I mean, if he was in that territory today, he would be pretty close to the business end of the leaderboard. And Buccalo, he's... To do so well there shows that he can cope with crowds, he can cope with atmosphere. Buccalo is like party central of <laughs> Holland. Um, I thought you were week. talking about Tom then. <laughs> <laughs> well, he probably hopefully enjoyed himself while he was there. But for the, for the horses, it's a massive culture change, seeing so many, such great depth of crowds there for all three phases. So this horse has obviously got a super brain. And the fact he's come here now and allowing him to ride him through the test. He look, the horse looks very happy in what he's doing. Did he go anywhere in the spring? He has had a quiet year, uh, which is quite intentional. He was fourth at Chatsworth in the four-star short there um, with a fast double clear. And he actually was ninth in the eight and nine-year-old class here last year. Okay, so, you know, he's very much uh, mapped out. Oh, that was cheeky. Uh, that was frustrating. But it's, le it's only one movement that he's mucked up now. So just get back on track. The horse has given you a spook in the fact that it looked very switched off and very quiet. But he has just reminded Tom that actually there is plenty of spark still there because I wasn't expecting that little spook. I so he, if it's he's a gone test. back on track, lovely. And he really waited for that stride, waited for that change. And it was very soft and very nice and very true. It's been a test that you could enjoy watching. Some tests you sort of a little bit on the edge of your seat as to not sure what is going to happen. Um, which as I think perhaps why that sneaky change just took us both a little bit by surprise.
No, it's a really, really nice test and a really exciting um, horse for him. And, you know, it can take a while for some riders to, to find a horse to to get that partnership with and, and that the owners want to keep with you rather than it being sold or circumstances changing. And and this is a great opportunity for Tom and, 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 and really lovely horse, really lovely horse, very exciting for him. Well, just the uh, one mistake, Tom, just having a good look down to make sure he was square and uh, just making a real point to the judges. Absolutely. He was milking that, wasn't he? <laughs> hey, look down. Yes, I am really square. Yeah, and Let's... I'm just going to stand here and look round for another <laughs> few minutes. Just, <laughs> hello. Um, he was absolutely uh, happy with that final halt, I think. And uh, Quintilius gets a nice pat for his efforts. It'll be interesting to see how they shake up on that leaderboard because actually... We haven't seen anybody trouble the top of the leaderboard as things stand today. Uh, but Marlin Hansen Hotop and Carlitos Quidditch K, 24.6 the score to beat. Sarah Bullimore, Coraway, 27.8. Dirk Schrader, Casino, 80.29.0. And I think, I would think that that test is probably going to be one that we would see in, in the top 10. Yes, I think that it would be 30, about there. Um, that little mistake that he made, yeah, it would be close there and thereabouts. And But what was really lovely to see is, in my mind, there's another level to go up when he comes next year. You know, you see some horses and you sort of think mm, they're maybe at their best, whereas that horse, you can see that there's a lot more still to come. We're just uh, waiting for some scores uh, to uh, bring you because uh, that of... Uh, The last combination to come forward, uh, Thomas Martin and also Sophie Fouracre will bring you uh, scores for them in just a second. And don't forget, you can see all of the scores, eventingscores.co.uk. Uh, 38.6, uh, 58th for uh, Sophie Fouracre and Thomas Martin, I think just spotting in ahead of uh, Sophie on the leaderboard at 37.0, so he goes into 53rd. But it is unbelievably tight on that leaderboard as things stand at the moment, and uh, it sounds a long way down, but actually all can change. Um, Quintilius, 32.1 into 14th for uh, Tom Rowland. So uh, just outside of the top 10, he'll be ruining that mistake in the extended canter. As next uh, to come forward, it is Scott Wallace with Over the Moon. This is a 16-year-old uh, mare by uh, Catherston Liberator. And a, di a different type of moving horse c coming in now. A mare, she's got quite a lot of knee action. Um, that's how she was born to move so she's this isn't going to be her favorite phase but i bet when she bends those knees like that i bet she's a super quick jumper um but her drop does tend to go up a little bit down on the same spot she's 16 so that is the way that she is going to move but not everybody not every horse can be born to to be the best dressage horse so all he, all Scott will be wanting her to do is to do her very best and just do the movements as well as she can in the right places. So they have got to be very, very accurate. So she's doing her extended trot across the diagonal. But yeah, she's definitely born to go in, in the muddier conditions. Actually, another combination making their uh, four-star long debut together, both horse and rider. I've had some good three-star experience. And just to get, uh, get here and get the opportunity, even if this isn't her favourite phase, you don't know what horses might come on later on you might get the opportunity to ride and the fact that you can say when you're trying to build a, a career in this sport and you can say well I've ridden, I've ridden that Blenheim um, and I've done a good job um, even though well you know the first horse I rode wasn't very good at dressage really wasn't but it was a very good jumper and you look at the positives of 
what horses that you have to ride. And this mare wasn't, you know, she, even though she's by Catherson Liberator, she hasn't necessarily got the movement of her sire. Um, but that's the way things go when you're, you're breeding. But if she's a super jumper, that is where she will really come to her own. And we will see that tomorrow. But she, from a breeding point of view and from a Scots point of view, he, she is giving him the opportunity to, to be competing at this level. that was good he showed a difference showed a difference in the walk and the extended walk so he's doing absolutely just lost a little bit of roundness there as he shortened the reins into the canter she slightly hollowed against him so then you pick up the canter and just try and shorten your reins quickly as you're going around the corner before doing the extended canter and again for these horses that don't have the biggest of movement absolutely really really try and 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 to be accurate as you can that you show that you don't give any marks away try and stick on the center lines try and do everything at the markers Ooh, she rather anticipated that and hollered against him even though actually she did change legs but rather stuck her head up in the air in the process. I bet she goes like an absolute rocket when she goes cross country. She's getting more and more feisty. Typical sometimes with the mares, they can, once they start getting tight, they then get tighter and tighter and tighter. And she's getting tighter and faster as the test is going on. He's he's done a he's done a very good job with her. Look, you know this this isn't she's not overly enjoying herself, um, but he's done a great job to keep the lid on her as as much as he does as much as he has through that test. And you can see the way he fondly pats her. You know he's very fond of her. He knows, I'm sure in his heart of hearts, she's not going to be threatening the leaders. But it's lovely to see a rider pat the horse and go. You know what? I know you find that difficult, but you've tried your best. Yeah, absolutely. And there is still lots to jump uh, tomorrow over David Evans's cross-country track. And, of course, on Sunday, all of the show jumping action. And we will be live for you every single day uh, to bring you uh, every moment across both the uh, long format uh, four-star, but also the eight and nine-year-old as well. So uh, there we see confirmation. Tom Rowland, Quintilius, 32.1, just slotting into 14th on that leaderboard. And... Uh, just ruining that slight problem in the extended counter as otherwise it would have been a top 10 position as things stand at the moment. Plenty of different nations represented here. There are really international feel to the fields at Blenheim Palace this weekend. And uh, we've got uh, lots to look forward to as the afternoon progresses. And this next combination is absolutely one who we could see challenge the top spot because Pippa Funnel comes forward with Jonathan and Jane Clark's uh, MGH Grafton Street. 14 years of age now. Squirrel, as he's known at home by uh, OBOS quality. The 2019 Land Rover Burley winner. And uh, a horse who has been here to Blenheim twice previously and uh, been inside the uh, top six on both of those occasions, having jumped clear and inside the time cross country. And uh, has scored some very impressive marks in the first phase. A uh, personal best of uh, 22.7, which was at Burnham Market a couple of years ago. Uh, but uh, 23.8, his best uh, from his two runs here at Blenheim. Well, we are so lucky to be having Pippa riding here. She, need I say, is one of the best in the world. And to have this horse here as well that she won Burley on, Things haven't gone quite to plan since winning Burley, which was an amazing performance for her and the clerks who have supported 
supported her with with so many horses and absolutely follow her all over the world riding the horses this horse can be a little bit cheeky cross country sometimes but this phase he's particularly good at and Pippa is so strict with her training so thorough absolutely loves her horses making sure that they are happy in their work but but very strict on herself she's constantly if there's ever any slight problem she'll look at herself what what have I done wrong what do I need to improve and you look and you go well you are one of the best what do you need to improve but the thought that she's the one that's created a mistake um uh, is is it goes against totally against any of her logic and even though she's so brilliant you can see every bit oh he just had a little loss of balance there as he went into that extended trot she really gets the horses working through from from their hind legs all the way through to their front legs and their way of going she keeps it an outline on her horses and so she's got some amazing tests out of some very ordinary horses in the past but this horse he's he's big he's elegant and has great movement Andrew Nicholson started him off and then Pippa and the Clarks bought him about five years ago now yeah I think it would have been at least five years ago, because I think it was before Andrew's fall, which was 2016. Um, yeah, because he's been, he came here with her in 2017, certainly. But they've got a great partnership. And actually, it holds that MGH prefix was originally produced down with Lucy and Porig McCarthy. Um, she's a perfectionist, Pippa, though, isn't she? And actually, I was chatting to her at Burley about her work with a lot of the younger riders through the Wesco Equestrian Foundation. She's very passionate about helping young riders coming through, and she gets so much pleasure from that. But she was saying, actually, it helps her a little bit as well, because if she's telling them to be straight, she's got to go and be straight herself. <laughs> yeah, and, and that's and that's totally true. It, it really makes you think. And, and as uh, we as riders are getting older and have been in the sport for a long time, yeah, there's a lot of things that we, I say both of us, we're, we're teammates and very good friends, have done well, but we've also made mistakes. And it's lovely in our sport that we're able to share and pass on that information to to the younger riders. And then it's up to them what they do with that knowledge that's been passed down to them. And we're not saying that we're right and there's there's no one way to... to to, to to train these horses all these riders but you've got to have that that will to win and and pippa very much has that will to win whether she's riding an event horse or she's show jumping um the, the billy stud horses that is their their family business so she's a very very busy lady and puts an awful lot into the sport that she's competing in and as you can see with this horse he looks very happy. He's very. It's a very harmonious. She's very accurate, and and she's showing how a test should be ridden. And and I would expect, bearing in mind the form that she has and this horse has, that this should be one of one of the leaders. If it carries on the way it is, they've really not made any mistakes. The horse is keeping a super outline. Just nail this last change, which she has. So Pippa's brought this horse here. She chose not to take him to, to Burley because her preparation hadn't been as good as she would like it quite sensibly. And she's coming here to get a win. I you was going to say. There'll be no other reason why she's here. They're here to enjoy herself, not feel the pressure of any team situation. But she knows that a Burley win is the best feeling in the world. I've never had it, sadly. <laughs> I still need to keep practicing. But uh, this combination are more than capable. They absolutely are. And we're watching the leaderboard with much interest. 24.6 is the score to beat. That is Marlin Hansen, Hot Top, and uh, Carlitos uh, Quidditch K. As uh, Sarah Bullimore, Coraway in second. Dirk Schrader, Casino 80. 
uh, in third. Just the uh, seven sub-30 scores at this stage, but I would be fairly confident to say we're about to add an eighth to that. The question is, how low can she go? Pippa Funnel, a winner here on numerous occasions uh, before as that is uh, one of the iconic Blenheim fences, the first of the late crossings. And it's one of those few fences, Tina, at um, a, a big event or any event, that actually you don't just jump into the water and jump out of the water. You actually have to travel some distance through it. Yes, and it, and it can feel that that's quite a slope as you run down the hill to jump those fences. You have to be very accurate. The horses have to be listening and being balanced down the hill. But when horses go into water, it's not that deep it's above above ankle uh, level as you can see with the lady walking across but some horses don't like the splash up in their face uh, but you have to just push them through it and keep them paying attention because the element on the way out here which one side uh, the right and so left hand side as you're looking at it is for the long format the other side is for the short format the horses need to be keeping their concentration and you don't want to waste precious seconds if a horse is slowing up going through the water it's a very good surface it's it's raised in the water um, so it's a good surface but it's keeping you don't want to waste time on those water crossings well just having a score come through for pippa funnel and mgh grafton street for jane and jonathan clark 26.3 so into second so marlin hansen hot top can breathe a sigh of relief because one of her biggest challenges in this first phase has just slotted in behind her on the leaderboard sarah bullimore goes down to third dirk schrader to fourth that is how things are shaking up at the moment, but still a little way to go. We've got some very good combinations to come forward before the end of the day, including one or two who could well just challenge the top of that leaderboard. Now it is the turn of New Zealand and Sam Lissington with Joe and Alex Giannamore's uh, Bing Bong. Sam, who has been uh, based uh, over here from New Zealand uh, for the last couple of years and... Uh, this horse owned by Joe and Alex Giannamore, who actually are huge supporters of uh, eventing as a whole, actually owned uh, Tim Price's Vitali, or owned Tim Price's Vitali, who was third at, at Land Rover Burley a few weeks ago. So uh, have horses with a few different riders as well. And Sam comes here having had a really, really good string of results with this horse that was originally produced actually over in New Zealand by Jock Paget. Um, had some very good results out there at the uh, two and three star level. And then since coming to Sam, a new ride for her this year, they've been second at Mill Street in the three star long format and then fifth at uh, Kilgilkey in the four star short format. Yeah, Joe Genemo has been a real supporter and Jock Paget was based at his yard when he was uh, over here. So, and he's continued support supporting the support and uh, really positive and this is lovely big horse very impressive with his movement very uphill and sam is very very competitive rider she's quite tall so she looks she can take and ride a big big striding big moving horse like this and it helps, you know, you're lucky if you've got long legs and you can really wrap them round the horses, not just for the dressage, but when you're jumping as well. And it also means that you can ride some bigger horses as well as the smaller ones. Gives you more variety. And this horse is, he's very elegant, keeping the flow. Very naturally uphill. Yes, and, you know, it just makes everything. And he's got plenty of lift as well. And he's only an 11-year-old, so he's still got plenty of his career ahead of him, especially as he's cl flown across the world already to come over here. He looks quite a blood horse as well. Oops, he really just wanted to turn round then. As you can see, he rather swung his quarters and go, well, it's a lot easier to turn <laughs> round than actually do a pirouette. Just showing a little bit of tension. That's better. That was better in the second pirouette. The first one, he just got a bit tense. But it's also quite nice that, that uh, Joe 
Jenna Moore, the owner, has horses with with several different riders. Um, so he he spreads them around and, and supports the riders that are over here so that they have opportunities for some success. And the prices have really reaped the rewards for him as well and given, given Joe a lot of fun. So I'm doing a very good job there because he just looked like he wanted to get a little bit keen and actually just almost a miscommunication as Sam um, was saying, no, no, look, we're not countering it. He was like, what, you want me to slow down, even stop? This is the horse's first four-star long. So he's done Correct. several four-star shorts. Hasn't done that many four-star shorts, to be fair. Wouldn't be over-experienced at the four-star short level. I think he only has one. Um, so uh, wouldn't have a huge amount of mileage. He looks a really nice horse. He looks like he's got plenty of go about him. Stan would be naturally a fast rider cross country and this horse looks like he is well and truly up for it. He's bright but he's containing himself. You know, he's 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 got that brightness about him that you don't feel that the excitement is gonna get the better of him, but equally he's got that zest that he wants to perform. And that's a lovely amount of competitiveness in a horse when you can see that they're there really, really wanting to do their job. And though even though he's taking her, he hasn't got too tight in the neck. I thought to begin with he might get a little bit tight in the neck, but actually she's really contained him very, very well. No, I'd say he's a, a very, very nice horse, very exciting horse, not a horse that I've actually seen before, but yeah, she's done a good job. She looks very, very pleased with that. He's a horse that can certainly produce some uh, good numbers in the first phase. And uh, we'll watch for the scores uh, for Sam Lissington and Bing Bong very shortly. Just finishing their test as we have two more combinations to come forward before the uh, final break of the day. And uh, we've got a, a really, really hot final section that includes uh, some very, very competitive riders, including Daisy Barkley, a former winner here. Uh, Bobby Upton with the uh, four-star long first-timer, Jefferson 18. Gemma Stevens, who was uh, top 10 here, actually with Jalapeno 12 months ago. And uh, Willow Newton, who joined us in the commentary box a little bit earlier on, who was very coy about her chances, but I think she was hopeful for her uh, dressage that was a little bit later on. So... Uh, Lots set to look forward to, and uh, it is brilliant to have you with us wherever you are joining us from in the world. We've got quite the few days of jumping action ahead of us tomorrow morning from 8 o'clock. The uh, eight and nine-year-olds will be doing their show jumping here in the Palace Arena. And uh, from 11 o'clock, the four-star long cross-country will kick off. Uh, we'll have special guests joining myself and Ben King in the commentary box uh, throughout the day. And then, of course, Sunday, the eight and nine-year-olds do their cross-country in the morning. And uh, from 11 o'clock, I think, the four-star long competitors come forward for the show jumping. So lots to look forward to. And uh, it's a really nice atmosphere here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. So it is good to be back. The Jockey Club doing a brilliant job. And I know have some exciting plans in store for the future. So looking forward to seeing what those might be. As always, we'll mention many of our partners throughout the weekend. But very grateful to them all for their continued support from Boodles, who actually came here 12 months ago, but have since been a partner of other big events. They were involved at Land Rover Burley Horse Trials just a couple of weeks ago too. And in fact, they're the only remaining family-owned jeweller on London's Bond Street, which is absolutely incredible. They've been going since 1978, just the most extraordinary history. Uh, Paul Roger, the uh, official champagne partner here this weekend. And uh, actually, they have a rich Blenheim history as well because it dates back over 100 years. Uh, Paul Roger was actually... Uh, 
the favourite of Sir Winston Churchill, who was born here at Blenheim Palace and is buried just a short distance away in local Bladen village. So brilliant to have them on board. Others include uh, NFU Mutual, who've had a long-standing uh, partnership with the uh, rural and countryside equestrian sector and uh, with that, the eventing world as well. And they've got a trade stand within... Uh, the family fun area that allows visitors, both young and old, to immerse themselves in the world of farming. So if you're coming to Blenheim over the weekend, then do go and pay them a visit. They've got their ever-popular wooden dairy cow, Annabelle, and they'll also be sponsoring the uh, fences in the main arena through the uh, cross-country for the four-star long format. Uh, Bentley, as well, will be uh, the official vehicle partner this weekend. And Parfum de Marly, which... Uh, I have to admit, Tina, before this weekend was a perfume I hadn't tried, and I had a sample yesterday, and I am very taken. Oh, okay. Very nice. Are you going to be treating yourself? I think I might have uh, bought myself a present from my husband for Christmas or something. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be thrilled. He'll be thrilled. Job exactly. done. Exactly. Strategic. Strategic. <laughs> um, but it is brilliant. We've got Brookfield Equestrian as well. NAF Quintessentially, um, which is a fantastic new partner. And I think, Tina, you'll like this. So, they actually bestow back upon their members the invaluable gift of time, lifestyle management, and granting access to the inaccessible. Oh my goodness! Well, good luck with me. <laughs> <laughs> good, good luck with me. I probably should pay them a visit. You I think. absolutely should. <laughs> uh, but no, it is fantastic to have some brand new partners on the team here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. Uh, next to come forward in the dressage should be Ginny Howe at. Uh, 15 11 and actually there is a fairly natural break i think through a withdrawal so uh, Ginny will be uh, coming forward in around five minutes time let's take a look at the leaderboard as things stand at the moment with uh, marlin hansen hotop out in front 24.6 that is the score to beat uh, pippa funnel just slotting into second in this session mgh grafton street who's been fifth and sixth here in the past 26.3 sits second sarah bullimore coraway 27.8 in third dirk schrader at uh, the second of our german riders inside the top four casino 80 in fourth and actually this is the horse that he took to Le Moulin for the German National Championships and took the reserve national title there in June. Felicity Collins rerouting here having not had the Burley experience that she would have been uh, looking for. RSH Contendor retiring early on cross country after a, a problem at the leaf pit uh, but she has got off to a brilliant start with a personal best at the level for the horse 29.5. Uh, Lizzie Boff also a four star first timer at the long level. Uh, be exclusive put in a very very good dressage 29.6. Gemma Stevens, uh, Gemma who's been uh, Really performing in the show jumping world as well. Won a couple of metre 40 classes in the main ring at Hickstead last week. Comes forward with two rides. Flash Cooley 29.7. And uh, Jalapeno, who uh, would arguably be the one who has uh, the chance of scoring the lower numbers in the first phase. Absolutely one to watch for the uh, tussle at the top of the leaderboard. She'll be coming forward a little bit later on this afternoon. I think she's due in the arena at quarter past four. A little bit further on, uh, the Irish duo of Aoife Clark Kalahari and Izzy Power sends a fine, a well-placed Tom Rowland, Quintilius, who we've seen in this session uh, coming forward as well. Uh, Valerie Vizcarondo Pride rounding out the top 20 with Fabian Valerie, who's been based with uh, William and Alice Fox Pitt for the past uh, six weeks or so and actually has just returned having been... Uh, judging up at Blair Castle International Horse Trials back at the end of August as well. So that is the top 20 as things stand at the moment. And uh, we will have uh, our next competitor in around three minutes' time. So, Tina, just chance to, to ask your thoughts on the dressage and a highlight for you from what you've seen so far this weekend. Well, as you, we've just been going through the sheets there the scoreboard and there are a lot of world-class riders that have brought young horses older horses so there's going to be plenty of action but riders that have ridden around this course and there is an art to riding around Blenheim um, 
there are not so many that that make the time. You have to be quite daring, quite tight, risky, and and chances need to be taken. But there's quite a variety at the at the top of that leaderboard, in in the in the short format and the long format that are going to make it very very competitive. And so you know it's going to be very exciting viewing for everybody. And that's what's great about Blenheim in the fact that there are some super upcoming up and coming young riders that can learn and take so much away from watching some very experienced combinations and also see how they stand um and next to them and, and what needs to be worked on and so you know it's, it's a great opportunity for for everybody and for owners as well and, and the facilities here have been great for owners and great viewing and that makes a huge difference when you're taking a horse away to a competition for four or five days the owners have got to be able to have a bit of fun to watch just a couple of miscommunications away from the halt so for Ginny Howe and unfortunately it rather bled into the next movement set with CHF Archie who are our latest starters and uh, Ginny rides this horse for Jane Blakesley Grimes a nine-year-old by VDL Arkansas yeah that's just not a great start for her um, you know he came down the center line and then as she moved away he just automatically completely forgot about what her transition was and that can happen when atmosphere can get to the horses. They just think, oh, Canton, you're saying no, Trot. But now she's getting back into it now, but this has already made, let the judges know that the horse is a bit anxious and on a little bit on the, the tight side. So the rest of the test is now going to be a bit of an uphill struggle for her. The horse has rather lost his sort of trot through a bit of tension. So he's hurried across that extended trot and she's having to deal with what is underneath her and at the moment this horse has gone a bit stiff and a little bit worried about where he is and what she's asking him to do so she's losing a bit of suppleness through his through his middle and you can see that she's having to work quite hard just to keep him going sideways on the half pass beginning to breathe a little bit more now let's just come into walk and let's just see if he gets to, to grip he's got a nice big walk let's see if he can m claw back some marks on this part of the test but he's got to be listening to her and don't want him to drop back it's quite difficult as a rider when a horse brings his nose back into his chest because the judges really don't like that want him to keep his head up and and carry himself The circle and the parrot was a little bit on the large side, but she did keep him moving forward. And it's difficult when you come to a, a competition at how much to, to work the horses. Quite often it happens and they arrive on Tuesday or, or early Wednesday morning and the horses are all very excited. You're like, right, well, my test is on Wednesday. How much work do I do with this horse how much schooling do I do with this horse and and you're really having to go with feel and and how does this the horse feel today and you can do everything you can outside but when they come into this arena and they generally feel alone out here oh, and just didn't get the shoulders as she came around the corner his shoulder was still leaning towards the exit towards the left that's why he nearly struck off on the left lead just little things that but through the horse having a little bit of tension has made him different to ride for her and it's difficult isn't it i haven't seen this horse go in the first phase all that much but actually sometimes if things are a little bit different um it's about finding a way to to deal with that and it, you know sometimes they surprise you a little bit as well don't they they can sometimes it's great if they surprise you in the right <laughs> way. <laughs> Sometimes you can be surprised the wrong way and you're like, oh, no, really? Uh, you can do so much better. In fact, that was an absolutely lovely flying change. Um, so he's more than capable. And I don't know what her expectations were when she came uh, to do this test on this horse. But he's there just caught as trailing going into that half pass. So she's having to work 
work quite hard and that when he doesn't want him to drop drop what we call drop the bridle so literally bring his nose behind behind the vertical rather leapt into that change and he's he's relaxed a bit more but still getting towards the end of the test now and unfortunately he's he would have lost a lot of marks in the first half of the test when he was still thinking oh my gosh this is all rather frightening i bet jenny wishes she could go in and do her test now <laughs> yes just i'll just and test. for <laughs> some horses you really do you're like oh look when everyone is gone can i go in there and just practice and just ride ride through the test because as much as you can put an arena out on grass at home or in a field if you've got the facilities to be able to do it there's nothing like in competition the horses know the difference and you just have to try and get them to switch off and just perform everything that you've been practicing at home and actually Ginny her mum has been part of the arena team here building these dressage arenas over the last uh, week or so and putting in a brilliant brilliant amount of effort as are, have so many volunteers it just is not possible to run an event such as this without a whole army of people who give up their time so willingly from crossing point stewards to the even just the people opening the gate uh, on the dressage arena and putting it back in you know it takes just a vast number of people and uh, we're so so grateful to each and every one of them for all of their help and support over the four days of competition or five days including the horse inspection here is uh, the last go before the break. It is uh, Bill Levitt with Rebecca Purdell's Loxley's Last Stand. This is a 13-year-old by Loxley 29. And it is Australian Bill Levitt on board. Bill, who's represented Australia at two World uh, Equestrian Games or World Championships as they are now in Cannes in 2014 and then in Tryon in 2018. And he's got a really nice team of horses. He actually is very well placed in... Uh, the eight and nine year old class inside the top 10 with Sligo Candy Cane on a sub 30 score. So he'll be looking to put in a strong performance here. It's been a while actually uh, since we've had an Australian winner of uh, this uh, four star long format. The uh, best placed Australian in recent years was Chris Burton and Nobles, who finished as runners-up in 2015, the year before they went on to win uh, Land Rover Burley Horse Trials in 2016. Uh, Sammy Birch has been uh, well-placed here previously, as has Paul Tapner and the likes of Lucinda Fredericks, uh, but not yet on top of the podium. Bill would dearly love to change that here this weekend, and he's been a huge competitor for Australia for a good number of years. And Bill has been a competitor over here for a number of years now. Married and his children are following in his competitive footsteps with his son Josh, aiming for junior Europeans and such like. Got lots of horses to ride. And Bill has got a stronger team as ever and great support of owners. And between his son and him himself they've really working so hard and you can see that he still has ultimate enthusiasm to be getting these horses to the standard that needs to be to represent his country and he's as keen as ever and always there wanting to to help and advise and has such a a calm kind nature he's one of the nicest people i think in the eventing world um always so friendly always very relaxed I'm not sure I've ever seen Bill stressed. No, but I think that's, yeah. <laughs> he, he has a way to pretend he's relaxed. <laughs> but equally, um, he has a, a real rapport with, it, with his horses. He's kept himself very fit and very, very competitive. And, you know, this is another nice horse that he's got that he's producing. Um, it it would though, it wouldn't be an over-experienced horse. Has done a couple of three stars, has a couple of four-star shorts under his belt, Burnham Market and Hartbury this year. Um, both uh, steady double clears, very good show jumper. But having picked up a few time penalties, I'm not sure Bill's ever had his foot down across country internationally with this horse. So I wonder if possibly the first criteria this weekend would be a minimum eligibility requirement results or an MER 
which just t ticks the box for further qualifications down the line. Yes, he. You know, one thing that Bill hasn't done yet is competed at an Olympic Games, and that is something that is very much on on his mind. And to do that is building up a team of horses. So this horse, yes, is to go out and put in a good performance here. That's a very, very nice neat, pirouette. Very neat pirouettes. But his main objective would be to get this horse qualified for Paris. Um, I'm quite sure. And and the same with the, the horse in the short format. You know, we've talked about that, that the ultimate, for so many riders, as uh, as myself as well, is the ultimate is to be able to ride and compete and be competitive at an Olympic Games. And it is beyond special. And, and Bill is has been so close on so many occasions. But I know it's something that has eluded him so far. But you know, you've got to be producing the horses and, and and to be lucky that you've got to fit someone performing well just at the right right time. There is that degree of luck, isn't there? That There is, and I absolutely believe in that. Um, we can all keep our head down and you can sort of pick riders and go, oh, they're real hard workers. But most of the riders that are competing at the consistently at the very, very top of the sport and consistently producing really nice young horses finding the young horses and producing them to this level are hard-working people you don't just get lucky on the odd on no. one horse um, when you consistently bring horses through but you have to keep your head down and then you need luck to go your way so um just a little bit you could tell with Bill's body language there that the horse is not maybe that established with his changes and he just almost did a little bit too much for the horse making sure right you are going to nail this one not saying that this horse won't be competitive but very much Paris will be on the mind on his mind and you know this is a really really nice type of horse and you can see when he even though he's 13 years old you know we don't know what he's done in his past history why he hasn't got more experience but he'll be absolutely spot on for Paris if he gets in a good result here which he is more than capable of doing because Bill is as fiercely competitive as anyone here and also wanting to prove to his son there's life in the old man <laughs> he needs to keep hold of his horses yes yeah, so just <laughs> a little frisky there in the final halt he sat tight and actually this horse was produced up to novice level by sam brown um and it only came to bill in 2019 and he started the horse out at at 100 level then stepped him up novice intermediate um and so from 2019 to 2022 actually he's sort of brought him up to the, the four-star level but it doesn't feel at any point that he's rushed the horse in any way and very much as you say I imagine one eye on the bigger picture and 15 in Paris would be a great age yeah no absolutely and and the more horses that you can have and when you've got the the owners supporting you and keeping the horses with you and Elizabeth Murdoch is a, is a great supporter of of Team Levitt and, you know, we're so lucky, as I am as well, to have people like, like Liz, as well as the owners that, he, uh, that Bill is riding for here, um, Rebecca Pardell. So to have those people behind you, supporting you equally, having the same goals as you, means that you can produce the horses in the way for the result for the big one. And that doesn't necessarily mean going for the time cross country every time you take the horses out and putting that pressure on them. The pressure is the rider ticking the right boxes to get that horse at the world-class stage just at the right time. Well, Marlin hansen Hotop holds on to the top spot. Carlitos Quidditch K, 24.6, still the one to beat. Can anyone overtake her at the top of the table? MGH Grafton Street, Pippa Funnel have gone into second in this section. Coraway, Sarah Bullimore rounding out the top three. But uh, the uh, top 10, eight sub 30 scores as we go. Uh, Rosie Fryer, Rise Cavalier, Tom Jackson, Fondon also adding themselves to that top 10 a little bit earlier on today. So we have a short break now. Tina, big thank you to you for all of your input over the last couple of days. And uh, we'll have you back in the jumping phases as well over the weekend, I think. Um, yes. 
But now uh, we will have a short break and we will be back myself and Alice Fox Pitt will take you through this final session. Uh, 15 minutes the break, so uh, 15.40, 20 to 4. Georgie Goss Fantaboy will be the first of those final nine combinations in the lineup. We'll be back soon.
So we are back for this final session of dressage here in the four-star long format at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. And it is Georgie Goss, the second of her two rides. Georgie sitting just uh, outside the top ten. I think just got nudged out of the top ten in that final session with her first ride. Uh, Georgie Goss in 11th, 31.0. Uh, and she comes forward with another chance here in a combination that actually went brilliantly uh, last uh, time out in their final preparation for this four-star long format. They were top five at Cornbury last weekend. Georgie, her new name, absolutely suiting her. Married uh, new husband, Toby, just a few weeks ago. Well, I'm delighted to say, sat down next to me in the commentary box, is none other than Alice Fox Pitt. Alice, very good to have you with us. Yeah, nice to be here, Nicole. Um, what a great couple of days of dressage. And this last session, we've got some real corkers coming forward. This is a horse that I know Georgie's really excited about. As you said, Georgie Spence got married earlier on this year, and uh, we had such a fantastic time with her when she represented Great Britain at the Tokyo Test event a few years ago now, finished just outside the medals there. But this horse very much following in and filling a gap that she's needed at this top level. She's a super talented rider and um, has been nipping on the edge of the teams. It's so competitive in this British team now that somebody of this quality um, you know, really looking to cement her place at the top of the sport. And I think this is a potential five-star horse in the making. Yeah, absolutely. And she's getting a, a real number of good horses coming up the three, the four-star level. And this horse that she's actually scored 27.0 uh, last week at Cornbury, but she completed Bramham on him a little bit earlier on this year and uh, have had some good four-star short results as well. So I would imagine one that we could see make the step up to five-star next spring. Yeah, and you flagged her up in your opposition beaten percentages in the field. You know, she's there number three in that 81% um, with Fanta Boy. Just explain that percentage and how significant you think it is coming into this competition. So that is essentially taking into account the number of opponents you come up against and the number of opponents you beat. So say, for argument's sake, Georgie has been up against 100 opponents and beaten 81% of them, uh, then she would have essentially only been beaten by about 19 people. Um, and actually that is rewarding those horses that consistently perform in big classes you know that is far more valuable coming fifth in a field of 50 than coming sixth in a field of 12 mm -hmm. and so it really showcases consistency and it showcases some really really competitive form lines coming into a competition and Georgie absolutely has that she's actually been working for the last eight months or so with Ian Woodhead who is a little bit of a maestro in terms of fine-tuning dressage performance and uh, well when you look at his list of clients you've got to say that he's the man that's smashing it at the moment Carl Hester and Ian uh, and Laura Collett who scored that incredible sub 20 at the World Equestrian Games credited hit both Ian and Carl Hester uh, thanked them both for their help and what they've done to help her with her dressage and really nail a personal best at a World Games and I mean you're the queen of the personal best but you know, to do it in an environment like that, someone like Ian gives you the confidence to really ride for those marks, doesn't he? And interestingly, I think that's one of the things that he's really worked on with Georgie, and I'm sure with a number of the other riders that he works with, of having the horse in front of your leg and riding for those marks. Mm -hmm. You know, living a little bit on the brave side. Mm -hmm. And actually, the horse came forward for that transition into canter beautifully. And uh, I think we'll have been getting some nice results. The second of the pirouettes just got a little bit stuck and would have been a little bit costly, but she can now really use all of the arena in the extended canter. Comes across for the first canter half pass. The he thing about this horse is that he's not just very attractive in the dressage, as you've been flagging up. Um, he's, the all, he's the consummate professional in terms of three-day eventing. Yes, you want to get a good start. Yes, you want to try and be in that top five in the dressage, but then you've got to build on that. And his... Um, cross country at the moment looks very strong he's just a little bit green in that flying change and we've seen that often horses coming into this level the flying change is a real challenge for them and he's also got a very good uh, show jumping record as well with uh, hasn't had a fence down in his last six runs so she wants to create a good platform for there but then she goes into the next three phases with real confidence that she can build and if she's not quite where she wants to be that she can be a climber or certainly consolidate that position. A hundred percent. And actually, you know, on echo ratings numbers, he's one of the best show jumpers in the field, as you say. But he's very reliable in the cross-country phase generally as well. Good boy. Um, 
So it came up a little bit in that change, but it was clean. I think she'll be happy with that. Nice jump in the canter as she comes to the end of the test. This has been lovely. And we are expecting in this last session that there could be a bit of, um, of a change in that top order. We've got some really competitive horses coming forward. And I'm so pleased to see Georgie on a horse that she can really ride, really have a go in, in this phase. And um, he's rewarding her. What a job the groom's done. Oh, that, my goodness. Real life unicorn. That's proper sparkle, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And, and do you know what? The entire teams behind all of these horses, whether it be the grooms that, that travel to the events, whether it be the team behind at home who are getting the horses ready for the next events and keeping everything ticking along. Actually, you know better than anyone, Alice, it, it is such a team effort. It really is. It's such a team effort. The, the riders, what you see here is only a, literally the point of an enormous pyramid with the owners, um, right underneath this sport doesn't happen without the owners and um, Georgie's mum Joanna uh, owns this horse along with Nikki Cooper and Lucy Fleming great right out of front what a lovely ride by Pippa Funnel putting her into second on 26.3 with Sarah Bullimore Carraway who led the dressage at Burley after that early mistake but then had that early mistake at the leap at 27.8 and then they go into the 29s. It is very tight, but Marlin Hansen Hotop, 24.6, flagged up beforehand that she could do a good test, and she certainly delivered. Yeah, this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. This is a combination that were long-listed for the German team for the World Championships in Protoni. We all know how strong they are. And actually, they, they come here having had a top 20 finish at Buckelow previously as well. So know each other really, really well. Uh, a score in for Fanta Boy just coming through, and it looks that he will be around the mid-30 mark. It hasn't been totally finalised yet. We'll bring that I for you. I it might have been a bit better than that. I, I, I think the riders would love it if I judge them, to be honest, because, I mean... We'd <laughs> We're be, so gushy. We'd be breaking records <laughs> left, right and centre, Alice, if I'm honest. Oh, no, you and me, we'd literally be like, oh, yeah, lovely. Give it another 10. Yeah, lovely. Absolutely. Well, look, uh, next uh, to uh, come forwards will be uh, Daisy Barkley. And Daisy comes forward with... Uh, Valenteskin Cooper S. This is a horse she owns herself alongside uh, Roxana Janet White and uh, Caroline Dick, her mum, and Mary Scott Gall as well. Daisy, a former winner actually here at Blenheim, won with the wonderful Spring Along uh, a good few years ago, has been such a campaigner at the very top level for Team GB, has uh, a whole host of medals, was iconic in her Pathfinder role for a number of championships. And it is. Uh, she, do you know what? When she was on the team at the Beijing Olympics in Hong Kong, she was just an incredible team member. She's so experienced, having come through the youth program, very successful in the young rider level. She won't mind me saying now, at 50 years young and with a family, she's really enjoying the sport. And it's great she's got a horse in the um, eight, nine year olds. So to, to have a small team of horses, but with two punching at this level. It's, it's great and you know she's as capable as anyone she's worked really hard on her dressage her father Dave Dick who won the Grand National on ESPN and always pushing her when she was younger to go faster 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 <laughs> why did you have a second there when I was on a team with her we used to um, laugh at how where we could go quicker because he used to walk the course with us and give us so much stick for being slow old women uh, <laughs> daisy learned her trade from him she, there's no one better to watch across the country um, she knows really how to make it look easy going very fast um, and this is a gorgeous horse actually isn't he he is and i tell you what she came down absolutely announced her arrival with that first halt <laughs> she really did didn't she and he's really got some scope in this extension um he's He's got plenty of movement there. You'd just like him to open his nose a little bit. Um, just open the frame a tiny bit. It's just sucking back on her. But uh, very good in the lateral movements. And very good out of them, straight off her leg into that um, medium. And this accommodation, actually, who were 11th here back in 2019. So have some good form in the long format here at Blenheim, scored 27.8 on that occasion. So more than capable of putting in the low numbers. Yeah, funny, horses like this, lockdown and two years of COVID, it's been very expensive for them. It's been tricky when you went, we went into 2019 with two horses 
really precocious doing their first badminton, thinking you've got a lot to build on. And then you hit those two years and, and it felt like you were just treading water. Um, so this boy coming back to consolidate and I spec days will be trying to target those five stars um, next year on him, really get the experience under his belt at the four star level and then um, crack on and have a go at the big bees next year. And actually, she positioned him so beautifully in that half pass. You could really see just all of her experience giving him every opportunity to get as many marks as possible. And nice, neat walk pirouette there. They have to come back to medium walk across the centre line before showing a little bit of collection before that walk pirouette. And I think they uh, were both pretty good from Daisy. I think she'll be pleased with that. Onto extended walk as you go across the centre line. And there was a clear transition there. Again, you just want to see that nose poke, keep that frame open. Um, the walk really exposes any tension, but he's really tracking up and she's able to ride him very positive and forward in the walk, which is nice. He's very secure in the movement and very secure in the rhythm of the step and was very secure in her transition back there as well we've seen the tension creep in or a little bit of miscommunication and misunderstanding that's led to a moment of tension as they sort of anticipate the transition but none so there for Balateskin, Cooper S and Daisy Barkley and this extended counter along the far side Douglas Hibbert the judge at M gets a great view of the straightness Sue Baxter on the far side the long side gets a brilliant view of the length and the extension of those strides so they see it from two very different points of view but ultimately that is uh, what the judges are there for in different positions around the arena yeah, she's doing a good job in those canter half passes, trying to keep that bend, not lose the quarters. Um, nice change there, look very established in those. We've seen some horses look very green, but of course he's this is his second time here at Blenheim, as you said, Nicole. And um, he he feels like a horse that's got a bit more mileage under his belt, and and Daisy very much giving the impression of her experience as well. Uh, one of those that is so uh, nice to watch, and. Uh, Oh, just a little bit of loss of balance there on the centre line, unfortunately. Comes round for the second of these flying changes. And it comes up really nicely for her. Good girl. Good girl. She's such a pro, Daisy. I mean, goodness knows what she's juggling in her life. Um, these riders, you know, they've not just got to be athletes. They've got to be HR, commercial director, sponsorship director, animal manager, um, as well as their own um personal lives with their own families children and uh, it's amazing to be achieving at this level with a clear head to come into the dressage and ride as well as daisies um, she looks absolutely fit as a flea and like i said really great to see her here with two nice horses at this level and actually she was very very pleased with that final halt and again another to just check that everything was square just make a point of showing those members of the ground jury as well that she was 100 percent square and for me actually both of her halts and center lines have been a highlight of this horse's test and i hope they will be rewarded handsomely as well just that slight stumble on the final center line so uh, i don't know how much that will affect her final mark but a little bit of a plump. So next uh, to come forwards, it will be uh, Bobby Upton. Bobby, who is a really talented up and coming young rider. She is a former junior European champion. She's a team gold medalist, individual silver medalist at the Young Rider Europeans as well. And she is a real pro. She rides at Cheddington Estates at Jefferson 18. That's an 11-year-old by Jacquino. And a horse, actually, that was uh, originally produced by Australia's Chris Burton. But uh, Bubby, since Chris has been focusing his attentions on pure show jumping, has uh, taken on the ride of a couple of those Cheddington horses. And uh, I know she has been working really hard on this horse, thinks a huge amount of him. He's 11 years of age, but actually would be uh, relatively green and inexperienced. Yeah, I think uh, Chris competed him up to three-star level um, and then obviously had a change of direction. Uh, Cheddington Estate, Dr. Jeffrey Guy's um, beautiful estate and wedding venue down in Dorset uh, owns this horse. And Dr. Guy, who 
such an interesting and extraordinary philanthropist, a, a guy who has um, worked very hard in li licensing opiates in the medical industry and then licensing cannabis to help children that have multiple fits. And he's done so much extraordinary work. Um, but his passion is horses. He bred none other than Honeysuckle, the multiple uh, champion hurdler. And um, he is also... So he's got his eye in lots of different areas of eventing and, and show jumping and national hunt racing. He's a great supporter, as well as looking at supporting other areas of uh, physiotherapy. And he helps with the Hobbs Neurological Rehabilitation Team, who were very instrumental in William's recovery from his horrible fall. He's an amazing guy. And it's great that he's supporting Bubby, who, of course, is the rising star into the senior ranks out of the youth program and this horse has got incredible movement hasn't he i mean you you look at some of the horses that we have seen and he has a really impressive expressive way of going so much energy almost so like much. a dressage horse i was he? gonna say um you wonder if they might uh, play around with a few very uh, nice dressage movements at home because uh, certainly looks like they've got all of the potential and Bobby is a very, very competitive jockey and she will work very hard on this horse at home. And the, the way of going of this horse is actually very, very smart. Yeah, and you know, I think it, it is a really tough transition from the youth programme into uh, the senior ranks. And I think Bobby herself would say that this season's been a season of frustrations, really. Uh, brilliant ride at Badminton and then that incredibly unlucky and very annoying run out of the last fence. Um, and she beat herself to a pulp about that. Um, then at Burley, a lovely, brilliant clear round, um, and the and the show jumping then wasn't as it didn't go as she might have hoped. She led the dressage in Le Moulin and had a full cross country. It's been character building. Yeah, it I'd has say been, it's been a real. You know, she's finished university and really wanted to get straight in and go. And there's no doubt that this is a jockey who will have her day. But my goodness, um, I think her, we'd all say her character is perfectly good enough as it is. <laughs> I know, I know, absolutely. And I would say as well that actually it's one of those things because she is putting herself time and time again in competitive positions. Everybody remembers yes. those moments, yes, don't they? So Every, they? They don't go under the radar. Everybody remembers them. And she's just uh, 23 years yeah. old, this kid. And, you know, she's wise beyond her years. She's so... Uh, talented she's so competitive um, and she's got brilliant support uh, from an amazing family and mother but she's driving this herself you know she's worked hard to juggle as everybody knows a degree with competing at the top level um, she's now building a new yard um, which looks like it's going to be fantastic um, Jeffrey, I know would have been keen for her to move to Dorset but she's got a really good support and she really realizes just the importance of that support. And uh, she's actually been riding some of Amy Woodhead's pure dressage horses. Amy Woodhead, who uh, formerly has uh, worked for the likes of Carl Hester, now a very, very good uh, dressage rider and has a yard of her own in Lincolnshire. Um, oh, I thought you were saying Carl. Now very good. Oh, no, I mean, he's okay. <laughs> he's totally, oh, totally so average. Like, Hang on a minute. What? <laughs> um, but she, what, what I mean is she wasn't just based with Carl Hester. Mm. She is very, very accomplished in her own right. And Bubby has actually been riding some of her pure dressage horses. That change was just a little bit uh, short behind. Couldn't quite class it as late, but uh, certainly wouldn't have been getting a very, very big mark. Um, He's almost a difficult horse to ride there. You can see that the pure dressage work she's been doing would really help her because... He's so expressionful, if that's a word, that he actually takes himself out of his balance in a way. You know, he, he's he got so much scope, so much cadence that sometimes those horses are a little bit difficult to ride because they um, any lack of momentum and any change in rhythm can um, is, is, is so clear to see. And it makes it sometimes quite tricky to use that expression, use that movement, but also contain it in a balance, just a little bit wiggly in that last halt, but really lovely test. She'll be chuffed with that, and so she should be. I'll be very interested to see just how big those marks are for the early parts of the trot work, because that could really throw her into a very competitive position here. Uh, the leader, remember, is on a score of 24.6. Uh, Bubby Upton, who has had some brilliant performances in the first phase, 
at uh, many a big event, giving Jefferson 18 lots of pats on his four-star long debut and a debut here at Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials. Uh, for the horse, Bubby has been here previously as uh, they uh, prepare to exit the arena and we uh, look to welcome the uh, next of our competitors forward as uh, Daisy uh, Barkley there, Balintescan Cooper S, so 32.2, sees her go into 16th on the leaderboard. So, uh, And Oliver Townend uh, for Great Britain has just completed his test at the World Equestrian Games in Protoni. It looked very, very good. The last score we saw was around about a 25. Um, we'll wait to give you that confirmed score. Great Britain, the team currently in the lead at the um, World Equestrian Games. Mickey Young has the lead on 18.8 with Laura Collett in second on 19.3. Third, Yasmin Ingham on 22. Alex Hua Chin for China, a fantastic score of 23.6. Tamara Smith for the US, 24. And Oliver Townend goes into sixth place with 24.3. So uh, a really solid performance by him. And uh, just an update for the Fox Pit eventing team, Kazuma Tomoto, a fantastic test by him. 25.9 puts him into 11th for Team Japan. It is so unbelievably close on the leaderboard there. And I'm sure we will see uh, plenty of movement on it in the jumping phases throughout the weekend. Uh, Georgie Goss, a score for her with uh, Fanta Boy. And uh, again, still just waiting for it to come through, but she should have two within fairly competitive uh, scores. 34.4, 34th for Georgie. I would have thought she would have been a little bit higher than that. Yeah, but, but then uh, going back to us, well, into uh, the arena comes a real friend of Blenheim, Matthew Heath, um, now living in Rutland, but brought up just down the road from here in uh, Banbury. He grew up um, learning his trades as his dad was head lad for Paul Webber, the lead. Oh, it's just given his face a little <laughs> wipe as he holds. I think, I think he had a scratch or something. He's so sure. chilled. <laughs> That's hilarious. He's cantered down the centre line, halt and give his nose a little itch. Um, lovely first impression here, but Matt, he's such a character. I can't believe, no offence to Matt, but he's only 36. He's been around for such a long time and uh, he was brought up just down the road. And Blenheim, I know, means the world to him. Yeah, he has been such a long-time supporter of the event and has had some good times at the event as well. Got a couple of rides here this weekend. And uh, not only in the uh, four-star long format. Ascari, his ride here, a 13-year-old by Askaneer, owned by uh, Plum Rowland. And uh, Matt, who uh, has had uh, a good amount of experience all the way up the levels, of course, had the wonderful partnership with the Lion had so many good five-star results with um, him. And this horse actually that went top 20 at Bramham earlier on this year, jumped a super clear round with a sub 30 in the first phase and has actually completed here previously as well last season. So uh, looking, I think, I would imagine for another tick in the box uh, before a potential five-star campaign in 2023. And... Uh, Nicely positioned uh, in the first uh, half. Those it's lovely to see him on a horse that's very settled in this, isn't it? Because you talked about the lion and, and it always used to be this kind of will he, won't he, what will he do? Let's just get through this bit so we can do the jumping. But Matt's worked really hard on his fitness and um, really worked hard on his core and, and he's lost a huge amount of weight. He looks really well and it's totally changed the way he looks on a horse and how he rides. He won't mind me saying that because... You know, it's always work in progress, and there's nobody that works harder than this guy. Um, great that the, the owner, Plum Roland, supporting um, Matt. She's a long-standing owner in the sport and one of those key people that anybody would love to have um, as part of their team. They were neat pirouettes. Yeah, they're neat, aren't they? Doesn't the horse look well? It's a beautiful mm. day here at Blenheim. The sun's shining for this last session. Um, if you're watching on the telly and you're wondering what to do this weekend and you're feeling quite m miz about Her Majesty, come on here. It's a really lovely atmosphere. She's very relaxed. Um, minute silence for Her Majesty the Queen. It sort of feels rather appropriate that we're here because, of course, it's the birthplace of Winston Churchill, who was Her Majesty's first prime minister. And she wrote so eloquently about how grateful she was to... Um, how grateful she was to him for her contribution to his reign. And the Jockey Club 
such a big part of Her Majesty's life. Um, and they've done some wonderful tributes to her, which are being played out here on the big screens. And news on Bobby Upton. Yeah, into fourth. Very good score. 29.0 for Jefferson 18. So that sees her go fourth on the leaderboard. And some really nice, as we predicted, some really, really smart uh, marks coming in for the trot work. A couple of nines in there, plenty of eights. And uh, lots to look forward to for this combination. I think that could uh, be a 29 that would go much lower. But as it is, sees them in fourth at the moment. Yeah, so Matt Heath, who came up through the Pony Club, such a key part of producing riders, whether it's just for fun or, in Matt's case, as he became the youngest, one of the youngest people ever to achieve the A-test, something that is an enormous challenge and only very few people do manage it. But when you yeah. see that in somebody's CV, you know they're the all-round horsemen. They, you know they n have got an eye for detail. When you look at how beautifully conditioned this horse is, you can see that background of all the knowledge he's picked up from his dad, Trevor, who was absolutely the linchpin of the Paul Weber team for so many years. And um, Matt, who's had experience show jumping, he rode out racehorses as a kid. He's a real all-rounder. Yeah, isn't he's a he? proper horseman, loves to break in young horses. Um, and good to see him with the, you definitely say the quality of his team is. Upped and upped and up, you yeah, know, and absolutely. he deserves a real good one, doesn't he? And he's getting some nice horses. You know, he's got a couple in this four-star long format here, but he's got some really nice horses coming up the levels. And actually, I think his string will expand as he and he'll be back at the the five-star level very shortly. If he's not, he'll he's certainly got a career in commentary because he's absolutely brilliant he's so good, in the he? commentary box. He he's really is so good. Um, the Jockey Club community uh, program was welcoming schools in today and I was uh, chatting them through a few things that go on eventing and it's, it's a really lovely um, part of what the Jockey Club brings to the sport and their focus on diversity and their work on community outreach um, really sets them apart and tomorrow the Ebony Horse Club's uh, bringing a team of kids down from London from um, their centre in Brixton uh, to, to, to really realise that this is an accessible sport, it's a, an accessible event and even if you're not going to ride. There's so many ways of being part of a team that contributes to, to this great event. Uh, there's Bubby nipping in equal with Dirk Schrader on that 29 into fourth equal with Dirk. I think she'll be very pleased with that, especially there. it feels like there is so much more still to come from that horse. Um, and interestingly, there were plenty of very, very good marks. And then a couple of places where perhaps uh, his inexperience just dragged the score down slightly. So still to be on a score of 29, very good for her. And we've still just got five combinations to come forward. It's been a, a jam-packed day. As there goes, Matthew Heath, 29.3. Do you know he deserved that? He seriously deserved that. I thought that was a really polished performance. And it is his personal best at four-star long level and at any level with this horse. So on, at any level at all or just at four star long uh just at four star long and with this horse i'll check any level unless you leave it with me i'm going i'll to. raid the echo ratings database as we oh, welcome we alex that. bragg and click, Queen click, click let's get on that computer and find out because um as forward comes a real crowd favorite alex bragg one of my literally favorite videos through lockdown was alex bragg in the gym <laughs> <laughs> no shirt on. Sorry, just had to put it out uh, there. <laughs> I think anyway. it went viral. I don't think anybody quite expected a motivational video of a, a shirtless Alex Bragg doing no. his morning exercise. But, but Simone, she's okay with me saying that, that I think. I think his plenty of wife. people were new Alex Bragg fans after that video. So here he comes. The great Zagreb, he retired uh, last year. A horse of a lifetime for him who really took him from just getting into the sport right up to the cusp of the British team and with multiple wins at four-star and some great performances um, at the five-star level. He's, this horse, God, this horse looks well. Into Matt's top 10 tests at any level internationally. Not quite his best, uh, but certainly up there, second best at four-star level. Fantastic. I think. Well, well done him. He, he, it, look, it did look very good. I'm, pl I'm pleased for him. But Alex now based in Bridgewater, um, Quinn Diva was double clear at Blenheim last year and she won at Barbary. She's such an attractive horse. It's owned by the Rowe family. Um, and Alex producing her up through the ranks. His daughter's now riding as well. And uh, Simone, who is completely the backbone 
of the yard and the team. And Belle Wallace in there as well, who uh, was part of Jackie Potts's team for the last few years uh, at Fox Pit Eventing now with Alex. And he's really helping her with developing the ride, riding side of things. Alex, of course, who started his working life as a farrier, moved into the riding late. And Still shoes all his own horses. Does he really? Very useful, yep. God, I wish William could do that. <laughs> have a word, I'll have a word. <laughs> he, he's keen on a rasp in the winter, but I don't think we'd, I don't think Jackie would let him start no. nailing them on. No, no, that's fair enough. But he's a really talented jockey, actually. He's very competitive. He was a very good um, rugby player before he, he sort of turned his attentions to eventing. And actually, really, as you say, he came came to it a little bit later. Um, I think it was when Simone was pregnant with their first child, Eloise, that he really started to kind of take up the reins slightly. And as Alex so competitive, he was like, well, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and he, he would be one of those riders that really rises to the occasion. He loves a big crowd and he loves a big event uh, and performing. Um, and this horse is... Uh, a, a very, very talented mare. She's she's so attractive, isn't she's she? She's lovely. She can be very sharp. Can she? She can be very, very sharp. Um, I remember he bought her to the Equestrian Fire Relief um, fundraiser uh, that was set up uh, just at the beginning of 2020. Um, and she was very, very sharp. And he, to be honest, gave a masterclass in, in how to kind of settle and produce an experienced horse who the atmosphere was just kind of lighting up slightly. Um, but she's got all of the talents. Attention to detail. You know, when you look at a rider like this, just take a look at his boots because uh, those will not be the boots you'll see him going cross country in tomorrow. But a lot of the eventing riders have looked at what the dressage riders are wearing and for this phase have slightly changed um, how they do it. So these boots come very, very high. You can see they're patent. They'd be pretty stiff. You definitely wouldn't be able to ride short in them. But just give that sense of length to the leg. And it's those little attention to detail that might get you one mark here or there um, that just make that difference. It's the marginal gain, isn't it, in top sport that makes the difference. And if the high top shiny boots give him one more mark, then uh, they'll be worth it. So he, you picked him out in those opposition beaten percentages, fourth in that list with an 80%. Yeah, she's a really, really smart horse. And actually she won the three star at uh, Wellington as part of her final preparation for here. She won the three star at Barbary, um, both finished on both of those on her dressage score. And she's experienced, you know, she was top 20 here last year. She scored 35.5 here 12 months ago. And Alex would have been disappointed with that mark because... <laughs> Yeah, she she's got all of the ingredients for a very very smart test. Mm. Um, she's also speedy, isn't she? I mean, Alex, we know he's renowned for riding uh, those tight lines across the country, really never wasting a session. Second, he lands and he moves away from the fence, and uh, this mare really enjoys being ridden that way. And she takes it. You know, he can ride her quick, week in week out. Sometimes you want to have a couple of steady runs and build up to a fast run. But she's got the sort of brain where he can be competitive consistently, which, which is great. And uh, he's, he's, uh, I think ninety four percent top speed percentage, which is pretty crazy, isn't it? Yeah. So the top speed percentage basically calculates the percentage of opponents or horses ha been faster than. So that is, and pretty it only takes of three of their last ten internationals. They're three fastest. So that is basically saying a horse like Classic Moe, who we know is extraordinarily fast with Janelle Price, if you take the really wet year at the World Championships in Khan, when she was the fastest of the day but still had four time penalties, it doesn't punish her for the time penalties. Mm. It calculates that actually it was a really tough day that day and she was way faster than everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so that's what it does. It takes into account the type of competition they've been up against, the quality of the fields, and just how fast they are in comparison to the conditions, the field, and um, the well, venue and the level. Well, I don't know much level. about numbers, but 94% would suggest to me she's pretty quick. 
Very fast. <laughs> nearly a hundred. Very I mean, fast. Nearly a hundred. She's very fast. Well, let's take a look at that leaderboard as things stand because a couple of new additions to the top ten. Bobby Upton going into equal fourth. Matt Heath into sixth as well with Ascari. And he'll really fancy his chances to rise up the leaderboard from there. Rose Nesbitt uh, just nudging a little bit further on down the top ten. 29.9 sees her just uh, holding on to a top ten position. It just shows you there, you know, you have got to break the 30 barrier if you're going to make it into the that top 10 uh, there's no doubt about it so forward comes one of the most competitive ladies in the sport Gemma Stevens still uh, getting used to that still I Gemma know. Tattersall in my mind I mean I went to the wedding and it's still Gemma Tattersall <laughs> um, I think she caught I did chuckle that she was at Barbary not just after her name changed and uh, nobody twigged she did a whole round and nobody twigged um, <laughs> that it was, in fact, Gemma Tattersall. And, uh, you know, she's been getting some brilliant results, not only in the eventing. This horse, actually, Jalapeno, was top 10 here last year and has actually come here off the back of what would be a fairly light preparation campaign. She's very experienced at this level, doesn't need a huge number of runs. Uh, but actually, she won her last uh, international outing, which was at Mill Street, when Gemma, I think, took four horses over, was first and second in a young horse two star and then first and third in the four star and the other horse that she was third on is flash coolie who she has here so she's been very competitive uh, she won a couple of meter 40 classes last week at hickstead as well um jumped in the global champions tour in london and uh, this horse by uh, chilly morning who alice of course you know well do you see his stamp in his offspring well it's interesting isn't it I and mean, this is this would be one of his first uh, crop uh Jalapeno and Chili Night, um, obviously, uh, Gems had a massive involvement with them and um, Chili Morning went back and she hacked him after his retirement, after the Tokyo Olymp after the Rio Olympics, sorry. Um, obviously, ch she, she's chestnut this mare. I've followed her quite closely. She was with Karen Donkers as a young horse in Belgium. Um, Chris and Lisa Stone... Um, just pinpointed someone who they felt had had great results with young horses and she was there for a while I think up until Leon when she was brought them back for Jem to take on and Jem has got on really well with her Jem has a great relationship with mares she does whatever it is she has a magic touch with mares she's had some very good ones she calls them her girls she she uh, uh candy girl her show jumping ride at the moment one of her show jumping rides that she's been so successful on recently is a sort of classic type of gem mare you know it just she she gets them on her side she they're feisty together and uh this this mare wasn't totally straightforward but gem has made her look more and more confident and yeah you've got to say she's got a bit of chili about her haven't you yeah absolutely. i love the name yeah obviously jalapeno meaning hot pepper uh and uh and, and pepper being a chili. Absolutely. And this this horse has actually been 22.3 in the first phase. That was when they won the final Event Rider Masters leg in Linear a couple of years ago. Um, and so can produce those really low numbers. She's um, been a great servant to, to Gem. And I, I, she did make me laugh because you referenced that Mill Street. And she was like, I thought I'd forgotten how to win. I mean, she's so <laughs> competitive. And she's like, hang on a minute. you know. And most event riders, winning is, is a bonus. You know, when I go, used to go racing, having been eventing, and say, oh, I had a great weekend, I was ninth. And racing people look at you like you're literally off your Mad. rocker. Like, what, what's so brilliant about coming ninth? With Jem, she'd just be like, oh, I didn't win. And um, she she has that will to win. And her, if you talk to her mum and dad, this is, she's had it since she was a little girl. She's always been phenomenally competitive. Um, she's always had that huge self-belief. Horses have always been the major focus in her life. And actually, uh, Gary, her now husband, since he and her have been an item for the past God, four or five years, maybe a little bit longer, I'm not sure. Um, but he's been a really good influence. <laughs> Don't actually not sure together. when they got together. Uh, <laughs> but, I mean, they've been married a few months, I'll tell you that. But it, essentially, they got engaged at Bixen at the Five Star last year at the press conference. Oh, best, you loved that, best press you? conference I've ever done in my life. Um, but... But he's been a real influence on her career, actually, over the last few years, a real calming force, um, very competitive himself, but actually a real horseman. And and together they make a great team. And gorgeous and lovely. Yeah. I and know. quite it's a romantic. Why? I mean, he's <laughs> the perfect man. 
Um, well, we know that. It's great. They're a cool team, aren't they? I love seeing them together. They, they're very good for each other. It's, it's a really tough game to make that side of your life work. And um, it, I'm so happy for Jem that she's, that she's you know, really found her soulmate. And um, they're bringing a lot to each other's lives. It's good fun to watch. And this mare can actually get a little bit hot. Excuse the, the in a innuendo in that um, respect because she is uh, jalapeno as we've said but she can get hot in the first phase and actually um, Gemma's finding her very rideable or certainly she appears very rideable today yeah and she I looks she looks great doesn't she she's got a lovely outline um, you you flagged her up every which way in Echo Ratings in terms of... She'd be second favourite on the Echo Ratings Prediction Centre, I think, yeah, ahead of um, or behind Coraway um, in terms of competitive uh, position coming forward. What Coraway sort of score are we expecting? Because, I mean, she's second in the in the dressage horses. Caraway uh, arguably was a little bit disappointing with that 29, but... You know, she, she could expect to see her around 25, 25.6 being her average in the last six international I'm, tests. I'm do I sound like you when I say you that? You do. I'm delighted yeah. that you are literally loving literally the F ratings loving numbers. It, I'm going to put it out there now. I think we have seen a new leader. I think you could be right. She didn't make any mistakes, did she? Nope. The outline was really strong. She was lovely and forward. She nailed the changes. We know the judges like her. As we've seen in the past that average... 25.6. Um, I didn't see Marlin's test, so... Um, but you're scribbling away there. I'm waiting for those scores to come in. I'm not sure she's going to be quite close enough to the win, uh, or to the win, what do you to think? the lead, but it, I think she could well go into second. But I mean, second Marlin was so much better than we expected. Marlin was a 24.6, and yes, yeah, she was better than expected, but it was still, this is how things stand at the moment. You see, 24.6. Um, it, it was a beautiful test. Would absolutely you reckon 25? Test. I reckon she'll go second, maybe third. Oh, you think she'll go behind Grafton Street? I'm just refreshing the scores Come on, keep frantically. Refreshing it. Come on, judges, let's and, see. And uh, we will uh, give you an update as soon as it oh. does come through. But uh, next uh, to come forward will be uh, Willa Newton with Cockadoodle Doo. As uh, actually just looking for that score for Alex Bragg as well to come in because he should have put himself yeah, point. in a pretty. 39. Uh, 34.6 for Alex Bragg with Quinn Diva. I'm a little bit surprised that it wasn't a little bit uh, closer to the 30 barrier, but uh, he will have uh, lots in the jumping phases. As uh, next to come forward, it is Willa Newton with her own and Lawrence and Anne Marshall's cock -a doodle doo Do you think we've gone a bit soft? I, I definitely would have had that closer to 30. I, I mean, I think I the think riders I, I think would maybe be we're offering chatting too a, much. We're not concentrating, perhaps. The riders would be offering as a job as a ground jury member, yeah, but yeah. ultimately, uh, they are the experts, and I would not um, put my expertise uh, above theirs. Uh, Willa Newton and Cockadoodle Doo is a horse that she thinks an enormous amount well, of. You can see why, can't you? I mean, the first impressions are just wow. He's a stunning character. He really is. She's uh, a great pilot as well. She comes from a lineage of amazing um, equestrians. Her her dear dad, Joey, won the Aintree Fox Hunters twice. And her mum, herself, a very competent um, event rider. I thought she'd gone further than uh, intermediate, but uh, Willa tells me she just got up to intermediate level, but then went point to pointing. And um, she loves producing the young horses, Willa. And of course, she Probably one of her career highlights was winning the eight, nine-year-old title here um, back in 2016. Yeah, she's a former young rider, team gold medalist as well. Um, and this is a horse that she she really does think the absolute world of. Um, very, uh, She had that great partnership with Neelix, among others. And um, she really does fancy this horse's chances. He's actually done a four-star long already in his career because he went to Mill Street a little bit earlier on this year. And again, another one who, you know, we could certainly see bash out below that 30 mark. Um, their average sits around about 28, 20, just between 28 and 29. And you can see that it's very established and soft in that lateral work. Changes the bend in a very comfortable way um, as you sweep from left half, left half past to right half past. Trying to work out my left and right there. Um, the walk is okay. 
um, established. You just like to see that a little bit looser, but a lovely outline. He just looks really happy and confident in his work, doesn't he? Very relaxed and rideable as well. Oh, got a little bit stuck in that walk pirouette. Have we got that score yet for Jen? No, I'm refreshing. Can't keep I'm refreshing. refreshing. What's going on? What's occurring? Nice in that pirouette there. I think these pirouettes are so difficult to get right, aren't they? I can't remember who it was that we, we had in the commentary box a little bit earlier on. I'm yet to meet a rider who's a fan of them. Yeah. Um, probably because they find them tricky, but they said the good thing about them is if he can get past them at four-star level, he don't have them at five-star. Look at those plats. Incredible. I, know that that, 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 I think pl that's the winning plats for this uh, Janet, today. Janet, who has been with uh, Willa for many, many years, has been a huge influence in her career. Those plats are mad. Absolutely beautiful. They are very beautiful. Just and the walk's looking all right? Yeah, it looked almost just a little bit like he had the propensity to go a little bit lateral, just yeah. as she Curling brought him back in the, the transition. But actually, she recovers really well and keeps a lid on any anticipation of that transition. She goes for it in the extended canter. She's a beautifully tall, elegant rider, Willa. She is. As my mum would say, great leg for a boot. 26.3 equal second. Gemma Stevens, Pippa Funnel on the same score. So a jalapeno, 26.3 into second. Well, it was lovely work. She certainly deserves to be up there. And that's a really good springboard for the rest of the competition where, again, we know very solid in all three phases, jalapeno. She, um, she'll be happy with that as a start point. I think she will be. I think she will be. Uh, or knowing Jem, she'll be beating <laughs> she might, Maybe she won't be. This is a good test, though. Just want that energy and keep that energy and wow factor in the canter. Lovely and established in the changes. Just very relaxed and through. There was so much swing to that flying yeah. change. It, it's funny. I always find swing is such a difficult thing to actually see. But when you see it, yeah, you, you can. You like that's what they mean when they say swing in the flying change. Um, Good girl. And big pats for cockadoodle doo. And uh, this horse that actually was top ten at Burgeon in their last uh, four star run before here. They but they won actually out in Ballandenisk a little bit earlier on this year. They went over to Ireland for the four-star short there. And they've they've had some good sub-30 scores, so this will be an interesting score when it comes through. Do we know how he's bred? He's a gorgeous-looking horse, isn't he? He is uh, by Claramo, out of a mare called Cheeky Monkey. Hmm. Very nice. There we go. Confirmed Gemma Stevens into second place. 26.3 alongside Pippa. There's some big names up there. Marlin, of course, who was hoping to perhaps, who was skirting around the edge of the German team. Gemma Stevens needs very little introduction. Pippa Funnel needs no introduction. Sarah Bullimore, the bronze medalist from the European Championships last year. Bobby Upton. Got the big names coming to the top of this leaderboard um, here at the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials presented by the Jockey Club. And it's amazing how consistent those good guys are, isn't it? It is. And do you know what? They deliver week in, week out. It's extraordinary, isn't it? Yeah. They just keep on nailing it. Uh, they, I was going to say they must have a, a limitless supply of energy because they the the season is a long enough season. And actually, you know, you look at Will Zoakden, he's got a huge team of horses at home. I think they've got about 30 in or something. Really? Um, and they, they have such a work ethic. And they go from one big event to the next event. And they have a brilliant team of, of people at home helping to keep things going. But it takes a real desire, a real will to do it, a real will to win. And, and to kind of love the process. Because if you don't love the process, you can't just do it for the big days. Because yeah, they're few and far that. between. I mean, the most that we've had in uh, would be thir was 36. We had 36 in one season. And the thing is, is the difference between racing, of course, and eventing is that you've only got one jockey. And um, and people don't send horses to William to be ridden by somebody else. And so ultimately, I would say that that 36 is, in terms of eventing, you, you, is is pretty crazy for one rider. 30 with Wills and even with his Wills Oakton's work ethic, um, is 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 tough because what you end up doing is. Um, 
back to back three days. So you basically work all the horses on a Monday uh, while your team repacks the lorry and then you head off again on the Tuesday to the next three days. So when you get to this stage in the season, you're running from Blair into Burley into Blenheim. In, then you start going into Le Leon, Buccalo, Poe, Osberton, uh, those back-to-back -back three days at the end of the season, which have been the target for so many of the horses throughout the year. And it just really uh, means that you need a team that you can trust and that you believe in. Of course, William's so lucky to have had um, Jackie Potts for nearly 30 years managing that whole side of it and Michelle Maidman but he realized that you have to put that sort of team in place to um, navigate the season and Wills has pretty much done the same thing hasn't he? Yeah he does and, and his wife uh, Stephanie is a big part of um, his success and head girl Sarah Murray and the whole team at home do a huge amount of work and, and Wills actually rides this horse for Daisy Cross it's a nine-year-old nine by Biscay uh, Balou van der Miss Blair. <laughs> well then, <laughs> glad you tried to say that. <laughs> say that one more time. No, no, you're fine. After you've had a gin a little bit later on, that's going to be my quiz question <laughs> for you later. <laughs> and actually, Wills is one of those competitors that he has that brilliant work ethic we've just been talking about, but he is really, really competitive as well, and he has a real eye for a horse, a real horseman essentially at heart. Um, and he's been building some very, very good horses up the levels, and he's got a couple in this four-star long format here. But he had that great burly completion as well that was his first burly. And I think within a couple of years, as these horses make the step up then to five-star, he's going to have a real sort of armoury of top-level horses. Absolutely. And he's very clear about his mission. When we chatted him on the Celebrity Talk area at Burley, you know, it was clear he was just... He's a very focused guy. He's very focused on what he does. Um, uh, managing, a, you know, a lot of horses, a young family. Uh, he was kind of almost uh, glazed over at the end of his burley. He just, he sort of, he said, you know, I don't like the fuss. I've done my job. He'd be quite understated. He would want to turn up and ride the horses yeah. and do the job. He yeah. he would very much, you know, that's Even with his you, focus. Is he, that, is he not very... I know he he's a brilliant person to speak to and yeah. he's great with the but media but so he is very focused very professional yeah. he he finds ultimately for him it's about riding the horses yeah. you know he that's what he absolutely loves yeah. um, and is he based in Perth he is based in Perth I think he quite likes being a little bit under the radar yeah um, because he you know when he does come down he's becoming less under the radar I think it would be fair to say yeah um, you know and well this horses like this so just knock your eye out don't exactly. they you know when you start turning up on this kind of calibre and quality of horse, um, as you said, owned by Daisy Cross, people are going to be taking note. Because this is a horse that's surely going to nip into the top ten, isn't it? Certainly everything about his test so far has been really, really nice. Wouldn't be the biggest mover that we have seen. Wouldn't be the flashiest mover. We look at, at Gemma and Jalapeno, who've just uh, done their test a few minutes ago, and uh, they perhaps have scored some bigger marks. But he's almost daring the judges to take marks away because he's not giving them any reason to. Um, he's a fast horse, isn't he? You know, this is this phase is okay, um, but he's got that real pace cross-country. Lovely change there. And he's a good show jumper as well. He's been clear in the show jumping in his five last five internationals. Mm -hmm. He actually went very well up at Blair Castle to finish fourth in the four-star short. I'm assuming he's by pre -sons. Uh uh, no, he is by, um, that's the Arclay Puissance horse. Oh, that's the other that's one. That's his other horse. I get yeah. it. What's this one? What, you this just one want by? me to say the name again? Yeah. Oh, God, it's the funny <laughs> name. <laughs> <laughs> Alice, that's you tried. Hilarious. No, you tried. I didn't. It's been no, a long I couple didn't. of days that's of dressage. So but uh, but um, DHI, that prefix that's now becoming more and more seen at the top level. Um, of course, the Woodhead team uh, finding these lovely horses um, with the DHI prefix now. Um, sourcing a lot of horses in Holland. Um, and this horse, you'd just love to see him perhaps just alter his balance a little bit in the canter. He could just do with a little bit more impulsion. Yeah, just um, a, bit a little more bit jump more oomph, a little bit more jump, a little bit more um, impulsion, but actually a, a very, very nice test. And I think we'll see him in the early 30s, mid 30s perhaps. And he's just um, a nine year old, it's his first time at four star long. Uh, I thought that was a very solid performance. Very solid test. So Wills Oakden, the penultimate rider of the day with Daisy Cross's DHI by design. And uh, he finishes uh, his test. It's a horse that scored uh, 
34.8 when he was up at Blair Castle a little bit earlier on this year. As uh, last to come forward is the lady who is in the commentary box with us a little bit earlier on. It is Gillian Beale King and Rebellion as uh, that is uh, the first of those late crossings. Uh, here's Gillian Beale King, Rebellion on a score, or uh, riding this 11 year old for Richard Ames and uh, by Carry On. And actually, Gillian has had some really good results in the. Uh, national and international circuit over in Ireland. She came over from uh, I love her, I love her notes where she says, Gillian's life saw a plot twist. <laughs> we don't often it see that in the... She, just life saw a plot twist. She left her business on the invitation to ride for the Beline... Beline? Beline? Beline, Beline Estate. Beline Estate. Owned by Richard She and She Pat literally James. left a very successful business career back in, in the USA to move over to Ireland last year. And, and actually, she's getting some really solid uh, experience. It's her first four-star long format. Um, she did a, a lot of pure jumping back in, in the USA. Her, her um, maternal grandparents were both British. I think she said they rode on the British team. Uh, they both competed up to five-star level. Oh, wow. Um, she has an incredibly rich history of um, horsemen and women in her family through all different disciplines in the equestrian world, through racing, through jumping, and in the pure eventing as well. And she's a really, really talented jockey. She's been getting some good results, as I say, over in uh, Ireland and been making a real name for herself. Darina Superstar actually sits in fourth at the moment. He was the overnight leader in uh, the eight and nine-year-old class last night, but finishes the, the competition after the first phase in fourth. And Rebellion, uh, her one ride in this four-star long format this weekend. And uh, they come forward as the last to go on what has been a busy couple of days of dressage here. Richard Ames uh, bring, owns uh, a good number of very nice horses and this accommodation that actually were fourth in Mill Street in the uh, full start short format coming into this competition. Yeah, and uh, Christina Cook actually produced this horse um, and sourced it um, for them and you can see why she was drawn to it and it's always interesting you know, some of the top riders now looking to produce some some horses and and working more on selling them on and and um, Tina doing a fantastic job with that just some really eye-catching horses in her team that she's doing the groundwork with ready for someone to take on uh to the next levels and you know William looking the same and it it it's it, the experience of where perhaps those riders have got a few more in their system than perhaps they want these days um and then selling them on but with the grounding where they can come and get right up into this four-star, five-star level, having had that fantastic foundation um, with those experienced teams. Really impressive trot work, isn't it, this horse? Yeah, there's a, a good deal of engine in there. And actually, this a horse that I think is really looking to, to get experience this weekend. Gillian said she wants to get the, the mileage at the four-star long level. Oh, oh. Just a break in that half pass, and actually just not quite able to just get it back before it uh, comes up very quickly if you have a break in that half pass you've got no time at all to actually rectify the mistake before you already find yourself on the no, side of the arena. You found that change of bend the stiffness to the right got a little bit exposed there didn't it? But this is first time at four star long and as you said for Gillian she was very keen to try and really start to get that mileage at this level talking to a few of the riders at Burley, actually just just needing to just get the runs. You might not come here thinking I'm going to be top 10, but you've just got to cut your teeth. You've got to get out there and ride these bigger tracks so that when the opportunity does come along to be competitive, you know, you've just had that mileage. You've got the sense of speed. You've got the sense of the scope and the scale of the fences um, and also the stamina. You know, the big difference when you start to step up to these distances is just the fitness of the horses, can they gallop to the line? Can they really go through to that last 10, and 11 the, minutes? For the riders as well, you know, the, the mental strength and the mental uh, fitness to be able to, to be on on your A game for that period of time. Just found the um, the second of those walk pirouettes was a little bit hard work for Gillian, but actually he was lovely and relaxed in the walk. 
and uh, she goes straight into the extended canter down that long side. I'd love to say I can comment on those pirouettes, but um, it still looked to me like, you know, it's still a challenge to know, really. Um, and I think sometimes when you're on the horses, you don't actually even know if you've done them quite right or not. He's finding that lateral work hard, isn't he? He just threw this, the softness in the bend when he goes into the lateral work, just isn't there yet. Fortunately, not changing behind. And that, Ooh. oh, it's going to, it go. has changed behind now, but actually that's going to leak into the next movement mm. as well. So that will prove expensive for her. He does just find the lateral work much more difficult. Found the extensions earlier on in the test much more easy. And actually, that's this, you know, horses do have things that they find more easy and more difficult. Well, a bit like us as well. Yeah. One rein or the other, they're either left-handed or right-handed. He, at the moment, hasn't quite established the changes either way. But there we go. He got it in, he got it in the end. So some mistakes. There's potential, I think, for the future. But a frustrating day today. Um, yeah, and they'll be uh, turning their attentions now onto what is that? What there is to jump at David Evans's cross country track and a new challenge that awaits them tomorrow. And uh, that actually brings uh, today's dressage and two days of dressage in this four star long format to a conclusion. And what a brilliant couple of days we have enjoyed. We have. Uh, been looking for some of the up and coming future superstars. The winner here 12 months ago is actually in a very, very strong position overnight going into the uh, cross country at the World Championships. Yaz Ingham, who won here last year uh, in individual bronze medal position going into cross country, will come to the World Championships in a second. Uh, Marlin Hansen Hotop and Carlitos Kudic K, 24.6, our leaders yesterday. A couple came close, but nobody was quite able to overhaul her at the top of the table. Uh, equal second, Pippa Funnel and uh, Gemma Stevens at 26.3. Sarah Bullimore, Coraway, 27.8. And equal fifth, uh, Bobby Upton and Dirk Schrader. Matt Heath, uh, he made his way into the top 10, 29.3 with Ascari. As uh, Gemma, two inside the top 10, rounds out uh, the uh, first 10 on the leaderboard with Flash Cooley. A number that came forward today actually do feature here inside uh, 11th through to 20th, Rose Nesbitt, e.g. Michelangelo, the horse on whom she completed badminton. The last of our sub-30 scores, just 11 of them here. Uh, Tom Jackson, who's in a real purple patch, well-placed with Farndon. And uh, the Irish duo of Aoife Clark and Elizabeth Power, uh, two exceptional riders in the cross-country phase, well-placed inside the top 20. And uh, Nikolai Aldinger and Timo rounding out the top 20 as things stand. In the Eventing World Championships in Bretoni, Michael Young, 18.8, uh, incredible score from them sees her, him sit in the individual gold medal position just ahead of Laura Collett London 52 Yaz Ingham Banzai Delois as I say rounding out those individual medals the Brits uh, definitely have the uh, upper hand after the first phase and uh, they will lead the team standings quite convincingly at 69 point to a sub 70 score after dressage for a team is very impressive. Germany have moved up to silver and USA in How bronze. tight is that, though? 76.1 for Germany, 76.6 for the United States of America, 77.9 in fourth New Zealand. It is really, really tight. It absolutely is. There is going to be all to play for tomorrow in the cross country. And we will be back with full coverage, both in the eight and nine-year-olds. Their show jumping starts at eight o'clock. Ben King will guide you through all of the show jumping for the eight and nine-year-olds from eight. And I will be here from 11 with the four-star long cross country. Alice, a big thank you. It has been a pleasure to sit Such alongside you. Such a treat. And thank you so much for creating for all the hard work and uh, so interesting now with eventing commentary to be able to access that sort of information that we've had in racing for so many years and to really understand just the sort of form these horses are, are in coming into an event like this is, is, is brilliant. So thank you so much for to all the team for the hard work in analysing that. I was going to say I'd love to take the credit, but I'll let the team at Echo Ratings take the rest of the credit for that one because they've done an incredible job. Uh, we will be back, as I say, tomorrow with lots more here from the Blenheim Palace International Horse Trials presented to you by the Jockey Club. But fantastic 
to have them on board here for the second time here and uh, we're looking forward to what is in store over the rest of the weekend if you're undecided then why not jump in the car tomorrow morning